Yo Atlas speaking and welcome to part 9 of what if I was reborn in Naruto as an evil prodigy Uchiha with the inheritance system. Let the tale begin. Chapter 351 Righteousness Danzo was originally gloomy in his heart because he saw that there was no chance to punish the Uchiha clan. Seeing Uchiha Tenen take the initiative to say this, he immediately sat up straight in spirit at once. Only Hiruzen Saratobi looked puzzled and said, why? Just see Uchiha Tenen righteously said. Because that masked man is Madara Uchiha. And he happened to appear at the time when Kushina Senpai was in labor. This information is top secret in Kanoha, and no person knows about it except for Minato Sensei, me, and you, the third generation Hokage. I believe that the third gen will not leak, Minato certainly will not tell others. I can't be the one who passed the information out. Then the only possibility is that someone in Kanoha is secretly spying on the Jinchuriki information. So I have reason to suspect that the Uchiha clan has spies in it. You must know that in the Uchiha clan, except for me and some individuals, the vast majority of people have still been immersed in the glory of the Uchiha clan while in the war. They are all likely to be bewitched by Uchiha Madara. After listening to Uchiha Tunin's analysis, Danzo and Saratobi Heisen nodded in agreement. Makes sense. But Saratobi frowned slightly and said in a deep voice. But it's a little difficult to find out who the spies are. You can't just interrogate everyone in the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Tunin smiled and pondered for a moment, his expression became cold and said. I suggest first relocating the lands of the Uchiha clan to the edge of Kanoha so that I can secretly send someone to spy on them. Once I know which clan members dare to betray Kanoha, I will personally clean the clan. Saying that, Achiha Tenen's fist on the table clenched suddenly, and after a moment of pause, he slowly released it again and said, But, right now we don't have real evidence. And I am, after all, a member of the Achiha clan. If I stand up to them like that, I'm afraid it will break the hearts of most honest clansmen. This will easily make some people feel that there is no place for them in Kanoha, and thus rebellious. Therefore, the third generation and Danzo-sama are also invited to take the lead in this matter. And I will be responsible for comforting them during this time, while giving a little relief in material terms. Danzo sniffed and couldn't wait to agree, we have no problem with it, just do what you say, Tunin. Sarutobi nodded, got up and went to a table on the side, took out a scroll of painting and unrolled it on the table. It is the map of Kanoha village. Saratobi Hiruzen reached out and pointed to the map of the Uchiha clan at this time and said, The clan land of the Uchiha is located in a prosperous area. If we want to move them to the edge, I'm afraid it would be better to give them double the amount of land. Saying that, Saratobi Hiruzen pointed his finger to a suburb of Kanoha village and said, it just so happens that this location is next to the mountain and the land is just the right size. Tunin, what do you think? Achiha Tunin dragged out his hand and put it on the map to feel, then shook his head and prodded near the edge of the map and said, It's still too close to Kanoha, I think this is a better location. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at his eyes, a hesitant look appeared on his face and said, Wouldn't this be too far out of the way? It's already very close to the Forest of Death. I'm afraid the Uchiha clan won't accept it. Danzo naturally happy that the Uchiha clan suffered a loss, and quickly said in a deep voice, As long as the three of us decide, it's the village's order. Whether they accept it or not. At this juncture, a touch of wisdom was cruel to the other villager. It's a big deal to give a little more land. Those out-of-the-way lands aren't worth much anyway. Seeing Uchiha Tenen and Danzo have agreed, and this matter will not damage his own interests. Saratobi Hiruzen will no longer pretend to speak for the Uchiha clan, and immediately nodded and said, I support Tenen. Uchiha Tenen fingers tapped the table heavily twice, and said with a straight face, Since the two lords have no objection, then this matter is settled. I also hope that when the Shinobi clan meeting is held tomorrow, the two lords will have a stronger attitude. Danzo thought that he would be able to punish the evil Uchiha clan right away. He couldn't help but feel good, 
and the corner of his mouth couldn't help but draw a discordant smile and said, Tune in, you can rest assured, we have no problem. The matter about the masked man and the Uchiha clan has been discussed, and the next step is naturally the matters of Hokage that Saratobi and Danzo are most concerned about. Saratobi Hiruzen picked up the cigarette stick on the table, took a sharp breath, and said softly, Minato is dead now, but Kanoha can't live without Hokage. In this turbulent time, I don't think it's appropriate to have an open election. I don't know if you have a suitable candidate for the fifth Hokage, Tunin. At the end of the sentence, Saratobi Hiruzen and Danzo both moved their eyes to Uchiha Tunin's face. The two are naturally extremely eager for the position of Hokage. Anyway, to the three of them, basically no one else has the qualifications to sit in the position of Hokage. The only other popular candidate for the last Hokage is Uchiha Fugaku. But last night everyone saw with their own eyes that the masked man has Mangekyo eyes and is a pure Uchiha. So Uchiha Fugaku, as the head of the Uchiha clan, will naturally be implicated, resulting in the loss of the possibility of succeeding Hokage. Tap, tap, tap. Uchiha Tenen tapped his fingers on the table one after another, seemingly in deep thought. Sarutobi and Jinzo both nearly held their breath. Looking at Uchiha Tenen's previous behavior, he probably is not interested in the position of Hokage. Once Uchiha Tenen voluntarily give up the Hokage position, then the two of them will have to fight for the position. After a long time, Uchiha Tenen fingers a meal, sighed and shook his head, said, I thought about it and found that from the current Kanoha descendants. No matter the strength and prestige, no one is yet qualified to assume the position of Hokage. Sarutobi coughed lightly, with a tentative meaning, in fact, I think you are the most suitable candidate for the fifth generation of Hokage, Tunin. Whether it is the identity of the perfect Jinchuriki, or strength and reputation. There is no one left in all of Kanoha that can match you. However, Achiha Tenen waved his hand and said with an apologetic face, I'm sorry, although I would love to do more for the village. But being a Hokage is too heavy of a responsibility, and now I have a lot of work to do. Kanoha, in my opinion, needs more on the side of spiritual leaders. And I for one would prefer to get down to the field and serve the villagers behind the scenes. The two men saw that Uchiha Tunin was really not interested in competing for the position of Hokage, a glint of joy flashed in their eyes. Danzo, slightly nervous, said, But Kanoha can't be without Hokage, right? Uchiha Tunin frowned slightly at the words, and then raised his head to face the opposite Saratobi Hiruzen and Danzo. He seems to be thinking which one of the two should be the Hokage. Time passes little by little. Hiruzen and Danzo seem to be calm, but in fact, the palms of their hands are soaked with sweat. After a while, Uchiha Tunin looked straight and faced Saratobi Hiruzen and said, Having been a Hokage for so many years, Lord Third is very experienced. In the absence of a suitable candidate to succeed the fifth Hokage, third Hokage should temporarily post it. After all, Minato-sensei only succeeded being the fourth for a short year. It is not good to say that the fifth Hokage will appear so soon. Again to this statement, the face of Danzo instantly cold down, his fist placed under the table cannot help but clench. A strong resentment welled up in his heart. Damn! Why not me? Why he thought that Hiruzen was better than me? On the contrary, Saratobi Hiruzen was smiling with a warm face, and the cigarette stick in his mouth was trembling. Tunin, thank you for believing in me. Achiha Tunin shook his head gently and said lightly, To be honest, I dislike the way you act, Hiruzen Sama. I also never thought you could lead Kanoha to glory. But there is no way, the current Kanoha cannot afford to be in a turmoil. Everything need to be stabilized. Until a truly suitable person appears. At that point, I will take the lead and ask you to step aside. The joyful Saratobi Hiruzen immediately choked by the unforgiving words of Uchiha Tunin. He had to cough heavily twice to ease the embarrassment and change the subject and said, Ahem. Next, we have to discuss the compassionate arrangements for those who died in this incident. The three discussed until late afternoon, before a series of follow-up arrangements for this event were set. 
After leaving the Hokage building, Achiha Tunin went straight back into the orphanage. Inside the house, Hataki E left sitting in the toy pile is concentrating on playing and even did not notice that Achiha Tunin had arrived. And at this time, Hataki Do is taking good care of the little Naruto lying in the cradle bed asleep. Seeing Achiha Tunin return, he immediately got up and came to Achiha Tunin, bowed with his hands on his knees and said, Welcome back, sir. Achiha Tunin ignored Hataki Do and went straight to the cradle bed, reaching out the back of his warm hand to touch little Naruto's face. A satisfied smile appeared on the corner of Achiha Tunin's mouth, he reached out and patted Hataki Do on the shoulder and said, well done. Take care of Naruto while I'm gone. Hataki Do immediately nodded and responded, Yes, sir. Achiha Tunin finished his explanation and turned towards the study. When he reached the door of the study, Achiha Tunin's sideways face whispered, If something happens to him, everything in Kanoha has no meaningful existence. Remember clearly, it's everything. When he said that, he saw Achiha Tunin push open the study door and walked in. After hearing Achiha Tunin's words, his whole body froze in place. It was only when the footstep sound descending the stairs came to his ears that Hataki Do relaxed a little and looked at little Naruto lying asleep in his cradle bed with a flat face. It's amazing how important this little guy is. Is it because this little guy is the child of Master's teacher? Thinking about it, Hataki Do shook his head repeatedly to shake off this impractical idea. Impossible, if Master really value the mentorship that much. With the ability of Master, the fourth Hokage simply cannot die. Could it be that this little guy is very precious material? Without any regards on Hataki Do who is racking his brain, Achiha Tunin had already arrived in the dusty laboratory at this time. He manipulated a few puppets in the lab and started to do a sweep of the lab. Achiha Tunin himself came to sit on the sofa, closed his eyes and entered into a false sleep. In the tail beast space. As if thunderous snoring sounded one after another. Ninetale had a dream that he left this dark place and returned to Kushina's body. In the dream, the nine tails are talking merrily with Kushina. Suddenly, a pair of scarlet eyes appeared in front of his eyes. Ninetale immediately jolted and woke up from the dream. However, Ninetail opened his eyes, but found that instead of pitch black, it was bright in front of him. The ancient palace, the large dragon pillar, and the Uchiha kid sitting there in the center of the palace sipping tea. Nasty nightmare, I need to wake up soon. Ninetail muttered and closed his eyes again. However, the next moment, in the heart of the Ninetail the devil whispered voice rang out. It looks like you're having a comfortable time here. Nine tails suddenly opened wide eyes, his hair cannot help but explode, shivering. When did you get here? Achiha Tunin slowly sipping tea, and just asked, I want the answer. Nine tail did not say a word, just stared at Achiha Tunin with a wary look. Achiha Tunin drink the cup of tea in one go, and slams it heavily to the table. Snap! Nine tails body shook imperceptibly, then curled up. You're really untamed. Achiha Tunin sighed softly while shaking his head, while slowly standing up and raising his right hand. Nine Tails' pupils suddenly shrink, thinking of the previous nightmarish experience, hurried to explain. It's not that I won't say, it's that I really don't know. I'm just a tailed beast made by the Rokudo Sanin. If there was really some secret, how could he have told me? Achiha Tunin looked indifferent. A dark hollow emerged from the palm of his hand, a golden chain spread out from the hollow. Nine tails backward fiercely, body hit the coiled dragon pillar, and anxiously said, I'm not lying to you, why can't you just trust me for once? Achiha Tunin lifted his legs and took a step towards the nine tails. The golden chains in his hands were like spiritual snakes flipping in the air. I really don't know, you can't do this to me, you have to trust me. I'll give you as much chakra as you want, and we'll be partners from now on. No. Not a partner, you are my master. Please. Don't hit me. Ninetail seems to have foreseen the scene of his skin splitting open, his body leaning close to the dragon pillar. 
while begging for mercy, his mind was spinning madly, recalling the traces of his time with the Rokudo Sanin. Suddenly, a flash of light came to Ninetale's mind, and he hurriedly exclaimed, Don't, don't! I thought about it, about Azura and their relationship with the Rokudo Sanin. Azura and Indra are not descendants of Rokudo Sanin and human. They are actually the offspring of the Rokudo Sanin who defeated the Chakra Originator and fused the Sacred Tree to create them. Uchiha Tunin remains unmoved, his right hand flicked up. The golden chains slashed toward the Ninetale. Ninetale hurriedly closed his eyes and paused clutching his head, hissing. I told you all I know, you believe me once okay. After a long time, the expected pain did not come. Ninetale slowly opened his eyes. Only to see the palace empty, Uchiha Tunin's figure has disappeared without a trace. Ninetale carefully lifted his head and looked around carefully. After making sure that Uchiha Tunin had left, Ninetales fell to the ground at once, panting and saying, Phew that guy is finally gone. Outside, in the laboratory. Uchiha Tunin reached out to take the hot tea handed to him by the puppet and took a sip. His eyebrow is filled with thoughtfulness. The sacred tree. That thing can actually make a man pregnant. Kagaya birthed two ungrateful sons, and as a result, they were sealed by the ungrateful sons. The Rokudo Sinin gives birth to Azura and Indra. But they all died, only the so-called Chakra still keep reincarnating in the Shinobi world. If Kagaya had not been sealed, would those two unfilial sons have ended up with Azura and Indra? Thinking about it, Achiha Tunin felt as if he had captured a certain key point. Sealing their own mother, for the sake of Ninja World and every other living being. Achiha Tunin did not think that the two alien species would have such a high level of awareness. Instead, he's more convinced that they are in it for survival as well as profit. But it happened so far back in the ages of Rokudo Sanin, the clues are almost zero. Of course, there are two clues at hand for reference. Thinking of this, Achiha Tunin lifted his head, his eyes under the bandages gazing through the thick wall at little Naruto lying asleep in his cradle bed, and murmured. When it's agreed, we can start working it. Prior to that, we must find out whether there is a documentary record about that time. After saying that, Achiha Tunin controlled the puppet to fetch a white paper and pen. With the pen, he wrote a sentence on a piece of paper. The next moment, Achiha Tunin left eyes slightly glared, and paper was sucked into the divine space. At the same time, the masked Tunin, who was walking on the sea, had a gaze in his eyes and raised his right hand. A spatial vortex emerges at the palm of the hand. After the spatial vortex disappeared, a piece of paper had appeared in his hand. After reading the message on the paper, the masked Tunin lifted his head to look at the sky. That direction is where the battlefield between Kiridakur and Kanoha is located at this time, the Old Whirlpool Kingdom. Chapter 352 Funeral Early morning the next day. Kanoha Village, in the Memorial Square. The cold winter seemed to come overnight. The temperature in the entire Kanoha plummeted. The dark clouds on a cloudy day piled up like a thick piece of iron, pressing down heavily in the air. The snow was as light as smoke, as white as silver, fluttering and fluttering, falling from the sky. On the ground, a funeral ceremony was being held in front of the memorial tablet. Under Haruzan Saratobi's arrangements, a large number of civilians and ninjas lined up in a few rows, orderly coming to the memorial tablet and offering their own flowers. Compared to the ninjas who were used to death, the families of the civilians cried hysterically. It must be known that many civilians tried their best to move into Kanoha after spending a lot of money. One of the reasons was the safety of Kanoha. But this time, the Kyubi Rebellion caused a large number of civilian casualties. After everyone was done with the flowers, the next part was the speech session. This was supposed to be the responsibility of the Hokage, but now that Minato was dead, it was naturally Achiha Tunin who had the highest prestige and strength to give the speech. After all, he still had to announce that Hiruzen Saratobi was the temporary Hokage. It was only appropriate for Achiha Tunin to personally announce these words. 
He saw that Uchiha Tunin had changed into a white trench coat today. He walked to the memorial tablet filled with flowers, facing everyone. First, he took a deep breath, as if he was calming the deep sorrow in his heart. Then, he let out a long sigh and said, the night before yesterday, Kanoha experienced an unprecedented turmoil. The QB broke the seal, and the fourth lord and his wife both died. There were also countless Kanoha ninjas and villagers who died in this turmoil. Here, I have to tell all the participants of the QB rebellion. You guys have worked hard. When he said this, Achiha Tunin put his hands on his knees and bowed deeply to the crowd. Everyone lowered their heads all of them sad and silent. Half a minute later, Achiha Tunin straightened up and said with a sad face, October 10th, night. A mysterious man wearing a tiger skin mask sneaked into Kanoha. He released the Kyubi in the body of the Jinchuriki who just gave birth. He even sent the Kyubi to the village, causing a lot of casualties and property loss. Then, Achiha Tunin's tone gradually became sonorous and forceful, and his voice was full of emotion. In the face of such a huge disaster, all the ninjas participated in the war, risked their lives, dared to fight, and bravely fought with the Kyubi to the death. They made an important contribution to the safety of the life of their compatriots. Some of the ninjas sacrificed their precious lives, burning the will of fire in their hearts with hot blood. Use action to fulfill the original heart that they never forgot. In this incident, your heroic feat was fully affirmed by the seniors of Kanoha. They will be highly praised by the villagers of Kanoha. I believe that after this incident spread across the ninja world, it would definitely cause a strong response. Kanoha, thanks for you. The younger generation of Kanoha will be proud of you. I am here to express my sincerest condolences to you on behalf of all the leaders of Kanoha, as well as the highest level of respect. Achiha Tinan once again bowed deeply to the crowd with his hands on his knees. The people of this world had never heard such an official speech before. Speeches like this are shocking at first, disgusting at second, and drowsy after. The Kanoha ninjas who were immersed in the pain of their companions dying began to have fighting spirit in their eyes again. They clenched their fists, their faces flushed, and they were extremely excited. In front of the crowd, Danzo's eyes narrowed slightly, and he whispered to Haruzan Saratobi beside him. This guy is much stronger than you. When Haruzan Saratobi heard this, he nodded in agreement and said in a low voice. I watched him grow up. When he was a child, he liked to read books. It was normal for him to be more cultured than me. However, in terms of the will of fire, I have to be better at it. Achiha Tenen continued. The moment the Nine-Tailed Rebellion happened, it attracted the attention of the higher-ups of various departments in Kanoha. They were all very concerned about Kanoha's heroes who were fighting on the first line. Especially the Third Hokage and Sir Danzo. Although they were old, they still organized their forces in the first place. Even in times of danger, they fought side by side with everyone and rushed to the front line to protect Kanoha. They made Kanoha's anti-attack force condense into one, and they were really organized and disciplined in the face of danger. Here, I want to thank the third and Sir Danzo. Achiha Tinan immediately turned around and bowed deeply to Haruzan Saratobi and Danzo who were standing in front of the crowd. Haruzan Saratobi and Danzo nodded slightly without any expression on their faces. In their hearts, they were calling out, This kid is really sensible. After bowing, Achiha Tunin moved to the side and slowly placed his right hand on his chest. He looked at the memorial tablet and said, This time, the one who contributed the most to the chaos of the Nine Tails was naturally the fourth Hokage. Unfortunately, the heavens were jealous of the talented. The fourth and his wife both died at the hands of the mysterious man. The Kage of the Great Ninja World's first ninja village was killed in the village. This is a great humiliation. We will definitely take revenge. But not now. Right now, it was the time when the world of ninjas was in a precarious situation. Kanoha has experienced such a disaster for the third time, and it can't stand it anymore. Seeing the expression on Achiha Tunin's face, he raised his hands and said, Here, 
I hope that everyone will use the kindness and concern of the senior generation of Kanoha as motivation to turn the grief of the sacrifice of their companions into power. The continuous development of the will of fire, which is particularly good at fighting, particularly able to endure hardships, and is particularly good at contributing. Keep in mind the heavy trust, do not disgrace the mission, and properly recuperate. This is to comfort the souls of the deceased. Do not disappoint the expectations of the villagers. As soon as his voice fell, the group of Kanoha ninjas seemed to be injected with vigor and shouted, I won't let down the villagers' expectations. I won't let down the villagers' expectations. I won't let down the villagers' expectations. After the shouting stopped, Achiha Tunin waved to the side. An old granny with a head full of white hair came to the memorial tablet with the help of an umbu. The old granny couldn't help but burst out in emotions as soon as she reached the memorial tablet. She kept stomping on the cane in her hand and cried out, Iwatobi, my good grandson. When everyone saw this, they were all overcome with sorrow and tears trickled down. Achiha Tenen raised his head, and the bandage on his eyes was soaked. Then he walked forward, grabbed the old woman's arm, and comforted her. Grandma, don't cry. In the future, the juniors of Kanoa will be your grandchildren. You must take good care of yourself. After saying that, he simply hugged the old granny and patted her back, comforting her non-stop. He allowed the old granny's tears to wet his chest. At this moment, everyone present saw Uchiha Tunin's approachable and soft side. After all, most people had only heard of Uchiha Tunin's various legends and a small number of people had only seen Achiha Tunin fight from afar. Although the coverage of the Kanoha village was enough, Achiha Tunin still needed to polish his character. He had to avoid the villager to view him like Achiha Madara, he needs them to see him like they saw Ashurama Senju. When Achiha Tunin felt that the show was almost done, he gently held the old granny up and handed her over to the Umbu group who was waiting for orders. Then, he let out a long sigh and turned around to face the crowd. Most of the people who came here today are like the old granny, belonging to the families of the martyrs. Money is just a worldly possession, so you can earn more if you lose it. However, people are different. Once they were gone, they could no longer be seen. We could see that there were many names added to the tablet. Whose father were they, whose husband, and whose son were they? One more name represented the pain of one more family. Here, I want to talk to the families of the martyrs. Kanoha is a ninja village. The development, progress, and achievements of the ninja village. It is inseparable from the concern, understanding, and support of your family members. Not only do you have to silently suffer the mental pain of losing your loved ones. In the future, you have to overcome unimaginable difficulties and pressure. Here, the higher-ups of the various departments of Kanoha have discussed, and in addition to the pension, they will also provide you with a certain degree of preferential treatment. Kanoha will not forget any of the outstanding contributions of the martyrs, and will not forget the selfless contributions of the family members. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard a series of sounds from the crowd. Sniff! I just slipped out of the house when the house suddenly collapsed. My husband also died. Mia, don't be sad. If the house collapses, so be it. My house will be your home in the future. They said that my father was burned to death by the mysterious man. My wife was trampled to death by the hateful QB when she was running away. After a long time, the sound of mourning gradually became softer. Achiha Tunin took out a tissue from his pocket, pulled up the bandage, turned around and wiped it. Then, he took a deep breath, straightened his expression, turned around, and said in a clear voice, Everyone, please restrain your grief and come out of your sorrow as soon as possible. Look forward. Today, I have to announce one more thing. Speaking up to here, Achiha Tunin paused. The leaders of the ninja clan and the higher-ups of Kanoha stared at Achiha Tunin. Naturally, everyone guessed what Achiha Tunin was going to announce. For these people, no matter how many people died, they would not be able to move their emotions. Only things that were related to benefits were worth their concern. Achiha Tenen solemnly said, 
fourth generation died, and the position of Hokage is vacant. The village cannot be hidden forever. However, fourth generation had just taken office for a year, so it was not suitable for electing the fifth. Therefore, after the discussion of the higher-ups, we have unanimously decided that the experienced third generation will temporarily assume the post of Hokage. Next, the third Hokage would like to speak with all of you. After saying that, Achiha Tenen retreated to the side. Hiruz and Saratobi walked out from the crowd and arrived in front of the memorial tablet. When the clan leaders saw that Hiruz and Saratobi had become a Hokage again, they all had different expressions. This was especially true for Achiha Fugaku. He stared fixedly at Achiha Tunin, his face full of confusion. It had been known that from the moment the Ninetail Chaos happened until now, the entire clan of Achiha had been placed under house arrest within the clan territory. Even in this morning assembly, only the clan head, Achiha, Fugaku, participated. There had yet to be any discordant sounds within the clan of Achiha because this time, Achiha Tunin's prestige was too great. Everyone thought that Achiha Tunin would succeed as the fifth Hokage. But now, it was Haruzen Saratobi who became the Hokage again. Achiha Fugaku was keenly aware that something was wrong. Cough, cough. Haruzen Saratobi coughed twice, took a deep breath, and spoke in a clear voice. In the land where Kanoha is flying, the fire is endless. As expected, although the content of Haruzen Saratobi's speech this time was carefully prepared, it was still just changing the soup and not change the medicine. Fortunately, the education of Kanoha ninjas was not too high, and they were still affected by Haruzen Saratobi's speech. By the time Haruzen Saratobi finished his speech, it was already close to noon. The morning ceremony will end here. At two o'clock in the afternoon, we will hold a ninja clan meeting. Please come to the Hokage's building. After the morning ceremony, everyone left the memorial tablet one after another. Achiha Tunin had just walked out of the memorial square when he was grabbed by Achiha Fugaku who had caught up with him. Achiha Tunin turned around and said with a puzzled face, Mr. Fugaku, what's the matter? Achiha Fugaku looked around and immediately said with a serious expression, Tunin, why is the new Hokage the third? Now that your legs have recovered, and with your status as Jinchuriki, you can succeed as the fifth Hokage. Is there something wrong with this? Achiha Tunin shook his head and said, Didn't I tell you the specific reason just now? The fourth Hokage has only been in office for a year, yet fifth Hokage is about to appear in Kanoha. It's not good to hear about it. We have to think about Kanoha's reputation. However, Achiha Fugaku was not so easy to fool. He grabbed Achiha Tunin's arm and said in a low voice, That's not a reason. What if a lie can't fool people? Then it would be matched with a proper demeanor and tone, and another lie. Achiha Tunin's expression changed slightly, and he pondered for a long time before he slowly said, This matter is very complicated. First, the masked man from that night was determined to be a member of Achiha. Second, the Hokage handled too many affairs every day. My eyes are blind. If I want to print documents, I need to use Perception Ninjutsu at all times. Although I survived by luck, my chakra was actually nine tails, not mine. I can't tell you the details. I hope you don't think too much about it and don't tell anyone. Achiha Fugaku listened to the clouds and mists, only to hear that Achiha Tunin could not succeed the five generations of Hokage because he was implicated by that mysterious man. Moreover, there seemed to be a problem with Achiha Tunin. Is. That so? That was true. After all, Tunin had truly died back then. The resurrection of a dead person would definitely have some flaws. However, who was that mysterious person? Achiha Fugaku frowned as he wanted to clear up Achiha Tunin's doubts. However, since the other party had already said that it was not good to go into detail, it was not good to continue asking. He could only rely on himself to slowly guess. Seeing that he had managed to stabilize Fugaku, Achiha Tunin whispered with a serious face. Take advantage of the time now to inform the clansmen. In the evening, we will hold a clan assembly at the Southern Shrine. 
Achiha Fugaku was still in a daze, but seeing Achiha Tunin's serious expression, he guessed that something big had happened. He immediately said with a serious face, Okay, I will go back and inform my clansmen immediately. Chapter 353, Clan Conference Two o'clock in the afternoon. In the conference room of the Hokage building, Haruzen Saratobi was sitting on the stage, and Uchiha Tunin and Danzo were sitting on his left and right. Below them were the chiefs of Kanoha, big and small. Sitting in the middle of the first row were the two heads of the two biggest families in Kanoha, Hayashi Hyuga and Uchiha Fugaku. Seeing that everyone was present, Haruzen Saratobi coughed lightly and said, In this ninja meeting, I've gathered everyone together to discuss something about the mysterious man. According to our current information, this mysterious man is good at time and space ninjutsu. He can transfer himself to a different space to avoid the damage of reality attacks. You can also create a space vortex to suck ninjutsu and objects into a different space. In addition, Haruzen Saratobi was still speaking slowly, but Danzo couldn't wait any longer and directly interrupted. From the clues we got, the eyes of that mysterious man are the Mangekyo Sharingan of Uchiha clan. Fugaku, do you have anything you want to say? As soon as he finished speaking, all the ninja clan chiefs looked at Uchiha Fuyue. At this time, Uchiha Fugaku's face was extremely ugly. He glared at Danzo, then looked at Haruzen Saratobi and said, Hokage-sama, are you suspecting that Uchiha clan has a rebellious heart? Haruzen Saratobi coughed heavily, and a warm smile appeared on his face. Fugaku, don't get too excited. Kanoha has never doubted the loyalty of Uchiha's clan. But you can't deny that the mysterious man is indeed Uchiha. Unless the eyes of Uchiha's clan were lost, and outsiders had mastered the method to eliminate the side effects. Although Haruzen Saratobi had a smile on his face as he spoke and looked amiable, the meaning in his words was obvious that he suspected Uchiha's clan. Uchiha Fugaku did not know how to answer. After all, what the other party said was true, so he could only shift his gaze to Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin felt Uchiha Fuyue's pleading gaze and immediately said, Let me be the one to speak. Lord Fugaku, that mysterious person actually exchanged blows with me for a short period of time when he first appeared. He called himself Achiha Madara. Achiha Fugaku was stunned when he heard this, and he said with a face of disbelief, Achiha Madara. The entire conference room was filled with discussions. The legendary Madara of the ninja realm? He's already so old, how is he still alive? There is a possibility, after all, the masked man's own strength does not seem to be strong, it is just that time-space ninjutsu is difficult to deal with. If Uchiha Madara is still alive, then he is already old, so this strength is very suitable. Uchiha Madara has long defected against Kanoha, and that has nothing to do with the Uchiha clan. Cough cough. Uchiha Tunin coughed twice, and the entire conference room suddenly became silent. Uchiha Tunin looked at Uchiha Fugaku and said, whether it is Uchiha Madara is not completely confirmed. Kanoha does not care about whether he is Uchiha Madara or not. In all of Kanoha, only I, the fourth and third Hokage know about the specific information of the Jinchuriki giving birth. We can't leak it to anyone else. Then it is very likely that a spy has found out and informed the person who called himself Uchiha Madara. Uchiha Fugaku saw that Uchiha Tunin did not speak up for the Uchiha clan as expected. He slowly lowered his head and muttered, Lord Tunin, you also suspect that there is a traitor in the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Tunin sighed and said in a deep voice, Lord Fugaku, you should also know that if Uchiha Madara appears in front of a certain clan member, he will reveal his identity. Do you think that in the current Uchiha clan, how many clan members cannot be bewitched by that guy? That is Achiha Madara. Achiha Fugaku closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He then looked at Haruzen Saratobi and said coldly, How is Kanoha going to deal with Achiha's clan? Danzo slightly raised his eyebrows and coldly said, Achiha's clan is too close to the center of Kanoha. If there are any more problems, it will cause a great loss to the village. Therefore, 
we are determined to let Uchiha's clan move to the edge of the village. Uchiha Fugaku did not look at Danzo, but stared at Haruzen Saratobi. Haruzen Saratobi nodded silently. Uchiha Fugaku stood up and said loudly, What you just said was merely some speculation. Just a simple sentence and you want Uchiha's clan to give up such a huge benefit? Hiruzen Saratobi saw that Uchiha Fugaku seemed to be a little excited and quickly beckoned to the umbu at the side, indicating that he would give the map to Uchiha Fuyue. He revealed a kind smile and said, Fugaku, take a look at the new territory that I have divided for you first. It is almost twice as big as the current territory. The umbu placed the map on the table in front of Uchiha Fugaku. Uchiha Fugaku lowered his eyes slightly and glanced at the land drawn on the map. Seeing that the land that Kanoha gave Uchiha was so close to the forest of death, he became furious and clenched his fists, saying in a deep voice, Sorry, this compensation is not enough. At this time, Uchiha Tenen finally spoke. Then expand the territory. I took a look, and the expansion of it was just enough to include the Naka Shrine. In this way, Uchiha's clan could not be considered to have moved, and could only be said to have returned to their homeland. Moreover, Kanoha would also give Uchiha's clan various benefits. For example, fertility allowance, education allowance. As soon as Uchiha Tenen suggested this, the meeting room immediately fell into silence. According to Uchiha Tenen's proposal, the territory of Uchiha's clan had expanded by four times. One must know what was the most important thing in a clan. It was human. To be able to raise enough people, there was nothing more than money. For times the size of the land meant that Uchiha's clan could increase the number of people they had now by four times. Moreover, the so-called fertility and education allowance all had to be taken out by Kanoha with real gold and silver. Using Kanoha's money to raise children for Uchiha's clan. This was not a crime, but simply relying on power to seek benefits for their family. In an instant, all the ninja clan chiefs stared at Uchiha Tunin with inexplicable eyes. Of course, Uchiha Tunin's prestige was too great now, and no one dared to object. Only Danzo immediately slammed the table and shouted, I object, this is not suitable. Uchiha Tunin did not inform him of this proposal beforehand. This made Danzo feel like he had been set up again. They had agreed to punish Uchiha's clan together, but at the critical moment, Uchiha Tunin suddenly changed his mind and betrayed the group. However, in the face of the angry Danzo, Uchiha Tunin had no expression on his face and calmly said, There is no evidence to prove that Uchiha's clan is in the wrong. Even if there is a traitor in the clan, the entire Uchiha clan should not bear the consequences. This method not only guaranteed that the interests of Uchiha's clan would not be damaged, but also guaranteed the safety of Kanoha, killing two birds with one stone. All Kanoha paid was money. Money has always been the same as dirt in my eyes. The harmony of the village is the most important. Achiha Tenen said, too lazy to care about Danzo. He was just an old man who had failed. Did he really think he could be on equal footing with him? Danzo still wanted to retort, but Haruzen Saratobi knocked on the table twice with his pipe and said in a low voice, I support Tunin's opinion. Fugaku, do you have any objections? At this time, Achiha Fugaku was overwhelmed by joy. He secretly looked at Achiha Tunin with gratitude, and then said with a serious face, The Achiha clan follows the arrangement of Kanoha. Danzo snorted and sat back in his seat without saying a word. Hiruzen Saritobi smiled with satisfaction and nodded. In that case, the land of the Uchiha clan will be taken back to Kanoha. Let's discuss how to plan this land together. It can also make up for the loss of everyone in this turmoil. Suddenly, Uchiha Tunin, who was holding a cup of tea, paused, and his whole face was stunned. Huh? Hiruzen Saritobi, who was beside him, had been paying attention to Uchiha Tunin. He immediately turned his head and said with a face full of concern, Tunin, do you have any other opinions on this matter? Achiha Tunin chuckled and shook his head. No, I just suddenly remembered that Naruto should be breastfeeding. I'm really sorry. I wasn't ready when I left. Now, 
I have to excuse myself. Hearing this, Haruzan Saratobi smiled and nodded. It doesn't matter. There won't be anything big next. Tunin, go and do your work. Achiha Tunin bowed to the crowd to express his apology. He turned around and walked to the door of the meeting room. He pushed open the door and walked out. The moment he closed the door, Achiha Tunin's eyes under the bandage turned into three Magatama shapes, and two figures were reflected in his eyes. Achiha Tunin arrived instantly to the Children's Welfare Institute's study room with a flying thunder god. He opened the curtains and looked at the sky. In the sky of Kanoha, a white pigeon flew towards a certain direction under Achiha Tunin's control. This shouldn't be. How can there be eggs without chickens? At the same time, on a rooftop of a certain resident of Kanoha, two figures, one big and one small, stood on the rooftop and looked at Hokage Monument, who had been restored by Kanoha's ninjas. The small figure had yellow hair and looked to be eleven or twelve years old. He also wore a Kanoha ninja's headband. The big figure had black hair, and his bangs covered half of his face. He was wearing a trench coat, and his left sleeve was empty. The yellow-haired youth looked at Okage Monument, and while counting, he exclaimed, Wow, the face is actually reduced, not only without Dad, but also without Uncle Kakashi and Granny Tsunade. Then he ran around the rooftop and quickly looked at Kanoha. He murmured, There is no new city street. The streets and buildings are different. The one-armed young man next to him frowned. His eyes flashed a touch of divine light. He said, Before entering that strange space, that guy said he was going to harvest the Kyubi's chakra. Sure enough, it was like this. At this time, the two people were attracted by a turtle on the ground. The turtle raised its head and said mechanically, Warning, warning. The basic parameters of time are in disorder. Time movement has greatly deviated the target coordinates. This place is seriously inconsistent with the target coordinates set by Lord Urashiki. When the one-armed youth heard this, his eyes narrowed. You said time is moving. Is this past Kanoha? The yellow-haired teenager was also stunned. He asked doubtfully, past? Turtle said with a dull face. Yes, it is currently the era where the third is in charge of the village. However, there is an abnormality in the time parameters, and there may be unknown mistakes. The one-armed youth turned to look at the Hokage monument and murmured, Third? The yellow-haired youth was shocked. Really? The turtle nodded. Really? The one-armed youth immediately squatted down and stared at the turtle. Where is Urashiki? You said that we deviated from the coordinates. Did Urashiki go to other eras? Turtle replied with a straight face. Lord Urashiki set the era to the childhood of Uzumaki Naruto. However, because of a mistake in space movement, we were twelve years ahead of time. Lord Urashiki will arrive after a while. When the one-armed youth heard this, he said with a serious face, The target of Urashiki is indeed Naruto. In twelve years, the third generation will become the Hokage. In other words, Naruto was still in his swaddling clothes. If he had arrived, he should have taken Naruto's chakra. Fortunately, we arrived in this era before him. The yellow-haired youth clenched his fists and said angrily. He had his eyes on his father when he was a child. In short, as long as we manage to find Dad earlier Urashiki, we can protect him well. The one-armed youth nodded. Indeed. The turtle continued. You came from the future. I need to tell you something about time and space. Please do not reveal your identities, lest you affect the normal operation of this world. The yellow-haired teenager heard this, squatted down and looked at the turtle, then grabbed the turtle and shook it. Speaking of which, what kind of thing are you? Could it be that you are an accomplice of Urashiki? The turtle shook his head and said, I am a giant cylinder, space-time moving artifact, a plow. It doesn't have the concept of an accomplice you speak of. Therefore, I don't have a strong relationship with Lord Urashiki. My mission is to execute time movement and to convey the precautions after moving. 
Only then did the yellow-haired youth put the turtle down. He poked the turtle's back with his finger and said, The precious artifact is actually alive. However, this turtle is really old-fashioned when speaking. The one-armed youth looked at the turtle and said seriously, There is something you need to pay attention to. Turtle said with a straight face, First of all, as people of the future, you can't reveal this matter to the people of the past. Especially not to interfere with anyone who is close to you. The one-armed youth continued to ask, What will happen if your identity is exposed where you interfere? It will have a huge impact on the future. Any action you make in the past will change the future. So, please be careful. After saying that, the yellow-haired teenager clenched his fist and jumped, looking excited. This is just a piece of cake. I feel more and more excited. I can actually come to Kanoa when I was alive. However, what the two of them did not know was that from their appearance until now, their every move was in the eyes of the white pigeons on the distant roof and on the big tree. And it was transmitted to the brain of Uchiha Tunin through shared vision. Chapter 354 First Encounter Half an hour later, the two of them walked side by side on the street. Uzumaki Baruto avoids attracting the attention of Kanoha villagers. At this time, he had put away his Kanoha headband and put it in his bag. And Sasuke Uchiha got a brown trench coat from somewhere to wrap himself tightly and wore a top hat on his head. He looked like a gentleman attending a banquet. Sasuke Sensei, I really don't understand your style of dressing. Baruto subconsciously pulled away from Sasuke. While looking at the pedestrians on the streets, he pulled down his hat and said in a low voice, Bear with it. I have just been born in this era. Try not to attract the attention of others. The corners of Baruto's mouth twitched, and he smiled awkwardly, Okay, I know. But why do I feel that your dress is a little eye-catching? Sasuke glanced at Baruto and asked in a low voice what happened to the plow. Baruto gently patted the bag on his waist and said, He said that he didn't have enough chakra fuel and returned to his shell. I put him in a small bag. Hearing this, Sasuke frowned and said in a deep voice, Is that so? It seems that after the mission is completed, I will have to think of a way to go back. I have consumed too much chakra before, and I estimate that it is not enough to replenish it in a short period of time. It is simply like a strange city. By the way, let's go eat the Thunder Burgers of this era. Baruto suddenly stopped and said this to Sasuke excitedly. Sasuke shook his head helplessly and said, How can there be such a thing? No. The expression on the Baruto's face was a little disappointed. Suddenly, Baruto saw the Ichiraku Ramen house out of the corner of his eye and immediately exclaimed, Oh my god, Ichiraku used to be such a small shop. I can't believe it. The sudden exclamation immediately attracted the attention of the surrounding people. Seeing that the surrounding people had turned their eyes to Baruto, Sasuke immediately shouted, Be quiet, Baruto. Then he grabbed the scruff of Baruto and dragged it away. After walking through several streets, he let go of his hand and said with a serious face, We are now on a mission to save the world. I hope you will take it seriously. However, Baruto said indifferently. There is no way. It is too interesting. Moreover, Urashiki haven't even arrived yet, and this is Kanoha, so there's nothing to worry about. Sasuke's face sank, and he stared at Baruto and coldly said, Don't compare the Kanoha of our era to this place. The current Kanoha is the real ninja village. The status of a ninja is far higher than that of a commoner. Even killing one or two people who are not from this village does not require any reason. Don't think that your jinin can be so strong here. The ninjas here may not have that many powerful ninjutsu, but each person is proficient in all kinds of killing techniques. Many people can easily kill you. As soon as he finished speaking, Baruto was completely stunned and stood there in a daze. Sasuke's original intention was to remind Baruto, and naturally, he was not willing to spook Baruto. He immediately reached out and patted the head of Baruto, and said slowly, But you don't have to worry too much. With me here, no one in this era can hurt us. 
Now we have to find Naruto as soon as possible. Our goal is to protect Naruto from being hurt by Urashiki. Baruto nodded blankly, looked around, and whispered. Mr. Sasuke, do you have no clue? Hearing this, Sasuke fell into deep thought and murmured. In this era, he should be in his own home. I just don't know if there is an Umbu unit to take care of him. Suddenly, Baruto's voice was heard again. That. Sasuke frowned and said in a low voice, Baruto, I told you to be quiet. Baruto pointed at a figure pushing a baby carriage at the end of the street and said, No. That baby has a scar on his face. When Sasuke heard this, he looked up and saw a man wearing a white trench coat and a bandage on his eyes. He was pushing the baby carriage with an elegant and easygoing smile. The baby who was sleeping in the baby carriage had scar on his face like that of the Baruto. Sasuke was stunned and muttered, Naruto. The two of them quickly walked towards the baby carriage. The man pushing the stroller obviously covered his eyes with bandages, but he seemed to be able to see them and stopped on his own initiative. The man was naturally Achiha Tunin. However, he noticed that the two of them had been wandering around the village like fools. That was why he took the initiative to attack and had a coincidental encounter with the two of them. The man walked to the front of the baby carriage and quickly glanced at the baby in the middle. Then, he looked at Uchiha Tunin and hesitated for a moment before saying, Hello, is this uncle's child? Uchiha Tunin smiled gently and said, That's right, it is my son. The excitement on the faces of Baruto and Sasuke instantly cooled down. He scratched his head awkwardly and smiled. I see. Your child looks really cute. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He said slowly, You guys look a little unfamiliar. I don't know what you are doing here in Kanoha. Seeing that someone had seen through it, Baruto panicked and stammered. Uh. We. Oui. Suddenly, Baruto, who couldn't think of a suitable reason, rolled his eyes, quickly changed the subject, and said in an exclamation tone, Uncle, you can see us with bandages? Uchiha Tunin said lightly, Perception Ninjutsu. Baruto looked up and down at Uchiha Tunin and saw that his age seemed to be not very old. To actually be able to use perception to replace the eyes, he thought to himself. Ninjas of this era really cannot be underestimated. At this time, Sasuke, who was standing on the side, finally thought of an excuse and calmly said, We are street artists, and we are here to sell our skills. Achiha Tunin turned to face Sasuke and said softly, When did you arrive? Sasuke braced himself and replied, I just arrived today. Achiha Tunin nodded slightly. Just when the two thought that they had escaped, they saw Achiha Tunin's expression suddenly turn cold and an invisible aura spread out. He shouted, Kanoha has been under martial law since last night. Tell me, who are you? What is your purpose in coming to Kanoha? Uh. Sasuke's pupils suddenly shrank, and his right hand that was hidden in his sleeve subconsciously grasped the hilt of his sword. In other words, the previous night was the chaos of the Nine Tails, and it was also the day when Naruto was just born. Oh no, he had given himself away. Just as Sasuke was about to knock out Uchiha Tunin and then leave with Baruto. Uchiha Tunin's imposing manner instantly disappeared, and he said in a gentle tone, but, your eyes are very clear and beautiful. This was a look that bad people could not have. So, I won't pursue the responsibility of your intrusion into Kanoha. Sasuke did not expect this person in front of him to be so strange that he did not continue to ask. However, thinking that it was better to have one less thing to do, he was too lazy to think about it. After all, he and Baruto were just passers-by here. No matter what the other party thought, it was meaningless. Thank you, we will leave immediately. Sasuke immediately released the sword hilt hidden in his sleeve, grabbed the arm of Baruto and walked to the end of the street. Suddenly, Achiha Tunin's voice sounded from behind him. Wait a minute. Sasuke stopped in his tracks and turned around to look. He saw Achiha Tunin calmly take out a card from his pocket and hand it over. This is my business card. 
If there is anything you need help with, you can come to me. Really? Thank you so much. Baruto took the business card with a happy face and was dragged away by Sasuke in the next moment. Watching the two people disappear into the street, Achiha Tenen said thoughtfully, That shouldn't be the case. With me here, how could there be someone else? Could it be that I failed? But when they heard my name, it was as if they had heard a stranger. Parallel space-time? That would be interesting. After saying that, he saw Uchiha Tenen pushing the baby carriage towards Uchiha's territory. Although there were two big gift bags from the heavens, he could not delay his business. Before going to participate in tonight's clan assembly, he went to see his own disciple and Sasuke during his infancy. As for these two gifts, as long as they did not leave Kanoha, they would always be under his surveillance. The recognition of the middle-aged Sasuke might not be so easy to obtain, but the eyes of Baruto were a flower that came out of a greenhouse. By the way, I heard that they said that Urashiki would be arriving soon. This is a pure alien with great research value. On the other side, after Sasuke and Baruto parted with Uchiha Tunin, they walked all the way to the home of Uzumaki Naruto and Sasuke's childhood memories. On the way, Baruto was still recalling the scene of meeting Uchiha Tunin. He said thoughtfully, Mr. Sasuke, that uncle seems to be a good person. We might be able to find where my father is through him. When Sasuke heard this, a serious look flashed in his eyes. He said in a low voice, That person gave me a very strange feeling. He seems to be a strong person. If I'm not wrong, he is still a powerhouse who just came down from the battlefield. That momentum is not something that can be embraced by killing one or two people. Baruto was stunned, scratching his head and thinking about it. It was when Uchiha Tunin released his momentum that he deliberately avoided Baruto. Therefore, he knew nothing about what was going on with the momentum that Sasuke was talking about. Out of boredom, he took out the name card that Uchiha Tunin had just given him and read it out softly. Chief of the Umbu, Uchiha Tunin. It's your kin, Mr. Sasuke. After saying that, Baruto turned to look, only to find that Sasuke had stopped his footsteps and stood in place, deep in thought. Baruto immediately said with a puzzled face, Mr. Sasuke, what's wrong? Sasuke thought for a long time, frowned and raised his head to look at Baruto. His face was ugly. I have never heard of this person. Baruto was slightly stunned. He thought for a moment and said, Hasn't your family been exterminated? It's normal that you haven't heard of it. Sasuke shook his head repeatedly and raised his head to look around. For some reason, Sasuke suddenly found that Kanoha in this era seemed so strange that it was terrifying. It was only when Sasuke's eyes moved to the direction of the Okage and saw the familiar four faces that he calmed down and muttered. The clan of Uchiha has never produced an Umbu leader, and the Umbu has always belonged to the Umbu, so it is impossible for them to have a position of leader. Baruto did not think too much about it, and said with a disappointed face. Ah! So that person was lying to us. Although Sasuke instinctively felt that things were not so simple, he still nodded perfunctorily and said, he should be a liar. The two of them continued to walk towards the location in Sasuke's memory. However, when they reached their destination, they were dumbfounded. There was no residential building here. It was a small park. There were old people playing with cats and dogs everywhere. A fat pet dog slowly came to the big tree beside the two of them. Then, he raised his leg, took a piss, and went back to sleep at the foot of the old woman who was sitting on the wooden chair with satisfaction. When Baruto saw this scene, the corners of his mouth twitched slightly and he said, Mr. Sasuke, are you sure you didn't remember wrongly? Sasuke carefully recalled it and then sighed. I didn't remember wrong. This place is indeed Naruto's home in twelve years. Maybe it will take a few more years to build a house. Baruto immediately put his hands into his hair and squatted on the ground with a mad face. I have no clue at all. At this time, my father is still a baby. Who will know him? Sasuke frowned and let out a long sigh. No matter what, we can only look for it slowly. 
if only the time had not been pushed forward. Naruto was famous in Kanoha when he was young. As for now, probably only the third knew of Naruto. After all, the nine-tailed fox is a taboo topic. Baruto sighed helplessly and stood up. Just as the two of them turned around and were about to leave, there was a loud gossip behind them. Your information is not concrete enough. My grandson is Kanoha's Jounin. He was on the battlefield at that time. According to him. At that time, Lord Tunin shouted and let go. The mysterious man was terrified on the spot. He only saw the golden chain pull and Lord Tunin snatched the child of the fourth generation. Hearing this, the two of them turned around and looked over. They saw several old people sitting together on the long chair in the park, watching their dog chasing and playing while chatting. Lord Tunin is also very loyal. I heard that he even adopted Naruto. Really? That little guy is too lucky. This child Naruto, his father is the fourth Hokage, and his foster father is Lord Tunin. His future is limitless. At this moment, Baruto only felt a little confused and muttered, didn't you say that the identity of my father is a secret? At this moment, one of the old people wearing glasses looked at Baruto. He looked at it carefully, as if he found something amazing. He pointed to Baruto and said, Look, that kid looks like Minato. Oh, he's quite handsome. It's a pity that this little guy is not an adult yet. My granddaughter won't have a chance. Let's go. With a low shout, Sasuke dragged Baruto and ran toward the original road. Baruto asked while running, Where are we going? Sasuke turned to look at Baruto and reminded him, Have you forgotten what that person was called just now? Only then did Baruto react. He suddenly exclaimed, Lord Uchiha Tunin. Lord Tunin. Didn't you say that Uchiha's clan doesn't have this person? Sasuke's eyes narrowed slightly. He looked at Baruto who was in front of him and muttered, It is possible that after Achiha's clan was exterminated, this person's classified information was destroyed. Suddenly, Sasuke stopped in his tracks and suddenly turned around to look at a large tree in the distance. At the same time, Achiha Tunin, who had just walked out of Achiha's territory, slightly curved his lips. He said slowly, Oh, it seems that his strength is not bad. He has been discovered. Baruto said with a confused face, Mr. Sasuke, what's wrong? Sajaj looked at the big tree and said calmly, It seems that my feeling is correct. Someone has been watching us. Hearing this, Baruto looked in the direction of Sasuke's eyes. He saw a pigeon on the branch of the big tree staring at him with its head tilted. Pigeon? Sasuke closed his fingers and raised them in front of him. His right eye opened the three tomo and suddenly glared. In the next moment, the white pigeon fell down from the tree branch. Sasuke quickly released his Sharingan and said in a deep voice, It should be the ninja of Kanoha. It seems that we have been targeted. Don't underestimate the ninjas of this era. They are all killed from fresh blood. I think that if we don't leave quickly, there will be people from the Umbu coming to us soon. Baruto looked at Sasuke and said, but they are definitely not the opponents of Urashiki. Sajid stretched out his hand, held the arm of Baruto, and whispered, yes, now we can only rely on us. As soon as his voice fell, the two figures disappeared in an instant. When the two left, the white pigeon stood up and jumped like a bird, then spread its wings and flew into the trees, continuing to fulfill its duties. Chapter 355 meeting of the brothers. Outside the territory of Uchiha, the root ninjas hiding in the dark had retreated. However, the outside of Uchiha's clan was still a little cold. After all, the Sharingan in the eyes of the Kyubi was exposed to everyone in Kanoha. Naturally, a lot of rumors also came out of the village, all aimed at Uchiha's clan. However, in the end, Achiha Tunin was also a member of Achiha's clan, so the villagers still seemed to be a little restrained. They only discussed a few things in private, and also stayed away from Achiha's clan on weekdays. Achiha Tunin pushed the baby carriage to the gate of the clan. 
the four members of the garrison at the gate hurriedly bent down and said, Lord Tunin. Achiha Tunin asked indifferently, Has Lord Fagaku returned? The guard replied, The patriarch has returned and informed all the ninjas to participate in tonight's gathering. Hearing this, Achiha Tunin nodded and pushed the baby carriage into the clan land, heading towards Achiha Fagaku's house. Anyway, it's all on the way, and I will take care of the recent situation of my disciples. And look at Sasuke when he was a baby. Just when Achiha Tunin was not far from Achiha Fagaku's house, his footsteps suddenly stopped. The eyes under the bandage turned into a kaleidoscope, looked down at Naruto who kept pedaling in the stroller, and murmured, This is. In Achiha Tunin's field of vision, wisps of golden light emanated from Naruto's body, extending towards Achiha Fagaku's house like a ribbon. It seemed that the distance was not close enough, and these golden lights could only extend to the end of the street. Could this thing be Azura Chakra? Was it because it was too close to Indra Chakra, so there was a reaction? Achiha Tunin frowned slightly and turned his awakened Mangekyo into the Kamui Mangekyo. The golden light in front of him instantly disappeared from his field of vision. Achiha Tunin tried it again, adding the ability of Byakugan to the Kamui Mangekyo. However, the eyes that were known for their insight still could not see the golden light. Even Byakugum and other types of Sharingan cannot see it. It seems that the host's soul is used as a shell to cover Azura Chakra. Right now, I'm no match for Rakuto Sinin. It's better to be cautious. Especially since Atsutsuki Urashiki may come soon, so don't attract the attention of the sages of the Six Paths. As for the two gifts, let them just be followers for a while. It was not easy to find them. Achiha Tunin quickly analyzed. He immediately turned around and walked straight towards the direction of the shrine. Not long after, Sasuke and Baruto finally arrived outside the land of Achiha. Baruto looked at the plaque on the entrance of the ancestral land and then looked at the wide and flat street inside the door. He looked as if he had never seen the face of death and exclaimed, Wow! This is Mr. Sasuke's home. Hearing this, Sasuke nodded and said, This is an old home. I only heard about this place when I was young. If you want to enter Achiha's clan, you need to verify your identity. I'll bring you in. That Achiha Tunin should be living in the clan grounds. As soon as he finished speaking, Sasuke led Baruto into the jungle beside the road. It didn't take long for the two of them to appear on the streets of Achiha's territory. They kept searching for traces of Achiha Tunin while avoiding the patrolling guards. The two of them searched for more than an hour but could not find any clues. The time was approaching dusk. The two of them had already walked out of Achiha's residence and arrived at a training ground. Seeing that there was no one around, Baruo finally could not help but say, The security here is too tight. Moreover, this place is so big. How long will it take to find it? Sasuke said with a calm face. When a ninja is on a mission, you have to suppress the impatience in your heart. You can always find it slowly. Suddenly, Sasuke stopped and looked into the distance. He seemed to be frozen in place. Beside a pond, two young figures, a man and a woman, were sitting side by side. The girl was holding a few tricolored dango in her hand while the boy was coaxing the baby in his arms. At the same time, the conversation between the two entered Sasuke's ears. Itachi, your brother is so cute. Sasuke has always been very obedient. Other than the time when the monster appeared that night, he rarely cried other times. Do you want to eat dango? Uh. I'm good, thank you. It's delicious. Try it. I won't lie to you. Al, right then. How is it? Do you like it? It's very sweet. Seeing this scene, Sasuke's expression was a little dim. Baruto looked at the light in Sasuke's eyes and asked curiously, Mr. Sasuke, what are you looking at? Do you know the two children? Sasuke did not answer, and there was a hesitant look on his face. He seemed to want to step forward and say a few words, but he was worried that it would affect something. Baruto did not think too much. 
seeing that there were only two children in front of him, thinking that the children were relatively simple and would not doubt their identities, his eyes immediately lit up and he said, Yes, we can ask them. As soon as he finished speaking, Baruto quickly ran towards Uchiha Itachi. Baruto! Sasuke stretched out his hand, but just as he was about to touch Baruto's sleeve, he retracted his hand. After hesitating for a moment, he stepped forward and followed. When Baruto came to the two of them, his face revealed a smile like that of a son. He greeted. Nice to meet you. The sound of greeting awakened Uchiha Itachi and Uchiha Izumi from the charming atmosphere. Uchiha Itachi sized up Baruto who suddenly appeared and then glanced at Sasuke who was following behind him, a flash of vigilance flashed in his eyes and said, You look unfamiliar. You shouldn't be an Uchiha's person. How could you be here? Baruto said loudly, We are here to find Uchiha Tunin. This sentence instantly angered the already unhappy Uchiha Izumi. Uchiha Izumi stand up, put her hands on her waist, and said, Hey, Lord Tunin is the great hero of Kanoha, the pride of Uchiha's clan. How can you call Lord Tunin without any honorifics? Hearing this, Baruto was stunned. He scratched his head and said, Hugh. Sorry, it was a slip of the tongue. Uchiha Itachi was much calmer. Seeing that the other party was looking for his teacher, he immediately said in a deep voice, Why are you looking for my teacher? Sasuke, who had just arrived behind Baruto, heard this and his eyes narrowed. Teacher? Itachi in this world actually has a teacher? It seemed that everything here had a deviation from the known history. Baruto saw that the child in front of him had a master and disciple relationship with the person he was looking for. He immediately took out the business card that Uchiha Tunin had given him from his bag and handed it over. This is the business card that Lord Tunin gave us. He asked us to look for him directly if there is anything. Now you can tell us where he is. Uchiha Itachi took the business card and observed it carefully. The vigilance on his face gradually faded and he returned the business card to the blog. He bent down and said, So it's teacher's friend. I don't know where teacher is now. But I heard from father that teacher will be heading to the Naka Shrine to host the gathering tonight. You can go there and wait for him. Before Baruto could speak, Sasuke who was behind him spoke first. Thank you. Achiha Itachi gave a slight smile. No need to thank me. Sasuke stared into Itachi's eyes, took a deep breath, and pulled Baruto towards the direction of the Naka Shrine. After the two of them left, Achiha Izumi tidied up her expression and restored the image of a shy lady from before. She said softly, Itachi, those two people are so strange. Could they be bad people? Achiha Itachi watched as the two of them disappeared from his field of vision, then turned to Achiha Izumi and smiled gently. In Kanoha, no one would dare to make a fake teacher's name card. Moreover, I feel that the uncle is a little friendly. Half an hour later, Baruto and Sasuke came to the outside of the Naka Shrine, but they were blocked by the guards here. Stop! This is Achiha's territory. No outsider is allowed. Baruto immediately took out the business card from his bag and handed it to the guard. We are here to find Lord Tunin. This is Lord Tunin's business card. However, the guard did not even look at the business card in Baruto's hand. He said coldly, Then all of you can only wait outside. Lord Tunin has instructed that unless the third Hokage arrives, no one is allowed to disturb. Hearing this, Baruto was slightly angry. But, Sasuke immediately grabbed the arm of Baruto and nodded to the guard. Then we will come back later. After that, he brought Baruto to the waterfall not far from the Naka Shrine and told him, Baruto, wait here. I will come to you later. Baruto immediately stopped Sasuke, who was ready to leave, and said, Mr. Sasuke, where are you going? Sasuke turned his back to Baruto and said, I want to sneak into the ancestral temple to pay my respects to the ancestors. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw that Sasuke's figure had disappeared without a trace. Tisk, 
Aren't you still trying to eavesdrop on others? Baru muttered with a face full of dissatisfaction and then lie down on a big rock to rest. There are no Thunder Burgers, no Thunder Cars, and no game consoles here. It's so boring. At night, the moonlight flickered under the cover of the dark clouds. Inside Naka Shrine. Except for the clansmen who are in the mist hidden battlefield and perform necessary patrol and security tasks. Most of the ninjas of the Uchiha clan gathered here. In the shrine, Uchiha Fugaku and Uchiha Tunin sat cross-legged on the left and right of the ancient inscription. Looking at the members of the shrine that filled the entire place in front of him, Uchiha Fugaku said in a deep voice, Everyone, today we have gathered everyone together to announce something important. As for the specific situation, let Lord Tunin announce it to you. Everyone's eyes immediately shifted to Uchiha Tunin's face. Uchiha Tunin said solemnly, the Umbu has found out that the masked man who controls the Nine Tails is born Uchiha. As soon as these words were spoken, the entire shrine was filled with discussions of the clansmen. It seems that the recent rumors in the village are all true. That day, I also saw the eyes of the Nine Tailed Fox change into the shape of a Sharingan. Moreover, it should be a Mangekyo. Who is that person? Why did he do such a thing? Damn it! As a clansman, shouldn't we discuss this with everyone before doing this? At the very least, we have to inform the clan leader or Lord Tunin. This is simply too presumptuous. To be able to control the Nine Tails and kill the fourth generation husband and wife alone, if I had this kind of strength, I would definitely be even more presumptuous. Hearing the discussion of his clansmen becoming more and more outrageous, Achiha Fugaku frowned and shouted, Enough! Do you all know what you are saying? Lord Tunin is the leader of the Umbu who protects the safety of the village. Don't you think that you won't make things difficult for Tunin before you speak? Faced with the dignity of the patriarch of Uchiha Fugaku, the group of Uchiha clansmen immediately calmed down and looked at Uchiha Tunin apologetically. However, there was no anger on Uchiha Tunin's face. Instead, he coughed with a smile and said, Cough, cough. We are all family. Just say whatever you want. As long as you don't say these things outside, it will be fine. Uchiha Tunin's words made the atmosphere relax. Uchiha Fugaku frowned when he saw this and looked at Uchiha Tunin with a worried face. Tunin, don't indulge them too much. I'm afraid that they will bring you trouble if this continues. After all, you have been dragged down by your clansmen. Uchiha Tunin smiled and waved his hand, indicating that there was no big problem. Then he said to the clansmen, The village has already become suspicious of Uchiha's clan. They ordered us to move our clan to the outskirts of the city within a month. As soon as he finished speaking, everyone immediately burst into an uproar. Each and every one of them said with an indignant expression, This is too much. What has this got to do with us? Yes. My house has just been built. Why should I move it? If I move to the suburbs, why would I spend so much money to buy a house? Lord Tunin, you can be the Hokage. As long as you become the Hokage, who would dare to order Uchiha's clan like this? When it came to his own interests, a fool finally said something he should not say. Of course, this question was not a problem for Uchiha Tunin at all. When Uchiha Fugaku raised this question, he had to make up a more appropriate reason to give a vague answer. However, if an ordinary Uchiha clansman asked, it would not be too simple. Uchiha Tunin reached out to stop Uchiha Fugaku who was about to shout angrily. He sighed and a carefree smile appeared on his face. I have a very serious handle in the hands of Kanoha's senior management, so I can't be Hokage. The shrine suddenly became silent. Although everyone wanted to know the specific reason, no one would be stupid enough to ask. They could only think about it in their hearts. Generally speaking, the answer made by one's own brain was the most reasonable and convincing. After a long time, Uchiha Tunin felt that everyone had more or less made up their minds. He opened his mouth and said, We have just gone through a brutal ninja war, and now there are clansmen dying on the battlefield every day. As a family, what Uchiha's family needs most now is to grow. Therefore, 
I made a decision. I will go back today and register the property of each family. After the relocation, the land of each family will be expanded four times in size. The small building will change the house and the house will change the manor. After Uchiha Tenen finished speaking, he looked apologetically at Uchiha Fugaku, who were confused beside him, and said, Lord Clan Leader, this is a plan I came up with along the way. I haven't had the time to talk to you. I wonder what your opinion is. Uchiha Fugaku came back to his senses and thought about it carefully. He revealed a smile on his face and said, If it is only for the sake of Uchiha's clan, I will support your decision. After hearing Uchiha Tunin's decision, the people below were stunned and thought that they had heard wrong. After confirming with his companions, he whispered in surprise. It doesn't seem like I can't accept it. That small family of mine is indeed a little small to have five people every day. Does that mean that I can have my own specialized training room? Even if the money to build a house still needs to be saved for a period of time, but the cost of hiring craftsmen and materials is not expensive. Achiha Tenen heard someone below say that building a house needed money, and immediately added, I've already told Mr. Hokage that the money for repairing the house will come from Kanoha. Beside him, Achiha Fugaku's face suddenly showed a happy expression, but he did not expect that Achiha Tenen actually quietly won such a big benefit for the Achiha clan. Immediately, he whispered, Tunin, when did the Hokage-sama agree? The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth slightly curved up. He leaned toward Uchiha Fugaku and softly said, Tomorrow. The people below were already overwhelmed by joy. They said excitedly, I support the relocation of the clan. After all, the masked man is likely to be hiding in the clan. It is indeed a hidden danger. I support it too. I don't want to see those civilians every day when I go out. Support. 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 At this time, Achiha Sasuke, who was lying on the top of the room and eavesdropping, recalled. It's really different. It is said that the land of Achiha in my world is about the same size as the land of the old. Achiha Tunin. A person that had never been heard of in history. Perhaps, the Uchiha of this world could avoid a tragic fate. In other words, Itachi, you finally don't have to bear that heavy fate anymore. Chapter 356 Bridging the Gap At this time, in the shrine, Uchiha Tunin had already begun to announce a new clan rule. In addition, for the prosperity of Uchiha's clan. From now on, the clan will be giving birth rewards. Every time a child was born in the family, they could receive a birth reward. Every month, they could also receive a birth bonus and an education allowance. They would receive these benefits until the children grew up. There was no limit to the quota. No matter how many children there were, the family would raise them for you. This rule was issued, and everyone's reaction was quite ordinary. In the Naruto world, raising children was basically not a burden. Commoners could raise several children, not to mention these ninjas. Seeing that everyone was not in high spirits, Achiha Tenen immediately began to raise the price. I will store the ninjutsu I collected with Master Fugaku. Every newborn can choose a scroll of ninjutsu from Lord Fugaku. Of course, this is just a small lottery, so it can only be selected blindly. It is possible to choose ordinary B level ninjutsu or to choose a powerful forbidden technique or my own original technique. Sure enough, compared to the so-called allowance, powerful ninjutsu could make these ninjas even more excited. Everyone below looked excited, as if they were already full of energy and were just going to go back tonight to prepare for a big fight. Seeing this, Achiha Tunin nodded with satisfaction. Very good, they have already entered the set. First, Use ninjutsu to tempt the people who are ready to give birth. The next step is to borrow the hands of Haruzen Saratobi and Danzo to remove the responsibility of the Kanoha garrison of the Uchiha clan. And now is not the Warring States period, and the Uchiha clan does not have any mines and fields. This way, the Uchiha clan will welcome a big wave of unemployment. At that time, the proud and conceited Uchiha could only rely on his children to receive an allowance to make a living. Anger, gaps, 
and resentment would also accumulate. After a long time, the whole clan conference ended. One by one, the Uchiha clansmen stood up and left the Naka shrine with a happy expression. After everyone left, Uchiha Fugaku also stood up slowly. He glanced at Uchiha Tunin, who was sitting cross-legged, and asked doubtfully, Tunin, is there anything else? Uchiha Tunin shook his head lightly and said, Patriarch, you can leave first. I am waiting for my subordinates to send the information here. Uchiha Fugaku did not ask any more questions. He nodded and said, Pay attention to your rest. After a long time, apart from the guards outside the shrine, only Uchiha Tunin was still sitting quietly in the shrine. Uchiha Tunin slowly raised his head and said softly, Eavesdropping is not a good habit. The next moment, Uchiha Sasuke appeared in front of Uchiha Tunin and said in a deep voice, How did you find me? The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly, and he asked, Is it very difficult? Sasuke narrowed his eyes and thought of the white pigeon he found today. He frowned slightly and said, You've been monitoring us with the white pigeon. Uchiha Tunin slowly stood up and walked out of the Naka shrine. He said slowly, You haven't eaten yet, right? Let's talk about it later at my house. Mr. Sasuke Uchiha Sasuke's pupils suddenly shrank when he heard this. How did he know my identity? Could it be that not only can the white pigeon transmit my vision, it can also hear the conversation between me and Baruto? Wouldn't that mean that? Uchiha Tunin seemed to be able to hear what Sasuke was thinking, paused his footsteps slightly, lowered his head, stroked Naruto in his arms, and said with a smile, I did hear it. But things are different from what you think. Let's go and pick up your companions first. It seemed that the future Sasuke did not cause the Azura Chakra within Naruto. That would save a lot of trouble. However, it would be difficult to obtain the recognition of these two gifts. After all, they did not belong to this era, and it was inevitable that there would be doubts in their hearts. He had to find a way to get rid of the doubt first and let them accept this different world from the bottom of their hearts. Uchiha Tenen led Sasuke and smoothly left the Naka Shrine, arriving at a waterfall not far away. Baruto was lying on a big rock, sleeping soundly. Sasuke immediately coughed and said in a deep voice, Baruto, get up quickly. Baruto opened his eyes slightly and immediately sat up. He said with an open face, Mr. Sasuke, you are finally back. Aha, uh -huh, you have found Lord Tunin. When he saw Naruto in Uchiha Tunin's arms, the smile on Boron's face became brighter. However, considering that he was afraid of affecting history, he hesitated for a moment and did not dare to get too close. With a smile on his face, Uchiha Tunin stretched out a hand and gently said, Hello, Uzumaki Baruto. Baruto extended his hand out of courtesy and shook hands with Uchiha Tunin. He smiled and said, Pleased to meet you. Wait, how do you know my name? Sasuke, who was beside him, immediately explained. We have been under the surveillance of Lord Tunin since we entered the village. Including our conversation. When Baruto heard this, he was shocked and said with a panicked expression, Then what should we do? Uchiha Tunin patted Baruto on the shoulder and turned to walk towards the orphanage. You should have a lot of questions now. I will explain them to you when we get home. Sasuke and Baruto looked at each other and followed closely behind. An hour later, Uchiha Tunin returned to the orphanage. Just as he opened the door, he saw Hataki Do hurriedly come out to greet him. He said respectfully, Sir. Uchiha Tunin waved his hand and said, Clean up the guest room. These two guests will stay with me for a while. You and E will stay with the Hataki family for a while. Yes. Hataki Do responded, then turned around and walked towards the guest room. When Sasuke saw Hataki Do, he narrowed his eyes and stared at Hataki Do. Orphanage. Glasses. This age of hair color. Should be Kabuto. Uchiha Tunin took the opportunity to close the doors and windows in the living room while Hataki Do was packing up the guest room and invited the two to sit down. Then, he gently placed the little Naruto in the cradle bed. 
Seeing that the two of them were staring at Naruto, who was in the cradle bed, he seemed to want to say something but hesitated. Achiha Tunin coughed lightly and said, Let me explain it to you first. Let's relax first. As soon as he finished speaking, the two of them felt their vision suddenly turn dark, as if they had been transferred to another place. Baruto raised his hand and grabbed at the surroundings, exclaiming, What's going on? It's so dark. At the same time, Sasuke's voice rang out beside him. This is an illusion. We should be in Lord Tunin's illusion space now. As soon as he finished speaking, a faint light appeared in the dark ring. The two of them could only see each other, as well as Uchiha Tunin, who was standing with his hands behind his back. At this time, Uchiha Tunin's low voice echoed throughout the entire space. You don't have to worry about affecting the operation of this world at all. In fact, when you came out of this world, you had already changed this world. It has nothing to do with you. Sasuke frowned and said, What do you mean? Achiha Tunin slowly turned around and raised his hands. A light blue ball of light appeared in his hands. The quality and energy of the world are constant. The so-called constant is the constant total value of every moment. When you return to the past in the future, the total value of the past has increased and the change will come. Following Achiha Tunin's narration, the ball of light visibly expanded by several degrees. Hearing this, Sasuke thought about it for a moment and shook his head. Even so, we won't let the people of the past know of our existence before we leave. Even if there is a change, it will not affect the future much. Otherwise, it is very likely that the people who should survive in the future will die, and the people who should die will survive. Hearing this, the ball of light in Uchiha Tunin's hands suddenly extinguished. The eyes under the bandage could not help but narrow. This guy is not easy to fool. But it doesn't matter. It's fine as long as it's reasonable. No matter what, I have to dispel your worries today. Thinking about it, Achiha Tunin shouted. Wrong. No one can change their past. You have also discovered that this place is very different from the history you know. Sasuke frowned and said in a deep voice, Do you know what is going on? With a wave of Achiha Tunin's hand, a golden stream of light appeared in front of the three of them and spread towards the dark distance. Time is like light, it will only keep moving forward. We view this world as a world line. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tunin reached out and pointed at the stream of light in front of him. Another stream of light shot out from the location of the point, parallel to the original stream of light and spreading towards the darkness. When there is a sudden change, the world line will have a branch, which will develop parallel to the original world line. Seeing this, a hint of enlightenment flashed in Sasuke's eyes. No wonder what I saw today is different from the history I know. So it is like this. He immediately said thoughtfully. In other words, this era is only similar to our world. It is not our original world. Seeing that Sasuke was deep in thought, Achiha Tunin nodded with a gratified expression. You can say that. However, it was obvious that Sasuke was not so easily convinced by other people's theories. He immediately asked, What is the variable? Fortunately, Achiha Tunin had already thought of a logical plan on the way here. He said unhurriedly, Just like us, we have to face countless choices at every moment. The choice of all life in the world determines which direction the world line will develop in. Once the world line is formed, it will be fixed. Let's eat first or sleep first as an example. In the original world line, one person ate first and the world line froze, becoming the so-called history. But suddenly, history discovered a change. That person made a new choice, and this led to a branch in the world line. Hearing this, Sasuke frowned and muttered. A new choice. Change history. Suddenly, he saw Sasuke's expression freeze. He stared straight at Uchiha Tunin and said, Could it be that you also came back from the future? Uh. This can be guessed half right. It seems that the theoretical logic of this set of nonsense is quite strict. It's just that it is naturally impossible for him to tell the other party that he's not from this world. 
The system and his background were his most important secrets. Uchiha Tenen smiled and waved his hand. No, no, no. I don't come from the future. However, the only thing that could increase the world line branch was time travel. I guess there are some people who have crossed over to the past and added a new branch to the world line. At this point, Uchiha Tenen raised his head slightly and revealed a mysterious expression. The universe is vast and boundless. There should be countless people who have crossed time and space since the birth of the universe. But their so-called crossing time and space is actually a new parallel world built on a certain point on the original world line. There is nothing to go back to the past, only to create a new present. You should have established a new world line. But I learned from you that history has changed. That can only be said that you were lucky and coincidentally entered this changed world. At this moment, Sasuke felt his mind go blank. The theory about time and space was really too complicated. However, at first glance, it seemed that what the other party said was quite reasonable. However, he saw Sasuke recall the changes that happened in the transmigration and nodded thoughtfully. So that's how it is. This place is indeed different from the time set by Atsutsuki. Maybe there was a problem in the process of transmigration. There was no new world line, but it fell into your world. Good, this guy has been fooled. Although there were many problems with this theory, as long as this guy believed it at the beginning, there was no time to ponder over it. After all, Yurashiki Atsutsuki would arrive soon, and just preparing for battle was enough. Achiha Tunin dispersed the golden light in front of him and spread out his hands. Now, you don't have to worry about anything. Just tell me what you know. Hearing this, Sasuke nodded and quietly glanced at the blank face of Baruto beside him. Thinking that the person in front of him is not yet familiar, he did not easily drag out all the information, but simply explained. In our era, there was a guy named Urashiki who wanted to seize the Kyubi Chakra. However, we stopped him, so he wanted to go back to the past and extract the Kyubi from the body of Naruto. We came here specifically to stop him. At the mention of Naruto, at this time, Baruto finally came back to his senses. He clenched his fists and said angrily, Yes, that evil guy couldn't defeat Father and Mr. Sasuke, so he wanted to use this kind of despicable method. It was really too hateful. Achiha Tunin immediately said with a strange expression, Naruto? Ninetale? Baruto nodded heavily and said with a serious face, Uncle Tunin, don't underestimate that Urashiki guy. He is very strong. Achiha Tunin pretended to be enlightened and said, So it turns out that in your world, Naruto becomes the Jinchuriki. Sasuke immediately understood what he meant and his eyes focused. Could it be? Achiha Tunin nodded with a smile. That's right, this world's nine-tailed Jinchuriki is not Naruto. It's me. As soon as he finished speaking, a gentle golden light suddenly filled the pitch-black space. Achiha Tunin also transformed into a nine-tailed mode in the illusion space. Baruto looked at the golden Achiha Tunin and was stunned. Seeing this, Sasuke breathed a sigh of relief and said, This is also good. The difficulty of our protection has been greatly reduced. Your strength should be very strong, right? Achiha Tenen smiled humbly. You will know then. As soon as he finished speaking, their vision blurred. In the blink of an eye, they found themselves back in the room. The tea table in front of them was already filled with two cups of fragrant tea. At this time, Achiha Tenen was already standing at the door. He turned around and said to the two, are you hungry? What do you want to eat? I'll make it for you. Chapter 357 Rooftop Chat At the dinner table, Baruto looked at the lightning burger that Achiha Tunin made for him with a speechless face. In fact, the shape of the lightning burger is nothing more than an ordinary burger. It's just that Achiha Tunin, as a person of this era, naturally couldn't do it right, so he simply made an improved version of meatloaf for Baruto. Is this the lightning burger you made? Achiha Tunin nodded with a smile and said, I made it according to your description. Try it and see if it suits your taste. 
Okay, well, Baruto hesitated for a moment, opened his mouth and bit down. The next moment, Baruto's eyes were staring like copper bells, and he said vaguely, Woo, so, so delicious. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth were slightly drawn, he stood up and put a few small dishes on the table in front of Sasuke and said, Mr. Sasuke, here is my special dish, try it. Sasuke nodded silently, picked up the chopsticks and took a bite. Sasuke's expression changed slightly, and the frequency of picking up vegetables was getting faster, and he said lightly, Tastes good. If you go to open a store, it should be more popular than Ichiraku. Baruto next to him had already stuffed his mouth with food, and said, It's really hard to imagine that a ninja is so good at cooking. This lightning burger is simply better than anything I've ever eaten. Uchiha Tunin shook his head with a light smile, and said humbly, no matter what you do, as long as you do it with your heart, you will be able to do it well. Many ninjas are not good at cooking. It's because they think cooking is a trivial matter, and they look down on it from the bottom of their hearts, I in fact, as long as you think about it carefully, you will understand that a ninja can even learn such a complicated ninjutsu, let alone something as simple as cooking. Baruto seemed to be choking on eating too fast. He picked up the juice next to him and drank it down in one gulp. He burped and said, Uncle Tunin, do you think cooking is very important? Achiha Tunin picked up the chopsticks and ate slowly and said leisurely, Every bit of life is very important to me. Just like in my eyes, ninjas are no more noble than ordinary people. While eating, Sasuke glanced at Achiha Tunin from time to time. The appearance of Achiha Tunin in Nine Tail mode kept appearing in his mind. This guy is a bit like Naruto. The three of them ate for nearly an hour before they cleaned up all the food on the table. After Achiha Tonin settled the two into the guest room, he came to the underground laboratory in his free time. Of course, Achiha Tonin didn't intend to conduct in live experiments at such a critical moment. It was information from Mask Tonin. Achiha Tonin came to sit on the sofa in the laboratory and gently spread his right hand. A small space vortex appeared directly above the palm of his hand, and a scroll fell into the hand from the vortex. Achiha Tunin unfolded the scroll, his eyes under the bandage narrowed slightly, and murmured. There are actually ancient records about the ninja world in the old side of Uzumaki. He see what is written on the scroll. The planet where the ninja world is located seems to be an extremely special existence in the universe. In ancient times, an extraordinary force unique to this planet was born on its own, the force of nature. Human beings began to use this kind of power with their wisdom, and the professions of Anmyoji and Samurai came into being. Anmyoji are few in number, but powerful. Good at sealing technique and nurturing Shikigami. The so-called Shikigami are psychic beasts living on the other side of the ninja world and the ancestors of the Uzumaki clan were born of the descendants of Anmyoji and Azura. The sealing technique was then reproduced in the ninja world by this ancestor using chakra. This is also the reason why the sealing technique does not enter the Yin and Yang five dungeons. In addition, the stone wall in the former site of the Uzumaki clan only records the creation date of the dead demon consuming seal. According to the creation time of the seal, it can be presumed that it was created by Azura or the ancestor of the Uzumaki clan. Seeing this, Achiha Tonin narrowed his eyes under the bandage. Are the power of nature and the sealing technique native products of the ninja world? If this is the case, it is estimated that it should be useful to deal with the Atsutsuki clan. No wonder Atsutsuki's abilities in the original book are all about absorbing chakra or ninjutsu at every turn, but he can't absorb senjutsu and sealing techniques. After thinking about it, a space vortex appeared in Uchiha Tunin's palm, and he put the scroll in. Kamui is really easy to use, just like a portable space. Suddenly, a warning came from the sealing barrier in the underground laboratory. Uchiha Tunin's expression froze, and he suddenly looked up. The sealing barrier of the underground laboratory has been continuously improved by Achiha Tunin. It can not only isolate breath and sound, but also block the prying eyes of various sensory ninjutsu and eye techniques. And once someone peeps here, 
they will immediately trigger the barrier to call warnings and let Uchiha Tunin know. However, in an instant, the sense of prying eyes faded away and the barrier warning also disappeared. Uchiha Tunin quietly stared at the ceiling. After a few breaths, he slowly lowered his head, got up and walked towards the stairs. The full moon on the 15th is like a snowball, and laid in the dark blue night sky, it looks extraordinarily bright and refreshing. The stars in the sky seem to be afraid of the cold and the wind, only a few are embedded in the sky to accompany the bright moon. People in this world seem to have a lot of nerves. The Nine Tail Rebellion happened just a few days ago, but now the whole Kanoha feels as if nothing happened. At this time, in sunset at orphanage, Sasuke was wearing a black cloak and stood motionless on the edge of the building's roof, quietly looking at the moon in the sky. Suddenly, Achiha Tunin greeted behind Sasuke. Mr. Sasuke, do you feel uncomfortable sleeping here? Sasuke looked sideways and saw Achiha Tonin wearing a white nightgown, stepping on clogs and coming to Sasuke. A flash of apology appears in Sasuke's eyes, he said. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't see anything. Achiha Tunin smiled gently, shook his head, and said, It doesn't matter, Mr. Sasuke is not an ordinary person, even if Umbu's secrets are known to you, it doesn't matter. If my guess is correct, Mr. Sasuke should have often carried out Kanoha's secret missions in your era. In a word, Achiha Tunin cryptically explained why there is a seal under the orphanage. This is also to prevent Sasuke from becoming suspicious of him. Although it is very difficult for Sasuke to gain approval, it's all about effort, you have to work hard. After all, the temptation of the eternal Menjiku and Rinnegan is too great. Sasuke lowered his head and said calmly, Why do you say that? Achiha Tunin put his hand on the fence of the roof and said leisurely, Don't forget that I am the leader of Umbu. People who often perform confidential tasks have a very different temperament from ordinary people. And I can feel that your strength is very strong. With such strength, it is natural that those who can do more work. Sasuke nodded, admitting that he often performs classified missions. It's just that Sasuke didn't seem to want to talk more about this topic, so he immediately changed the subject and said, At the Naka Shrine tonight, you said that you left the handle to fall into the hands of the third Hokage, and that's why you missed the position of Hokage that should belong to you. But no matter whether I heard it from other people or my first impression of you, I don't think you seem like someone who did bad things. As soon as the words fell, Achiha Tunin's expression froze slightly. Sasuke's eyes under his long bangs were fixed on Achiha Tunin. After a long time, Achiha Tunin sighed and said in a deep voice, you are not from this world, I can tell you. The so-called handle is the identity of the masked man who initiated the Nine Tails Rebellion. Sasuke thought of what he overheard at Naka Shrine today, thinking that Uchiha Tunin really thought the masked man was Uchiha Madara. Immediately, he pondered for a while and said softly, In our era, this secret has already been revealed. Since you said it won't affect our future, I can tell you the truth. Achiha Tunin was slightly taken aback when he heard the words and immediately said with a wry smile, Has the truth come to light? It seems that he was still so reckless in doing things and was discovered by others. I thought I could keep this secret for him. Mr. Sasuke, do you know him? He was originally a very kind person and our relationship is very good. It's just that the cruelty of the war drove him crazy. In addition, he is still my clan so I want to leave a way for him to survive. Sasuke frowned when he heard this and said with a puzzled expression, So you know the truth. So you are willing to give up the position of Hokage for the sake of your partner. Achiha Tunin was silent for a while, then nodded lightly and said with a downcast face, I'm a bit too kind. Sasuke stared at Achiha Tunin's side face and said lightly, A little bit. You and Naruto are really similar sometimes. After finishing speaking, Sasuke raised his head, looked at the moon in the sky, and said in a deep voice. However, regarding the world line you mentioned today, I found a problem. The history of this world is mostly the same as my era. It seems that all the differences are related to you. 
Are you really not from the future? Of course, if you don't want to say it, I won't force you. This guy. Where did he get so many questions? If you have time to spend more time with your Itachi, wouldn't it be better to focus on how to resist Atsutsuki Urashiki? Uchiha Tunin's eyes under the bandage flashed a trace of impatience, but on the surface he chuckled, facing Sasuke and said, Do you think my appearance is deceiving? Sasuke glanced at Uchiha Tunin, pondered for a moment, then slowly shook his head and said, No. Hearing this, Uchiha Tunin had a bright smile on his face and stretched out his hand to pat Sasuke on the shoulder. Sasuke instinctively wanted to hide, but inexplicably held back at the critical moment. Uchiha Tunin said with a happy face, Since you trust me so much, let me tell you a little secret about me. Actually, I used to be a miserable person. Sasuke nodded silently and thought to himself. He looks more and more like Naruto. However, at this time, Uchiha Tonin's voice became deeper and deeper, and his mood seemed to be depressed. However, my father expects a lot from me. The so-called greater the expectation, the greater the disappointment. At that time, I was like a puddle of mud, the kind that couldn't support the wall. Every time my father inspected my achievements, he was so angry that he beat me with fists and kicks. I still remember that it was noon near the end of the term. I fearfully handed over the report card to my father for review. He was very angry after reading it and drank a little wine. Sasuke glanced at Uchiha Tunin and said indifferently, You were beaten? The smile on Uchiha Tonin's face had completely disappeared at this time, and he said with a look of reminiscence, I don't know how long I was beaten. I only know that when I got to the back, my body could no longer feel the pain. Slowly, slowly, my eyes were pitch black. At that moment, I really felt that I had died. It's just that suddenly, a beam of light lit up in the darkness. I will never forget that warm feeling in my life. After I woke up, my body miraculously recovered. And since then, my brain seems to have opened up, and I can learn everything very quickly. Sasuke focused his eyes when he heard these words, and said in a firm tone, Someone saved you, and that person is likely to come from the future. It's just that that person didn't expect that his small action would have such a big impact. You, who were supposed to die, were reborn because of this. And you have made such a great achievement. Achiha Tinan finally closed the loophole and quickly brought the rational topic to the emotional topic. Maybe. I remember that time when the war came to an end. My parents voluntarily went to the battlefield in order to gain military exploits. But after only half a year, they died on the battlefield. Sasuke nodded and said softly, Do you hate them? Achiha Tunin took a deep breath, shook his head and said, Before I hated. But when I heard the news of their death, I only hated why I didn't work hard and why I hated them. It was also because of their death that I awakened my third Tomo Sharingan successfully changed from an ordinary ninja school student to a well-known genius in Kanoha. Hearing this, Sasuke's expression was slightly moved. After all, as someone who is Sharingan, he understands the pain that three Tomo Sharingan represents best. It can be seen how much the man beside him loved his parents when he was a child. And it's still under the condition of frequent domestic violence. It's really hard to imagine if his parents are very kind to him. Would he have turned on the kaleidoscope directly at such a young age? Looking back at myself. Thinking of this, Sasuke couldn't help but sighed and said, Three Tomo. It seems that you are really a kind person. Even if they treat you like that, you still regard them as the most important people in your life. A far-fetched smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face, facing Kanoha village in front of him, he murmured. Since then, I have treated the people in the village as my family. My father left before he could see my growth and approve of me. So I am eager to gain the approval of the villagers and make up for the regrets I have had. Sasuke nodded and said softly, If you become Hokage, everyone in the village will recognize you. Uchiha Tunin repeatedly shook his head and said, But I don't want to lose anyone. Even if he killed Minato-sensei and Kushina-senpai. 
but I still couldn't bear to kill him. Actually, at that time, I was fully capable of this, but I couldn't bear it. I want to give him a chance to mend his ways. I know this will make many villagers feel betrayed. So I want to use the rest of my life to compensate them. Sasuke looked at Uchiha Tunin's appearance, and a trace of helplessness flashed in his eyes and said, Your reason is the same as mine. But your actions and thoughts are similar to someone else I know. Speaking of which, sometimes people like you are really difficult for people to understand, but people have to convince you. Uchiha Tunin was slightly taken aback when he heard the words and immediately turned to Sasuke and said, Is the person you're talking about the grown-up Naruto? Naruto, did he have a happy childhood? Sasuke was silent for a moment, then said in a deep voice, being disgusted and cast aside by the villagers and being stared at all the time. Uchiha Tonin's expression seemed to contain deep intolerance and pity. He clenched his fists and said in a deep voice, I can't let him go my old way. The reason why adults work so hard is to let the younger generation live happily. It seems that I have to cheer up to deal with what you call the Atsutsuki Urashiki. If I die, Naruto will become an orphan again. Seeing this, Sasuke couldn't help but outline a long-lost smile on his face. He reached out and patted Uchiha Tunin on the shoulder and said, I'm glad that Naruto has a father like you. I believe you will take good care of Naruto. Uchiha Tunin nodded heavily. The topic is over here. If we continue to chat, it's just meaningless. The two chatted back and forth. In fact, the rhythm of the topic was mostly under the control of Uchiha Tunin. Either they were talking about Naruto, or Sasuke saw Naruto's shadow in Uchiha Tunin. With Naruto as the center of everything, the distance between the two can be shortened. The two of them just stood quietly on the edge of the roof, blowing the wind. After a long time, Uchiha Tonin said softly, Go if you want. Even if you don't want to affect their lives, it's better to have a look from afar. Sasuke was silent for a while, then nodded. In the next moment, Sasuke's figure disappeared. After Sasuke left, Uchiha Tonin's face turned cold instantly. The eyes under the bandage narrowed slightly, looking towards the direction of the Uchiha clan, and murmured, it seems that the heat is still much worse. I don't know if the bitter plan will be useful. Chapter 358 Handling Official Business Morning of the next day The golden sunlight shone through the yellow gauze curtain to the room. Uchiha Tunin and Baruto at the dinner table seemed to be covered with a layer of golden mist. Baruto drank up the porridge in the bowl, leaned back in the chair with a satisfied face, and touched his stomach. I'm so full. Even breakfast is so delicious. Unfortunately, I don't know where Mr. Sasuke went. He definitely missed out on this. Uchiha Tunin put down his chopsticks and wiped the corner of his mouth with a tissue. Then he got up and went to the cabinet. He opened the drawer, took out a thick stack of bills and put them on the table. Take this money and spend it. You don't have to save it for me. I have to go to work now. Baruto looked at the money on the table, and a shy expression appeared on his face. He reached out to pick up the money and put it in his bag. Uchiha Tunin smiled and made a seal with his hand, and a shadow clone began to pour milk for Naruto. Seeing this, Baruto used the topic to eliminate the awkwardness in his heart and said with a puzzled face, Does Uncle Tunin usually use shadow clones? Uchiha Tunin nodded and said, I usually use his shadow clone to take care of Naruto. I don't feel at ease letting someone else taking care of him. Baruto wanted to go out with Uchiha Tunin to play, so he immediately asked, When are you going to get off work? Uchiha Tunin pondered for a moment and said slowly, Two days ago was a special situation, so I was free during the day. Usually, I would be busy from early to late, and even often stay up late to work overtime. When Baruto heard this, he immediately thought of Naruto and said with a disappointed face, Are you as busy as Dad? At this time, Uchiha Tunin had already got up and walked to the side of Baruto. He reached out and gently rubbed Baruto's hair and said gently, Do you want to take a look at my working environment and see the secrets of Konoha? 
The eyes of the Baruto suddenly lit up, and he said in surprise, Can I? Achiha Tenen showed a gentle smile on his face, and reached out his hand to Baruto and said, If I say there is no problem, then there is no problem. Baruto looked at Achiha Tenen's hand, hesitated for a moment, and put his hand on it. The relationship between the two seemed to be much closer because of the physical contact. Half an hour later, Baruto followed Achiha Tunin all the way to the wide field of the Umbu base. They saw that there were many light pillars shining with a dim yellow light. The square was surrounded by layers of densely packed rooms from top to bottom. Because Achiha Tunin brought Baruto in through the main entrance of the mountain, Baruto knew that this was the inside of the mountain. And those rooms were also built on the stone walls in the belly of the mountain. Baruto looked up and sighed with a shocked face. Oh my god! Is this digging the entire mountain? This is too exaggerated. Achiha Tunin smiled and patted Baruto on the shoulder. Usually, I don't enter from here. Since it is your first time here, I will let you see the complete umbu. After that, he led Baruto up the stairs. On the way, Baruto looked left and right, and his eyes were full of novelty. After a long time, Baruto saw that there was no member of Umbu for a long time and immediately asked with a puzzled face. This place is big, but it's too cold. Why is there no one here? Achiha Tunin, who was walking in front, explained. Umbu has a special dormitory, entertainment room, canteen, and a variety of training rooms. Here, these are the rooms. They usually stay in their rooms, so they rarely see people but don't barge into these rooms. Some of the rooms are purely trap rooms, used to guard against spies. When Baruto heard this, he had an expression of seeing the world and nodded repeatedly. This is Kanoha during the war. It looks very strong. Unknowingly, the two of them had crossed the highest stone bridge and entered Achiha Tunin's office. Achiha Tunin's office was clean and tidy, and there were several rows of bookshelves made of mahogany in the room. The bookshelves were filled with books and scrolls. At a glance, it was obvious that the owner of this room was very knowledgeable. The whole room did not have the dark feeling of Umbu, but it was spacious and bright. It's so spacious. These things look very valuable at first glance. Baruto sighed and reached out to caress the decoration in the room. Achiha Tunin brewed a pot of tea and placed the full cup on the table. He said gently, Sit down. I usually only have tea here. I don't have juice. Just give it a try. After saying that, Achiha Tunin came to his desk and sat down. He reached out and pressed a button on the table. In the next moment, a bookshelf against the wall in the room moved slightly to the side, revealing a dark passage. An umbu wearing a cat mask walked out of the passage with a plate in both hands. Baruto looked closely and saw that there were scrolls neatly placed on the plate. The umbu did not even look at Baruto and went straight to Achiha Tunin's table, respectfully placing the plate on the table. Then, he took two steps back, knelt on one knee, and said in a deep voice, Sir, this is the information that has accumulated over the past three days. Please approve it. Achiha Tunin did not say a word, he took the scroll from the plate and opened it. He waved his left hand casually, signaling the umbu to retreat. The umbu stood up and bowed deeply to Achiha Tunin with his hands on his knees. Then he turned and walked into the passage. The bookshelf returned to its original position and blocked the passage. For some reason, Baruto seemed to become a lot more reserved. He sat down on the sofa, holding a cup of tea and watching Achiha Tunin handle the documents. However, Achiha Tunin knew that this was the normal reaction of an ordinary person when they suddenly saw a big shot. Although Baruto's father is Naruto who is Hokage. However, Baruto did not feel the majesty of Naruto, and Naruto's personality seemed to be very difficult to have this kind of style. After all, the times were different, and the current ninja world was in a war period, so naturally they had to pay attention to seniority. While drinking the tea, Baruto curiously looked at Achiha Tunin who was dealing with business, not wanting to be a bother. He was afraid that he would make a noise and affect Achiha Tunin's work. 
Time passed bit by bit. The tea in Baruto's teacup had already been drunk, but he didn't dare to pour water. Even if the teapot was on the table in front of him. Looking at Uchiha Tunin who was working seriously, Baruto couldn't help but think about it. Uncle Tunin is so cool. Is this leader of the Umbu? He is much cooler than the Hokage. Are those scrolls confidential documents of the Umbu? I really want to take a look. I can brag about it to Jaunin's when I go back. At this time, Uchiha Tunin's gentle voice suddenly sounded. It's fine if you are curious. You are not from this era anyway. Even if you know these ordinary secrets, it doesn't matter. Baruto was slightly stunned, and then a slightly shy smile appeared on his face. He scratched his head, got up, and came to the side of Uchiha Tunin and said, How nice is that? Uchiha Tunin did not even raise his head as he pointed at the chair at the side. Baruto immediately understood and moved the chair to sit next to Uchiha Tunin, staring at the scroll in front of Uchiha Tunin. Several of them had information about the other villages. Although there were no other secrets in the information on the top, it was still interesting to Baruto. However, when the next piece of information was unfolded, a hint of doubt flashed in the eyes of Baruto. What was recorded in the information was not words, but some kind of sealing technique. Could it be that he encountered some big secret? What would be sealed inside? Baruto was thinking wildly there, yet this time Uchiha Tunin had already started to form a seal and started to lift the seal. He saw Uchiha Tunin reach out to press the scroll, and a white smoke rose. In the next moment, the white smoke quickly dispersed, and the Baruto beside him suddenly cried out. I, ball. What was released was a rectangular plate. There were dozens of blood-stained eyeballs lying quietly on the plate. Uchiha Tunin took out a document from the drawer with a calm face, ticked a certain taskbar, and said leisurely, This is the assassination information that was just sent back. Because this Umbu Ninja has taken on several tasks. Combined, these tasks are estimated to take several years. It was not convenient to send back the body. Therefore, he simply used the method of cutting ears, digging eyes, chopping fingers, and so on to send them back to confirm through the scroll. After confirming it, Uchiha Tunin sealed these eyes into the scroll again. He closed the scroll and gently put it back to its original position. He turned his head to face the shocked face of the Baruto and said, You have to understand that ninjas exist to kill. These things cannot be avoided. Baruto took a deep breath and suppressed the nausea. He said in a low voice, What did the person who died do? Uchiha Tunin rubbed his temples and thought for a while. He is a merchant from the fire country. During the war, he secretly transported supplies and sold them to the cloud ninjas stationed at the border of the Kingdom of Frost. Baruto nodded silently. He did not feel that the Umbu had killed the wrong person. After all, this was the crime of betraying own country by colluding with the enemy. Suddenly, a puzzled expression appeared on the face of the Baruto. But, why are there so many eyes here? Uchiha Tunin said calmly. Cut the weeds and dig up the roots. His whole family was killed, along with the wandering ninjas he hired. The eyes of Baruto suddenly widened, and he said with disbelief, why do you do this? It is too cruel. Aren't you afraid of killing the innocent? When Uchiha Tunin heard this, a sad expression appeared on his face. He let out a long sigh and said, The entire ninja realm is like this. If you don't treat others like this, others will do the same to you. What the Umbu needs to do is to make the first move before the disaster comes to their own people. When Baruto heard this, he lowered his head and clenched his fists. It was unknown what he was thinking. Uchiha Tunin ignored him and continued to work. After a long time, the last scroll was finished. Baruto raised his head and said carefully, Uncle Tunin, are you done with your work? Hearing this, Uchiha Tunin chuckled and shook his head. It was just appetizers. After saying that, he saw Uchiha Tunin reach out to press the other three buttons on the table. In the next moment, the three bookshelves in the room began to move, revealing the passage behind them. 
Not long after, they heard footsteps coming from the passage. Three ninjas in special department uniforms walked out of the passage with thick documents in their hands and placed them on Uchi Hatunin's desk. Then, they took a few steps back and knelt on one knee. Mr. Tunin, this is the trade list of the logistics department and the list of distribution. Mr. Tunin, this is the research report of the medical department. Mr. Tunin, this is the latest interrogation information. Please take a look. Uchiha Tunin glanced at these documents and waved his hand. He said slowly, there is so much. You have worked hard these past few days. The three ninjas stood up and bowed deeply to Uchiha Tunin, then retreated one after another. At this time, Baruto were already stunned by the scene in front of them. He was stunned and said, So much. Uncle, can you finish reading it all in a day? The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly, and he said with a relaxed face, As long as you calm down and look at it carefully, it actually won't take a day. It just so happens that you can help me. I think that you can help me seal the documents that can be approved and separate them into different categories. After saying that, Achiha Tunin handed the seal to Baruto. Baruto looked at the seal in front of him and his eyes flashed with excitement. He said solemnly, No problem. Was this seal of the leader of the Umbu? It was just a stamp, it was simply a small matter. However, the next moment, Baruto saw Achiha Tunin's speed. He saw that Achiha Tunin's hand speed was very fast. He pulled over a document and quickly swept it over and immediately threw it to Baruto. Of course, some documents could not be approved if there was a problem. Achiha Tunin would put the document on the other side. The speed at which Baruto stamped the seal was not even able to keep up with Achiha Tunin. Time slowly passed. Baruto took advantage of the gap between the seal and wiped the sweat on his forehead. He glanced at the focused Achiha Tunin beside him. Uncle was so serious when he worked. Dad seems to be like this too. I wonder if Uncle will go home all day long because of work. You can't be distracted during work time. Achiha Tunin's gentle voice suddenly sounded. Baruto came back to his senses and found that there was already a thick stack of documents in front of him. He immediately said apologetically, Oh, I'm sorry. At noon, with the cooperation of the two, today's work was finally completed. Baruto collapsed on the chair and gasped. I'm so tired. The leader of Umbu has so much work. Does he have to be this busy? Achiha Tunin smiled with a relaxed face and pointed to the clock hanging on the wall. You see, it's only noon now, and we have finished today's work. Those things look like a lot, but in fact, as long as you calm down and carefully complete them one by one, the difficulty is actually not as great as you think. It was the same when facing difficulties. There was nothing difficult in the world, but only people with a strong heart. When Baruto heard this, he was stunned and muttered. There is nothing difficult in the world, only people with strong intentions. Uncle, your words are so smart. Unlike my father, who was still so dumb even after becoming the Hokage. He was busy with work every day and did not go home all day. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, the expression on his face instantly became strange. He said slowly, Wouldn't it be a little rude of you to say my son is bad in front of me like that? Chapter 359, Urashiki Arrived Baruto was stunned for a moment and said with a troubled expression, Ah, right. Should I call you Grandpa? Achiha Tunin smiled and reached out to caress the blog's hair, his face full of love. Baruto felt a little awkward and smiled embarrassedly. That, you. Why aren't you talking? Achiha Tunin whispered softly. Actually, ever since I adopted Naruto, I have always regarded Naruto as my own son. Sometimes I think about what Naruto will be like in the future. Until I saw you yesterday. As the leader of the Umbu, I should have arrested both of you. I don't know why, but your eyes make me feel very close. You are Naruto's son. You should be very similar to Naruto, right? Baruto pouted and muttered. I don't look like him. 
Ever since he became a Hokage, he rarely cared about his family. Every day, he would only return with a shadow clone. I don't want to be like him when I grow up. Hearing this, Achiha Tunin nodded and showed a kind smile on his face. I see. Then I have to teach him well in the future. Let him know how to be a qualified father. However, you are indeed Naruto's child after all. In terms of seniority, you are really my grandson. As an elder, I should at least give you a greeting gift. Baruto's eyes immediately lit up, and he said expectantly, What greeting gift? The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He raised his right hand and a light blue raisin quickly condensed in his hand. Seeing this, the anticipation on Baruto's face instantly disappeared. He tilted his head and said, So it's a raisin gan. Uchiha Tunin nodded and said gently, Do you want to learn it? This is an A-grade non-seal ninjutsu that I researched together with the fourth Hokage. When Uchiha Tunin finished speaking, Baruto also raised his right hand and condensed a raisin in his hand. He said proudly, How is it? I've already learned this move. A look of surprise appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face as he said, I forgot that I am the only one who knows this technique in this era. However, it is not a secret in your era. However, it seems that your talent is very strong. You have already learned this technique at such a young age. You must know that the level of the Raisin is judged by the difficulty of training. He, Achiha Tunin's flattery immediately made Baruto a little proud about himself, he kept scratching his head and giggling. Achiha Tunin pondered for a moment, then he said slowly, Since you already know Raisin then you are not in a hurry to learn other ninjutsu. If you feel that you are lacking in any aspect, perhaps I can help you. After saying that, Baruto thought for a moment, and his expression gradually became grim. He said in a low voice, I have always felt that my chakra is too little. There is a monster in my body. Once my chakra is exhausted, it will wake up. A monster? A look of concern appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face. He grabbed the wrist of Baruto and began to take his pulse. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin was so concerned about his own affairs, the eyes of Baruto became softer and softer, and he said softly, It can't be detected. It is a wedge of the Atsutsuki clan. It will slowly transform my body. When the time comes, it will seize my body and resurrect. Uchiha Tunin did not say a word. He quietly checked the pulse of Baruto, and his eyebrows were wrinkled. Mama Shiki. This thing really did not have any chakra fluctuations. I don't know if Baruto will give me Mama Shiki after they recognize me. But there is a high probability that there will be this kind of bug, just like the Jinchuriki. Unfortunately, it is really a pity. How can the indigenous people in the ninja world compare with the delicious Atsutsuki? After thinking about it, Achiha Tunin sighed and slowly shook his head. Although Baruto had said it casually, he still held a glimmer of hope in his heart. Seeing Achiha Tunin shake his head and sigh, his mood could not help but become a lot heavier. Achiha Tunin let go of Baruto's hand, he got up and went to a cabinet and opened it. He took out a green and shiny potion and handed it to Baruto. Baruto took the potion and looked at it curiously. This is... Achiha Tunin rubbed Baruto's head tenderly and said, This is a chakra potion. It can increase one's chakra capacity, and there are no side effects. However, it is best to drink the potion every day, otherwise the body will not be able to adapt. Come, drink a potion first and feel it. When Baruto heard this, his eyes lit up. He pulled out the cork and drank it. After a few breaths, the expression of Baruto suddenly froze, and he hurriedly closed his eyes to carefully feel it. At this moment, Baruto felt a warm current rising from his abdomen, constantly washing the meridians in his body. After ten minutes, Baruto took a long breath with a comfortable face, opened his eyes, looked at his own hands, and said, Is the effect so fast? I felt that the chakra in my body suddenly increased by a lot. This is too amazing, there is no need to train. 
Achiha Tenen smiled kindly, turned around, and walked towards the cabinet. I still have a box here. I will give it all to you. When Baruto heard that there was more, he was immediately delighted. Thinking that this kind of thing did not seem to exist in the future, it must be a very rare thing. He immediately said with a grateful face, This kind of thing must be very precious. Why don't you keep it for yourself to use? At this time, Achiha Tunin, who had his back to the blog, opened the drawer and took out a scroll. The corner of his mouth was outlined for a moment without any trace. The chakra potion that was refined with human life and precious medicinal herbs was of course precious. This potion was the life of countless people. In any case, you're using it for me, so of course I can give it up. Achiha Tenen held the scroll and walked up to Baruto, gently holding his hand, and stuffed the scroll into his hand, saying earnestly, Everything is for people to use, so that it can be used to show its value. Anyway, I can't use it. With our relationship, it is normal to pass it to you. Don't feel like you owe me anything. It is only right for the elders to provide the younger generation with generous conditions for growth. For some reason, Baruto felt that this scroll was strangely heavy, as if it carried heavy expectations. His eyes couldn't help but moisten a little. Staring at Achiha Tunin, who was two heads taller than him, he pursed his lips and said, Thank you, Grandpa. The moment he called out Grandpa, both of them were stunned for a moment. In the next moment, both of them laughed together. Baruto smiled sheepishly as he looked at Achiha Tunin. He thought to himself, Is this grandfather? I really envy the me of this world to have such a good grandfather. Presumably, with grandfather's care, father will not become like that. Unfortunately, my world does not have you. However, since I have come to this era, let me, your grandson, make you happy. Thinking of this, Baruto seemed to relax a lot and jumped into Achiha Tunin's arms. Achiha Tunin smiled and reached out to caress the back of Baruto, but there was no emotion in his eyes under the bandage. He immediately changed his words after getting the benefits. Sure enough, benefits are the best way to get closer to each other. No, this little brat has already called me grandpa, why hasn't he agreed with me yet? Is it because the time we spent together is too short? That's right, after all, we only met for a day. It seems that you still have to work hard for another day or two. When you get the approval, you can stay in this era in peace. At that time, I will let you reunite with your real grandfather. Perhaps it was because Achiha Tunin's embrace was too warm, Baruto were reluctant to leave. Hmm? Suddenly, Achiha Tunin was startled. He suddenly turned his head to look at the room. The eyes under the bandage suddenly changed into three magnetama shaped and slowly rotated. At the same time, a person wearing white clothes, carrying a red fish basket, and holding a red fishing rod appeared in the scarlet three tomo sharingan. The reaction of Achiha Tunin woke up Baruto who were immersed in the recognition of the grandfather and grandson. He immediately raised his head to look at Achiha Tunin's chin and said with a puzzled face, What's wrong, Grandpa? Achiha Tunin smiled with a relaxed face and gently pushed Baruto away. He pressed his hands on Baruto's shoulders and said earnestly, It's nothing. I have something to deal with at work. It's just a very confidential matter. You can stay here and familiarize yourself with the new growth of Chakra. I will be back soon. Before I come back, you can't run around. Boren nodded and said, Yes. At this time, above the forest outside the Kanoha village, a figure was floating. That person had pale skin and long blue and white hair. He had a high ponytail. He had no eyebrows, two round dots on his forehead, and a horn on his forehead. The person who came was Atsutsuki Urashiki that had been transported over through the space-time artifact plow. His eyes blinked several times. Blue veins bulged out of the corners of his eyes, and the pale blue Rinnegan suddenly turned into a Byakugan, looking into the distance. In front should be the old Kanoha. Fox's chakra, here I come. Naruto, what can you do to resist me at this time? There were also those two fellows who were in the way. Speaking of which, 
that little brat's body transformation should have already exceeded 50%. It seemed like I had to snatch the karma back. It would be terrible if that little brat activated the karma and took the fox away. With that, Urashiki activated Yamatsu Hirasaka, and a spatial portal appeared in front of him. Just as he stepped into the portal, a gentle and magnetic voice came from behind him. Where are you going? Hmm? Urashiki paused and slowly turned his head to look. He saw a man wearing a black trench coat and white bandages standing on the tip of a tree not far away. The man was holding a white pigeon and gently caressing it. The white pigeon seemed to enjoy it and rubbed its head against the man's chest. Seeing this, Urashiki's eyes narrowed. He retracted his foot and turned around to look at Uchiha Tunin carefully. When did this guy appear? When I rolled my eyes just now, I was sure that there was no one around. Could this also be a guy who was proficient in time and space ninjutsu? Suddenly, Urashiki keenly noticed the jutsu printed on the white pigeon's abdomen. He immediately became interested and said slowly, You rushed over with a psychic spell just now, right? Uchiha Tunin naturally would not explain to Urashiki what flying thunder god was. He shook his head gently and said, You really came at a bad time. It would be better if you came a few days later. I'm not ready yet. Seeing Uchiha Tunin, Atsutsuki Urashiki looked around, his right hand tightened slightly, and the red fishing rod in his hand suddenly glowed bright red. You seem to know me. It was those two guys who told you about me, right? You are also a Kanoha ninja? Uchiha Tunin smiled and pointed at the head of the white pigeon in his arms. The white pigeon spread its wings and flew away. A cold breeze blew past, blowing Uchiha Tunin's coat into the air. Uchiha Tunin stood on the tip of the tree with one foot and his hands behind his back. He said with a polite face, Can you please give me some face and go shopping in the ninja world for a few days before coming back? Just treat it as a vacation. I will pay for all the expenses. After saying that, Achiha Tunin stretched out his hand and snapped his fingers. A space vortex appeared above the head of Urashiki, and a bundle of banknotes fell from the vortex. However, Urashiki did not even look at the banknotes that fell from the sky. He spread his hands and said, Sorry, I am not interested in your suggestion at all. Although you seem to be very interesting, I really have something to do. You have to know that the time of Atsutsuki Urashiki is very precious, so I can't give you face. After saying that, a space portal appeared behind Urashiki, and after looking at Uchiha Tunin meaningfully, he turned around and was about to leave. But in the next moment, Urashiki suddenly felt a familiar chakra, and his expression was startled. He suddenly turned his head and shouted, Fox! At this time, Uchiha Tunin had already activated nine-tailed mode, and his entire body was filled with dense golden chakra. He gently smiled and said, Sir, are you changing your mind? A look of surprise appeared on Urashiki's face. He raised the red fishing rod in the light and said, It turns out that the fox of this era is in your body. It seems that I really have to consider your suggestion. As soon as he finished speaking, he waved his right hand, and a red line instantly pierced through Uchiha Tunin's abdomen and hit the ground. Bang! Thick dust filled the air. Urashiki retracted the fishing line, turned to look at the other side, and muttered with a frown. What a strange time, space ninjutsu. It has no warning at all, just like that annoying fellow. He didn't know when, but Uchiha Tunin had already appeared on the tip of a big tree in another direction. He had his hands behind his back, and his body moved up and down along with the swaying tip of the tree, but there was no expression on his face at all. The eyes of Urashiki turned cold, and his eyes turned into Rinnegan. He held the fishing rod and waved it at Uchiha Tunin again, shouting, Aim no Subaru Bashi no Makoto. All of a sudden, countless rays of red light shot out in all directions. Urashiki had activated the Rinnegan's eye technique, time reversal. It could allow one to return to the point of time a few seconds ago from the current point of time and experience dozens of enemy moves, so that they could clearly see the opponent's moves and choose the safest way to deal with it. 
However, even if Urashiki could predict the location of Uchiha Tunin's appearance, Flying Thunder God was too fast. Although he knew about Urashiki, with Uchiha Tunin's current strength, he could clearly see his attack trajectory. Since Urashiki was the weaker ones among the Atsutsuki, so he could naturally dodge it easily. After a long time, the nearby forest was already riddled with holes, but Uchiha Tunin still appeared not far away without any damage. Urashiki also recognized the reality, no longer using the red light fishing rod to attack, and secretly analyzed the countermeasures in his heart. At this moment, Uchiha Tunin said, I advise you to go to the ninja realm and ask around before coming back. Otherwise, you won't be able to touch me at all. I have to remind you that this technique is called Flying Thunder God. It is very famous. When Urashiki heard this, his expression turned cold and he said slowly, I'm really unhappy that I've been underestimated by humans. Uchiha Tenen shook his head and said, I'm not looking down on you. It's just that I know your information and you don't know my ability at all. No matter what you do, it is only safe to make a decision before acting. I believe you should be able to understand this principle, Sir Urashiki. The reason why Uchiha Tunin discussed this with him was naturally because his connection with the other Atsutsuki. Urashiki was not so reckless. He was a refined and rational alien. This kind of person, as long as you have a good reason with him, he will always listen to your advice. Sure enough, after listening to Uchiha Tunin's advice, Urashiki actually touched his chin and began to ponder. Uchiha Tunin smiled and immediately added, don't worry, I am Kanoha's Hokage consultant and the leader of the Umbu. I have a great responsibility. No matter what kind of danger happens, I won't run away. Of course, there should be no need to run. Urashiki raised his eyelids and replied, Then I'll destroy Kanoha first. Uchiha Tunin had never been threatened in his life. Uchiha Tunin spread out his hands slightly and said, Mr. Sasuke and Baruto are in the village. I didn't tell them when I came out. I personally suggest that you don't disturb them. And once you destroy Kanoha, then I just have nothing to worry about. The world is big, the four seas are home. Jeez. I really can't do anything about you. Urashiki took a deep breath. A fake smile appeared on his face as he nodded repeatedly. You are really much more interesting than that guy, Uzumaki Naruto. You are as cunning as a fox. I will come back soon. I will leave the fox with you for the time being. With that, he used Yamatsu Hirasaka to leave. Chapter 360, Laying a Secret Hand After Urashiki left, Achiha Tenen landed on the ground and waited quietly. Today's matter was quite smooth. Since both Baruto and Sasuke has not approved him yet, Achiha Tenen did not want this battle to come too quickly the climax should come at the last moment. Even if they wanted to fight, the three of them would have to face Urashiki together and cooperate with each other in an intense and difficult battle so that they could get closer to each other. It would be best to use his affectionate mouth when he was in danger and use the power of love to defeat powerful enemies. In this way, the satisfaction after the event might really make Sasuke acknowledge him. After a while, several Umbu ninjas wearing cat masks rushed over. One by one, they knelt down on one knee in front of Uchiha Tunin and said in a low voice, Greetings, my lord. Uchiha Tunin nodded slightly and said slowly, Not bad, just a little slower than I thought. The few members of the Umbu immediately lowered their heads and said in a low voice, Please forgive us, my lord. Uchiha Tunin naturally wouldn't bother with them on such a small matter. He muttered, Have you brought all the things? The leader of the Umbu immediately took out a scroll from his ninja bag and handed it to Uchiha Tunin. Sir, please take a look. Uchiha Tunin took the scroll and opened it. He roughly scanned it and nodded with satisfaction. He handed the scroll back to the Umbu and said, Very good, let's choose this position. If there is a ninja asking, say that this place is going to be planned as a new practice ground by the Umbu and needs to be integrated into Kanoha's barrier. Several people respectfully replied, Yes, sir. Remember, this is an S-level mission. 
it will be completed in three days. As soon as he finished speaking, Uchiha Tunin's figure disappeared. After Uchiha Tunin left, these people got up one after another and took out their storage scrolls from their ninja bags, beginning to arrange work. The first thing to do was to restore the devastated field to its original state. A slight wind with smoke and dust blew past, blowing up the fallen leaves on the ground. A fallen leaf floated in front of a busy umbu. The umbu's eyes narrowed in an instant. He grabbed the fallen leaf and placed it in front of his eyes to size it up. This falling leaf was half yellow and half green. Other than the veins of the leaves, there was also a mysterious and complicated jutsu. This is, it seems to be the fourth Hokage's flying thunder god jutsu. Could it be that Lord Tunin has already learned this forbidden technique? To actually be able to imprint the technique on the irregular leaves on the surface, it really is amazing. After thinking about it, the umbu reached out again and grabbed a leaf in the air, placing it in front of him to size it up. Sure enough, this leaf also had the same jutsu. At this moment, the voice of his companion sounded beside him. Don't think about it. Work hard. My lord was once the number one genius in Kanoha. If he can learn the seal of the Uzumaki clan, then there is nothing strange about the time and space ninjutsu. The umbu was stunned when he heard that. He looked at his silent companions around him. He secretly mocked himself for making such a big deal out of nothing and immediately let go of the falling leaf in his hand. At the same time, Achiha Tunin had already used Flying Thunder God to arrive at the office of the umbu. He gently pushed the door open and walked in. He saw that Baruto, who was sitting on the sofa, was so bored that he dozed off instantly woke up. Seeing that it was Achiha Tunin who came back, he immediately stood up with a happy face and greeted him. Grandpa, you are back. This little brat, he was used to shouting so quickly. Achiha Tunin showed a kind smile on his face. He rubbed the head of Baruto and said, I'll take you to Kanoha for a stroll this afternoon. From tomorrow on, we can't stay in Kanoha anymore. Baruto was stunned and looked up with a puzzled face. Why? Achiha Tunin said with a serious expression. When I was working just now, I thought about it carefully. An enemy that can be treated so seriously by all of you in the future must be very strong. Since his target is me, then I can only stay outside the village for a few days. Otherwise, if the enemy comes to us, I'm afraid that the battle will cause great damage to Kanoha. Just as Achiha Tunin finished speaking, someone knocked on the office door. Knock! Knock! Achiha Tunin patted Baruto, indicating that he should go to the sofa to rest. He went to the desk and sat down. He said lightly, Please come in. The door of the office opened and several umbu came in. Achiha Tunin raised his eyebrows slightly and pretended to be surprised. You came back so quickly. Did everything go well? Several umbu came to the desk and knelt down on one knee. The leader of the umbu put the scroll on the desk, took two steps back and knelt in front of everyone, and said in a low voice, Lord Tunin, this is the information on this mission. Achiha Tunin opened the scroll and looked at the contents while asking, What did Hanzo say? What is his attitude towards you? The leader of the umbu said calmly, His attitude has always been very good. Even if we used all kinds of methods to test his bottom line during this period, he pretended not to see it. Even if he met us in the middle of the night, he still greeted us with a smile, without any arrogance at all. He has also repeatedly told us that the Rain Village will always be on good terms with Kanoha. Achiha Tunin nodded. Achiha Tunin had expected the behavior of Hanzo. A person who had lost his courage, no matter how glorious he was in the past, was now just a dog wagging his tail and begging for mercy. He was a remarkably good-for-nothing. Achiha Tunin was really not interested in good-for-nothing. He immediately thought that Hanzo was classified as junk food. When Achiha Tunin touched the contents of the scroll with his finger, he suddenly paused and muttered, Akatsuki Organization? The leader of the Umbu nodded and said, This is a new force in the rain country. Almost all of them are made up of wandering ninjas. 
These wandering ninjas are born civilians, so they have always acted in the principle of maintaining peace. Not long after we arrived in the rain country, a few people from the Akatsuki organization came to us. It seems that they are also the leaders. They said a lot of inexplicable things to me. The Akatsuki organization is already expanding rapidly. After dealing with Hiroshiki, we can start to prepare to destroy the Akatsuki organization. The current Danzo strength is not enough, it seems that I, as the leader of the Umbu, have to personally take action. Uchiha Tunin thought quickly, but his face remained calm and said, This force seems to be growing very fast. If it is used by someone, I am afraid it will cause a lot of turmoil. The leader of the Umbu said in a deep voice. Their cohesiveness is very strong. Maybe in a few years, their forces will surpass the rain hidden village. Moreover, they seem to have been persuading Hanzo to announce that the rain country has become a neutral country and no longer participate in the war between the major countries. Hearing this, Achiha Tuna nodded, closed the scroll again, and put it aside. He said slowly, You have done well. Kakashi will stay. The others can leave. Yes, sir. Other than the leader of the Umbu, the other ninjas got up and left the office. When Baruto on the sofa heard the three words Kakashi, he suddenly became spirited and sat up straight, staring straight at the back of Kakashi. Uncle Kakashi also worked in the Umbu before, and it seemed that he had heard of such a thing in his memory. I said, why does this person's hair seem to have been seen somewhere before? There are no outsiders here, you get up. Hearing this, Kakashi stood up, and his eyes under the mask turned slightly to the corner of his eyes. He was somewhat puzzled as to who this yellow-haired kid who had suddenly appeared was. But he saw Uchiha Tunin sigh deeply and say, I think you already know. Kakashi nodded slightly and said in a cold tone, it spread all over the ninja world. The expression on Uchiha Tunin's face became a little downcast, and he whispered, Go comfort the monument and see Minato-sensei and Kushina-senpai. It just so happens that your mission is over, and I'll give you a month off. Adjust your mood and stay at home with your child. Kakashi lowered his head and clenched his fists. Under the mask, he had an absent-minded expression as he muttered, Tunin, aren't you sad? Achiha Tunin shook his head and a determined expression appeared on his face. Right now, I can't have any negative emotions. Kakashi pursed his lips and looked up at Achiha Tunin with a trace of sympathy and pity in his eyes. For some reason, Kakashi only felt that the Uchiha Tunin in front of him was a little pitiful. Then he thought of the Mangekyo displayed by the masked man who attacked Konoha and the time and space ninjutsu. His heart was filled with guilt, and he said in a hoarse voice, In fact, you don't have to be so tired. Konoha owes you too much. Moreover, Konoha doesn't just belong to you alone, but everyone, and me. If I were in Konoha, Minato-sensei and Kushinana-san might not have died. A gentle smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face, and he said in a relaxed tone, Don't say that. Since I chose to shoulder this responsibility, I won't slack off. As long as I can protect Konoha, I am willing to be an emotionless tool. Kakashi, you are my partner. I don't want you to be me. Work hard these few years and earn more money. When Kanoha stabilizes in a few years, I will first expel you from the Umbu. Kakashi naturally knew that Uchiha Tunin was doing this for his own good, but when he thought about how he could not share the burden of his best friend, he felt even more complicated. On the contrary, he even concealed the fact that Abito was the masked man. As he thought of this, Kakashi's tears dripped from the bottom of his mask. He bit his lips tightly and suppressed his tears as he said, Sorry. I can't. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, a strange expression appeared on his face. He pretended to be puzzled and said, Why did you say sorry? You didn't do anything wrong. That masked man. When Kakashi said this, he felt something in his throat. The image of him killing Rin with his own hands appeared in his mind, as well as Abito's disbelieving eyes. I can't say. Abito became like this because of me. Tunin was so loyal, 
and Abito was not only his companion, but also his family. If Tuna knew that Abito was the murderer of Minato Sensei and Kushina Senpai, how uncomfortable would he be? Tunin has already suffered too much for Kanoha. Let me bear this pain alone. Thinking of this, Kakashi took a deep breath, lowered his head heavily, and growled. I will find a way to kill him and avenge Minato Sensei and Kushina Senpai. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, his eyes under the bandage slightly narrowed. Humans, in the end, still have their own little secrets. Even if it was you, Kakashi. You actually deceived me like this. I hate being deceived the most. You were the first to be heartless, so don't blame me for being heartless in the future. Uchiha Tunin sighed heavily, stood up and walked up to Kakashi. He reached out and patted him on the shoulder. He said in a low voice, Go back and relax. It is not appropriate to rush things for revenge. Don't worry, I can still hold on. Kakashi nodded silently, turned around, and quickly left the office. When the door of the office was closed, Baruto could still vaguely hear the sound coming from outside, and secretly said, Uncle Kakashi also knows how to cry. If I didn't sit in this position, I would have cried even more miserably than him. When Baruto heard this, he turned around and saw that Uchiha Tunin was standing there with a slightly hunched back, as if he was about to be crushed by the heavy burden of reality. Was this cruelty of war? His relatives and friends left one by one, and even the optimistic Uncle Kakashi was crying so miserably. However, his grandfather was still holding on. Baruto felt his heart soften a lot. He got up and walked to Uchiha Tunin. He held his hand and smiled brightly. Grandpa. All right, let's not discuss such a sad topic now. Can we set off now? Uchiha Tunin seemed to be infected by the cheerful optimism. The expression on his face became much brighter. He whispered. Let's go. Grandpa will take you to have a good time. At the same time, on the other side of the sea. On top of a mountain outside Misty Village. A spatial whirlpool appeared next to a pig cage grass. The masked tenon stepped out of the whirlpool and landed on the ground. The pig cage grass slowly opened, revealing the black and white Zetsu inside. White Zetsu said with a proud face, Aha, uh -huh, Mr. Madara, you are walking a bit slowly, but I have already arrived. The masked tenon ignored White Zetsu, who was a clown. Under the mask, the scarlet kaleidoscope stared at the distant mist village and murmured. This is the mist village? In terms of prosperity, it is only a little worse than Kanoha. It should be a good harvest. Black Zetsu glanced at the masked tunin and added in a deep voice. When the war on the sea is over, this place will be more prosperous. But then again, aren't you worried about the situation of the Renegan? However, the masked Tunin seemed to be completely different from Black and White Zetsu. He asked himself, where is the fourth generation Mizukage? A look of displeasure appeared on White Zetsu's face, and he said leisurely, That guy is not in Mist Village right now. If you have a better tone and ask me, I can consider telling you. Black Zetsu was keenly aware that the eyes of the masked Tunin had become a little sharp, and he quickly replied, The Three Tail has been resurrected, and has been captured by the Mist Ninjas. Now Karatachi Agura is preparing the sealing ceremony by the sea. It seems that he wants to seal the Three Tail into his body and become a Jinchuriki. As soon as he finished speaking, White Zetsu asked with a surprised face, Why did you say it out on your own? Who are you with? The masked Tunin said coldly, the specific location. Black Zetsu immediately controlled a branch and a scroll was dragged on it. The masked Tunin took the scroll and opened it. After confirming the specific location, he threw the scroll back. At the same time, he glanced at White Zetsu's arm with his left eye and stared at it. Ah! White Zetsu scream, his facial features became even more distorted due to the pain. Uh! It hurts! My hand! Do what you should do well. There won't be a next time. The masked Tunin warned White Zetsu. A spatial vortex appeared in his right eye and sucked his body into it. Be careful in the future. 
don't treat him like that little brat from before. Otherwise, he will really kill you. I don't change companions too often. Chapter 361, Sealing Sandby Late at night, the starry sky reflected on the surface of the surging sea, dancing up and down with the waves, appearing and disappearing at times. The waves were like a magnificent army of thousands of men and horses, baring their ferocious teeth and roaring loudly, as if they were chasing something relentlessly. Roar The deafening roar of the beast echoed on the surface of the sea. On the surface of the sea, Isaba raised his head and roared as he wagged his tail to chase away the small black dots around him. Those small black dots were like flies, continuously attacking Isabu. However, their attacks did not deal much substantial damage to Isabu. They only made Isabu feel irritated. The taste of blood is really wonderful. The pleasure of fighting that I haven't felt in a long time. Ten Fingers Piercing Bullet Many black dots unfortunately did not dodge the attack of Isabu. They were smashed into the sea and did not even have a bubble to appear. On the reef on the shore of the sea stood dozens of hidden mist ninjas and over a hundred members of the sealing squad. On the highest reef, Yagura, holding a long staff, stared intently at Isabu who was getting closer to the coast and the Kagaya clansmen who were desperately attacking Isabu. After a long time, Isabu swam to a place not far from the coast under the harassment of the Kagaya clansmen and there are only a dozen or so of the dozens of Kagaya clansmen left at this time. Seeing this, a hint of contempt and disgust flashed in Yagura's eyes. He said softly, These lunatics. The leader of the Umbu beside him bent down and said respectfully to Yagura, Lord Mizukich, the three-tailed has been led into the shallow beach. Look! Yagura nodded slightly, and then he raised his long staff. He ordered loudly, Activate the barrier, and the sealing ninjas prepare the biju sealing ritual. As soon as he finished speaking, the group of sealing ninjas dived into the sea. It was only because the sealing array that had been prepared beforehand was engraved on the shallows at the bottom of the sea. The leader of the Umbu next to the Agura glanced at the people of the Kagaya tribe who were still chasing after the Isabu on the surface of the sea, and a hint of sympathy flashed in his eyes. After hesitating for a moment, he carefully said to Yagura, Lord Mizukich, shouldn't you inform the Kagaya clansmen to retreat first? Otherwise, when the seal begins, the Sanbai will definitely be furious. I'm afraid these people. Yagura's expression did not change when he heard that. He said coldly, Do you think those lunatics will listen to me? They are no longer our allies. I already said that once the Sanbai arrives at Shallow Beach, they should retreat on their own. But do you think they take my orders seriously? The captain of the Umbu sighed in his heart and lowered his head heavily. I understand. On the distant peak of the mountain, the masked Tunin was sitting on a big stone, quietly watching the people of the hidden fog preparing to seal the Isabu. Seeing that Isabu had already entered the range of the sealing circle, yet the Kagaya clan behind him were still chasing and attacking. The masked Tunin's eyes flashed with a trace of a strange expression as he said, These people of the Kagaya clan probably got a few screw loose. Then, his gaze shifted to Yagura who was already standing on the sacrificial altar and muttered, Karatachi Yagura. This guy must have been marked with a hypnotic mark. Suddenly, the masked Tunin glanced to the side. A pig cage grass drilled out of the ground beside him and slowly opened, revealing the black and white Zetsu inside. As soon as the black and white Zetsu appeared, the black Zetsu shouted in a deep voice, Lord Madara. The masked Tunin nodded slightly. He sized up the completely intact white Zetsu and said lightly, Looks like your recovery is quite fast. Your vitality is so vigorous that you can even regrow severed limbs. However, white Zetsu had a reserved look on his face. He scratched his head and said with a silly smile, Aha, uh -huh, my name is Afe. It's the first time we meet. Pleased to meet you. Oh? Did Black Zetsu already replace that cripple? This was pretty good. The masked Tunin took a deep look at the expressionless Black Zetsu. He nodded indifferently and said, Yes. 
Black Zetsu seemed to notice the strange look in the mask Tunin's eyes and hurriedly said, Madara-sama, a hypnotic mark has been planted in the brain space of 4th Mizukage. You can use the Sharingan to activate the mark at any time so that you can control the entire hidden fog. After hearing the words, Mask Tunin turned to look at Yagura, who was in command, and said leisurely, In fact, I have always been unable to figure out what he wants to control in Hidden Fog Village. This doesn't seem to be related to the plan at all. Black Zetsu was silent for a moment, then explained in a low voice. This. I don't know either. He just controlled Mizukich to launch the Blood Mist policy. This might be to weaken Hidden Mist's strength. After all, for our plan, the Five Great Ninja Village is a hindrance. When the masked tenant heard this, a cold snort came out from under the mask. He sneered and said, Are you telling a lie for him? Can you match some normal logic? Black Zetsu hurriedly explained. You misunderstood. In fact, I don't know. It was just my guess. It was also possible that he was just playing around. The masked tenant shook his head lightly and waved his hand at Black White Zetsu. I will stay in the fog for a while. You go and monitor Negato first. If there is anything else, come and inform me. Black Zetsu nodded, hesitated for a moment, and then told him the latest information. Something happened to Negato. They recently established an organization called Akatsuki. It seems that he has been lost in an imaginary fantasy, and it will be a little difficult to wake him up. Shall I arrange it in the dark and lead Nagato on the right path? The masked Tunin slowly turned his head and stared at Black Zetsu with his scarlet eyes. He said, You don't have to do anything. Leave everything to me. If I find out that you are acting without my permission. Before he finished speaking, Mask Tunin turned his head back, ignoring this dutiful servant. I understand. Black Zetsu knew that the masked Tunin only wanted to send them away. But now that Uchiha Madara was dead, everything had to rely on the masked Tunin. He had no choice but to obediently agree, and then he controlled the pig cage grass to dive into the soil and leave this place. At this time, on the shore of the sea, the mist ceiling class ninjas had all activated their seals. A huge dark purple barrier covered the entire shore. Roar! Isabu's simple head also found something wrong at this time, struggling to turn around and wanted to flee. However, at this moment, the runes around the altar at the foot of the Agura suddenly lit up. Yagura looked calm and opened his clothes. A deep round hole suddenly appeared in the abdomen of the Agura, and a black light shot out from the hole. In the blink of an eye, it enveloped the entire body of the three-tailed Isabu. There are no clansmen in the Kagaya clan who are afraid of death, come again. Hee hee, this place is not the sea surface. It's my turn to show off. Fleeting Bone Dance Iron Thread Flower Dance At this time, the eyes of those people of the Kagaya tribe were already red from being killed, and each and every one of them had a fanatical expression on their faces as they continuously rushed towards the three-tailed Isabu. However, at this time, the three-tailed Isabu had already completely gone berserk, and powerful tail beast Chakra burst out in all directions. One after another, they sent the people of the Kagaya tribe flying onto the barrier. Splat! Even if the bones of the people of the Kagaya tribe were hard enough, they were still flesh and blood, and were directly smashed into meat paste. Yagura didn't feel the slightest bit of heartache for the death of these Kagaya clansmen. Seeing that the three-tailed Isabu was about to be sealed, his eyes were full of excitement. From today on, I will have the power of a tail beast and endless chakra. Right at this moment, a black spatial portal suddenly appeared right above the barrier. Urashiki stepped out from the portal with a red light fishing rod in his hand. He looked down and the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. It's so lively. It looks like I've made it in time. Are you sealing the turtle? The seal class ninja all activated the seal in the water, and Yagura was in a special state. Only the umbu of Hidden Fog, who was protected by a group of guards, shouted angrily, Who is it? Protect Lord Mizukage. The ceremony is at a critical moment. 
We can't let that guy harass Lord Mizukage. On the distant mountain peak, the masked Tunin suddenly stood up from the stone. A strange look flashed in his eyes as he muttered, This guy actually ran so far away to gather information. Yurashiki Atsutsuki, who was floating in the night sky, said with a faint smile, I came to ask about a person. I met the fox Jinchuriki in Kanoha. He had a spatial ninjutsu that was very difficult to deal with, called Flying Thunder God. So please tell me about that guy's weakness. I heard that you were hostile to Kanoha, so I came all the way here to find you. As an enemy village, you should know something. The leader of the Umbu was furious and shouted, How dare you talk to Lord Mizukich like this? In a flash, a red light shot into the abdomen of the leader of the Umbu. Uh. The leader of the Umbu felt a sharp pain in his abdomen. He looked down with difficulty and said in disbelief, What a fast attack. With a wave of his hand, the red light retracted. The leader of the Umbu collapsed to the ground. The surrounding mist Umbu quickly surrounded him. The leader of the Umbu raised his hand shakily, indicating that no one should care about him. He gritted his teeth and said, My body is fine. It seems that the chakra was absorbed by this guy. Yurashiki raised the hook, looked at the light blue chakra hanging on the hook, and said with disgust, Such a little yield. Sure enough, the gap between ninjas is still quite big. As soon as he finished speaking, the hidden mist Umbu below had already made a series of hand seals and launched an attack on Yurashiki. They can't just sit back and watch someone from unknown origin behave so arrogantly. Water Wave Technique Water Dragon Wave Technique Flame Burst Technique Thousand Lashing All Kill When these earth-shattering ninjutsu were about to get close to him, Yurashiki's pair of blue renegans slightly condensed. He immediately activated the Thousand Crane Body Blink. This was one of the abilities of the blue renegan. In the instant of being attacked, he could turn himself into a few red paper cranes and disappear from the eyes of the enemy. After that, he could appear anywhere he wanted. The ninjutsu of the hidden mist group missed, and Yurashiki's figure had already reached a higher place. He said lightly, It seems that I am right. The gap between you and that guy is really too big. You have no manners at all. I will kill all of you first and then talk to your mizukage. I just don't know how the mizukage of this era is compared with the glasses man. Aim no Subaru Bashi no Makoto. In an instant, a crisscrossing red light appeared in the night sky. The hidden mist group was no match for Urashiki, and in a flash, the fish hook had pulled away the chakra in their bodies. All of them collapsed to the ground, and it was extremely difficult for them to even move their fingers. More than enough. He waved the hook in front of him, took off his chakra, and put it into the basket. Seeing this, the masked Tunin at the peak of the mountain in the distance smiled and said, I misjudged him. I didn't expect this guy to be so kind. He actually doesn't kill. After a long time, Yagura finally sealed the three tails into his body. He immediately looked up at Yurashiki and shouted, Who the hell are you? Yurashiki shrugged and spread out his hands slightly. There is really no point in asking me this question. Please tell me the weakness of that guy quickly. I can't wait to catch the fox. Yagura had just become a Jinchuriki at this time. He felt the endless chakra in his body and was very confident. He immediately clenched the long staff and shouted coldly, If you want to know the information from my mouth, you have to show how much strength you have. Water Release, Water Mirror Technique Yagura pointed his long staff at Yurashiki, and a mirror suddenly appeared between the two of them. Humph, my water mirror technique can create a clone that is exactly the same as the enemy, and can use the same ninjutsu as the opponent, and the power is the same. No matter how strong you were, you could only obediently bow your head in front of water realm techniques. However, after a few breaths, Yagura realized that something was wrong. He frowned and thought. What happened? Why is there no reaction after injecting so much chakra? Yurashiki tilted his head and lowered his body to look at the water mirror. He rubbed his chin and said, What a handsome face! 
this is something that you inferior creatures can't understand. At this time, there was a bit of cold sweat on Yagura's forehead. Is this guy a Jinchuriki? He can't even make a copy with the power of three tails. After a long time, Yurashiki seemed to be tired of looking at the mirror and immediately urged. My patience is limited, please hurry up. Yagura took a deep breath and dispersed his water realm technique. He immediately shouted. Damn it! Water release, long waterfall. In an instant, a huge wave rose from the surface of the sea and slammed towards Yurashiki. Yurashiki saw this and a trace of surprise flashed in his eyes. He said slowly, To be able to use the power of the turtle so quickly, it seems that the turtle is too honest. Since that's the case, then I will use a bit of my strength. Chapter 362 Change of Face Facing the water curtain that covered the sky and the sun, Yurashiki obviously didn't take this kind of ninjutsu seriously. After all, for Atsutsuki, whose defense power is far superior to that of humans, even if he is personally attacked by this level of ninjutsu, he probably won't be hurt. However, Yurashiki is considered more rational and prudent compared to other Atsutsuki. He didn't make a physical move to resist this kind of attack. The light of the blue Rinnegan flashed slightly, and he silently activated time reversal. Eh, there won't be any problems. The corner of Yurashiki's mouth curled up slightly, and he reached out to pat the red fish basket at his waist. The red fish basket immediately lit up with a bright red light. For the first time, the roll of this large wooden treasure was presented to the eyes of the masked Tunin in the distance. A ball of blue chakra gushed out from the red fish basket and quickly fell into the surging sea water below. Roar! In a flash, a dragon roar resounded. Huge waves rolled on the surface of the sea, and a giant water dragon broke out of the waves. It circled its huge dragon body, and it bared its fangs and brandished its claws as it rushed towards the water curtain. The blue chakra that had just fallen into the sea was actually fished out from the bodies of these mist ninjas. However, after the addition of the red light fish basket, its power was countless times stronger than the might of the mist ninjas. This is... Water Dragon Ball. What is that fish basket? Don't you need to form seals? How could a pure ninja release such a powerful ninjutsu? Could it be that this guy is also a Jinchuriki? At this time, the face of Yagura was extremely ugly. The false sense of invincibility that he had when he just became a Jinchuriki also disappeared. But as the Kage of a village, Yagura would not allow him to lose to a nobody here. Otherwise, where would he put his face in? Yagura took a deep breath, and the chakra in his body urged the Aisabu waterfall technique to slap towards the water dragon. In vain attempt to kill the other party in one go, the water curtain and water dragon were too huge. Even though the two of them moved extremely fast, there was an illusion of slowness in the eyes. In an instant, there was a deafening dragon roar. The two collided heavily. Bang! The night sky seemed to have been torn open, and a large amount of water poured down towards the sea surface. The two of them saw a curtain of water appear. The water release ninjutsu of both sides was about the same, and in the moment of confrontation, they cancelled each other out. At this time, Yagura was kneeling on one knee on the ground. His forehead was covered in sweat, and he was panting heavily. In his heart, he was shocked by the strength of his opponent. One had to know that there were very few people in the ninja realm who could resist the Jinchuriki. This strange person who suddenly appeared had such strength. Yagura raised his hands again and formed a seal. He groaned, stretched out his right hand to cover his stomach, and his face turned pale. Damn, the seal has not yet been completely stabilized, and it has already loosened. If I continue to consume chakra like this, the sandby might break the seal, and I will die. Suddenly, a red light appeared, and in a flash, it penetrated through the layers of water curtain, directly piercing into the abdomen of Yagura. Yagura lowered his head to look at his abdomen. His face was full of disbelief. Damn it! I was ambushed. The water curtain fell into the sea, revealing Yurashiki with a proud face behind it. 
I already have the turtle's chakra. If I take it today, I am afraid it will have a bad effect. As for your chakra, I'll accept it. In this way, you can answer my questions honestly, right? After saying that, he saw Urashiki raise his hand that was holding the red light fishing rod, and the red line that was hooked onto Yagura was pulled back. However, when he was ready to harvest the spoils of war, he found that there was no chakra on the hook. One could see Urashiki move his face to the front of the hook, and with a puzzled expression, he said, Eh? What happened? Where is the chakra? Could it be that it was used up just now? On the distant mountain peak, the masked Tunin's eyes slightly narrowed, and he thought in his heart. He actually couldn't even break the four-symbol seal that was widely spread in the ninja world. It seemed that the information was correct. The original extraordinary power of this world is completely different from the chakra mastered by the Atsutsuki clan. In this case, except for the one in the legend. I don't have to worry about these ordinary Atsutsuki anymore. In the next instant, a spatial vortex appeared in Tunin's right eye and sucked him in. At the same time, the night sky above the coast suddenly stirred up. A black dot that was invisible to the naked eyes suddenly appeared. In an instant, the pitch-black spatial vortex expanded. Yagura and Urashiki, who were surprised that they were unharmed, were suddenly attracted by the space vortex, and they all stared over. However, they heard the masked Tunin's indifferent voice coming from the black spatial vortex. I heard your conversation just now. Uchiha Tunin stopped me from destroying Kanoha and became a Jinchuriki. I don't mind sharing his information with you. However, before that, I have to get rid of the eyesore. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw a dense space vortex shoot out, stabbing towards the weak Miss Ninjas. Push! In a flash, one after another, they accurately pierced through the back of the Miss Ninjas' necks, nailing them to the reef. Who is it? Yagura's eyes widened, and he glared at the space vortex and shouted. Urashiki also looked at the space vortex with a look of interest. Another native who knew time and space ninjutsu. From this guy's tone, it seemed that he was the enemy of the fox pillar. It seems that I found the right place today. However, this guy's space-time ninjutsu is quite similar to the fox Jinchuriki. Urashiki didn't think that it was Uchiha Tunin who came here. After all, according to the information Urashiki learned, Kirigakur is Kanoha's deadly enemy, and the two villages are still at war. The person who understood a person the most was not his friend, but his mortal enemy. This was also the reason why Urashiki would specially come here to investigate Uchiha Tunin's information. He immediately recognized the masked Tunin had yet to appear as someone from Hidden Mist Village. Under the gaze of the two people, the masked Tunin wearing a black robe and a tiger skin lightly descended from the spatial vortex. Finally, he stood firmly on the reef not far from Yagura. The moment the masked Tunin landed, Yagura's expression became fierce, and his hand that was holding the long staff tightened. The chakra of the three tails immediately attached to the long staff. He waved his long staff and hacked at the head of Tunin. No matter what, this guy in front of him had killed his subordinates the moment he appeared. He was an enemy, not a friend, the first to strike was the first to gain the upper hand. Just as the long staff of Yagura was about to touch the top of the mask Tunin's head, Mask Tunin suddenly turned his head and glared at the Agura with his pair of scarlet Kamui kaleidoscope. Immediately, a close-range hypnotic eye appeared. Uh. In an instant, the hypnotic mark that Uchiha had planted in his brain was activated. The momentum of the long staff chopping down suddenly stopped, stopping at the top of the mask. The Biju chakra attached to the long staff also faded and the eyes of Yagura quickly changed in a short period of time. It changed from struggling to panic, and finally completely became numb. In the end, Yagura put away the long staff with a numb face, and like a puppet, he retreated to the back of the masked Tunin and stood there with his head down. The masked Tunin nodded in satisfaction when he saw that the hypnotic eye had worked. He then turned his head to look at Urashiki floating in the night sky and said lightly, Sir, Please spare Mizukage. I can answer any questions for you. After all, 
the enemy of the enemy was a friend. Information can naturally be shared with friends. This trip was originally to inquire about Uchiha Tunin's information so that he could smoothly seize the nine-tailed chakra and plant the divine tree. Seeing that the masked man who suddenly appeared in front of him was willing to answer his question, he immediately dispersed the blue renegan and returned to his usual white eyes. He said leisurely, Oh, you know that guy's weakness? The masked Tunin nodded and said in a deep voice, I just fought with him not long ago, so I naturally understand him. Although the Flying Thunder God technique was a time-space ninjutsu, it required a medium to locate the coordinates. Generally speaking, the time and space spells are printed on items such as kunai. Moreover, Flying Thunder God's movement distance was limited, and it was only better to display speed. The solution was very simple, as long as the outcome was clear beforehand. You have to know that the fourth Hokage of Flying Thunder God was killed by me personally. After listening to the explanation of the masked Tunin, Urashiki stroked his chin thoughtfully and said, So that's how it is. Do you need a medium? I thought it was a very advanced time-space ninjutsu, but it turned out to be such an ancient method. I really thank you very much. Bang! All of a sudden, the reef under Tunin's feet exploded. Yagura beside him immediately jumped backwards under the control of the masked Tunin to avoid being accidentally injured. The reef near the masked Tunin had disappeared. His whole feet firmly stepped on the surface of the water, rising up and down with the waves. A red line pierced through the body of the masked Tunin, one deep into the pool of mud at the bottom of the sea, and the other followed the red light fishing rod in Urashiki's hand. The eyes of the masked Tunin lowered slightly, and he glanced at the red line that penetrated his body. Then, he looked at Urashiki with an indifferent expression and said slowly, What do you mean? Could it be that you want to form a grudge with me? Is it an instant space-time ninjutsu? It seemed like he had entered a different dimension to avoid the damage in reality. I never thought that the natives of this era would be so much more difficult to deal with than I imagined. To be able to give birth to such a world with so many experts, the fruit planted will definitely give me unparalleled power. Thinking of this, Urashiki's eyes narrowed slightly. He looked deeply at the masked Tunin. As for this guy, he did not seem to have a future. He should have been killed by someone. The person who was determined to die was not a threat, and there was no need to spend too much time on him. A kind smile appeared on his face as he controlled the red light to retrieve the red light from the corner of his eyes. He waved his hand and said, No, no, no. I just want to verify the authenticity of the information. After all, that guy is very difficult to deal with even me. Yet you said that you killed someone who knows the same ninjutsu as him. I have to be suspicious. But from the looks of it now, you are indeed not lying. When the masked Tunin heard this, he only nodded his head lightly, not showing any signs of anger. He already had a way to kill the other party at any time, so he naturally had to be more generous to the other party. After obtaining the information he wanted, Urashiki had no interest in staying here any longer. He immediately activated Yamatsu Hirasaka, summoned a black portal beside him, and stepped into it. Suddenly, Urashiki, who had just stepped into the portal, seemed to have thought of something. He glanced sideways at Yagura, and then looked at the masked Tunin. By the way, why didn't I extract his chakra just now? The masked Tunin naturally wouldn't tell the other party that it was because of the sealing technique, so that the other party would be wary of the sealing technique. He immediately turned his head to look at the numb-looking Yagura, and then said to Urashiki leisurely, because he is my person. Why, are you interested in my information? The meaning behind his words was that he had already secretly made a move just now. If you continue to ask, then you can only make a move. Urashiki nodded when he heard this, and the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. I am interested, but there is no need to understand. With that, he entered the portal and left. After Urashiki left, there were only the two living people left on the coast, the masked Tunin and Yagura. Because of Urashiki's probing attack just now, a large amount of rocks were shattered, and many corpses had already sunk into the sea. 
the seawater near the coast had become a little dim. The reason why the masked Tenen wanted to kill those subordinates of Yagura was naturally because he did not want his identity to be exposed to the eyes of the ninja world. This was so that he could first clear his fate before he appeared. Yagura, who was already deeply trapped in the illusion of the Sharingan, came to the back of the masked Tenen and said calmly, What do I have to prepare next? The masked Tenen pondered for a moment and said slowly, Let's return to the village first and deal with today's matter. We can't expose the existence of that guy. In addition, you have to arrange a reasonable identity for me. I need to stay in the village for a period of time. During this period of time, you must continue to implement the bloody mist policy. Yagura, who had fallen into the illusion of hypnosis, had already regarded the masked Tunin as its master at this time. Naturally, he obeyed his orders. He immediately nodded and said, I will tell the villagers that there was a mistake in today's sealing ceremony. After I became a Jinchuriki, I went berserk. I killed all these subordinates with my own hands. As for your identity, I will announce that you have been on a secret mission since you were young and have only recently returned. I wonder which identity you want. Mask Tunin's pair of scarlet eyes calmly looked at the surging sea water under the starry sky. After thinking for a while, his hands formed a seal. Under the illumination of the starlight, the appearance of the mask Tunin squirmed, and his body emitted a crackling sound. After a long time, the mask Tunin's height had risen by half a head. He slowly turned around and looked at Yagura. Yagura saw a gentle-looking man with a pair of black eyes that were filled with righteousness reflected in his eyes. Even though he was wearing a black robe, he still gave off an elegant and easygoing feeling. This appearance was naturally not Uchiha Tunin or Uchiha Bido. Instead, the masked Tunin once again used a transformation technique to reconstruct his appearance. After all, the purpose of coming to Kirigakur this time is mainly for the blood succession limit here. As for those who were friendly, it was easier to gain the recognition of others. After changing his face, Tunin squinted his eyes at Yagura, the headmaster of the ninja school. Chapter 363, Sasuke Defeated At the edge of the forest outside Kanoha, a simple and crude wooden house stood alone on a snowy ground. The north wind was cold, and the silver-gray clouds were galloping in the sky. Last night, Kanoha welcomed its first snow of the year. Now that the snow had stopped, the wind had gradually reduced its power. Thick snow had accumulated on the top of the wall and the roof of the house, shining brightly under the dark sky. Ding! Obtain the recognition of Uzumaki Baruto. In the warm wooden house, Achiha Tunin heard the system notification sound in his ears, and the corners of his mouth could not help but curve slightly. He saw that the man in front of him was happily playing with the necklace on his neck. Grandpa, thank you for the necklace. I like it very much. Achiha Tunin smiled and nodded. This is the reward I got in the Five Great Nations shooting competition, and I gave it to Senior Kushina later. I didn't expect that in the end, it would still belong to the Uzumaki clan. Perhaps this is destined by fate. Baruto closed his eyes and felt the constant growth of chakra in his body. He clenched his fists and said excitedly, with it, before the karma has finished transforming my body. Atsutsuki Mamashiki won't have a chance to invade my consciousness. Achiha Tenen touched his chin, pondered for a moment, and said, In theory, that is correct. After all, with this necklace, you are equivalent to refining chakra at every moment, and there will not be a situation where your chakra is exhausted. But you also have to pay attention to your body, no matter how strong the vitality of the Uzumaki clan is, it is not endless. Once your life force is exhausted, you will quickly age and die. Hearing this, Baruto released his fist. He lowered his head and fell silent for a moment. Then, he smiled bitterly and shook his head. It doesn't matter. As long as we can prevent that guy from waking up. In any case, I don't have much time left. Achiha Tunin immediately squatted down and placed his hands on the shoulders of Baruto. With a serious face, he said. Don't say that. 
I will definitely think of a suitable way to help you get rid of the karma in your body. Promise me that you will never give up the hope in your heart at any time. Looking at the snow white bandage in Uchiha Tunin's eyes, the disappointment on Baruto's face gradually disappeared. He smiled, took a deep breath, and nodded heavily. Yes. Squeak. At this moment, the door of the wooden house was pushed open and a gust of cold wind poured into the house. Achiha Sasuke, who was wearing a black cloak, walked in from the outside. When Baruto heard this, he turned his head and said with a puzzled face, Mr. Sasuke actually came back. Sasuke did not reply. He came to the fire and sat down, quietly watching the shaking flames in the furnace. Achiha Tunin led Baruto to sit next to Sasuke and whispered, why are you back so early today? Did something happen? Sasuke shook his head and said lightly, He is not the him of that world, and I don't know what to do to change my fate. Uchiha Tunin pretended not to know and asked, What kind of fate? Sasuke looked at the flame and opened his mouth. He hesitated for a moment and slowly shook his head. Seeing this, Uchiha Tunin smiled and reached out to pat Sasuke on the shoulder. He said earnestly, if you don't want to say it, don't force yourself. I'm not that curious. Even if there is a disaster in the future, you don't need to do anything. Itachi is my disciple. I will protect him. Sasuke nodded and turned to look deeply at Uchiha Tunin. He said softly, sorry to trouble you. Uchiha Tunin chuckled and picked up the charcoal on the ground and put it in the stove. The fire in the stove became more vigorous and the whole wooden house became warmer. However, Achiha Tunin said slowly, We are relatives. The blood flowing in our bodies comes from the same source. There is no need to be so distant. Sasuke did not reply. Instead, he nodded silently. Seeing this, Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes under the bandage. This guy was a little stubborn. Looking at the situation today, it seemed that the gap between him and this world had increased instead of decreasing. Seeing that the atmosphere seemed to be a little heavy and wanted to liven up the atmosphere, Baruto immediately pulled Uchiha Tunin's sleeve and said with a silly smile, Grandpa, let's go have a snowball fight. Uchiha Tunin shook his head and said, You go first. I'll come back later. Baruto looked at Uchiha Tunin and then looked at Sasuke. He immediately got up and walked out of the door. Then hurry up. After Baruto left, Achiha Tunin reached out and picked up the steaming teapot on the stove. He went to the table and poured two cups of tea. He picked up the teacup and returned to Sasuke. He handed him a cup of tea and said, What are you thinking about? Sasuke took the cup and held it in his hand. He whispered, I'm thinking about how to stop Urashiki. Achiha Tunin smiled indifferently. There's no need to worry. Future you and Naruto can stop him. I'm also a perfect nine-tailed Jinchuriki. I think I won't do worse than Naruto. At the mention of Naruto, Sasuke seemed to be much more energetic and spoke more. However, Sasuke shook his head and said, You don't understand, it's a matter of perspective. Naruto and I once fought against an enemy that was much stronger than Urashiki. Naruto is not just a simple Jinchuriki. When a person is agitated, they usually don't want to talk. But when talking about a certain topic and suddenly talking more, it is very likely that it is the reason for the frustration. Achiha Tunin was keenly aware of the key point. This guy, turns out he wants Naruto. Achiha Tunin said with a gratified expression. Looks like this kid has surpassed me. Then I am relieved. Don't worry, I won't hold you back. Sasuke took a sip of tea and sighed softly. Actually, the biggest problem is on me. In the previous battle, my chakra was taken away by Urashiki. Still hasn't recovered yet. After saying that, he saw Sasuke sitting there alone, staring at the fire in a daze. Achiha Tunin found several topics about Naruto and tried to let Sasuke understand that there were also Naruto in this era. To remove the barrier between the other party and this world. However, most of Sasuke's answers were hmm, not bad, not bad, which was extremely perfunctory. 
After a long time, Uchiha Tenen acted in a hurry and ended the conversation. He silently sipped his tea. This guy's personality was like ice. It was a little difficult to agree with, and it seemed to be more troublesome than Haruzen Saratobi and Danzo. If he was right, he probably only recognized one or two people in his life. It was also possible that there was only Naruto. It had to be Naruto from his era. It wasn't that there was no way, but if he wanted to melt ice, he would need to be as enthusiastic as a fire. He had to persist for a long time. It had to be known that Naruto had persisted for several years. But if I were to do this, I'm afraid that it will ruin our current persona. Moreover, our age difference is a bit too big. Being too enthusiastic will make people feel uncomfortable. Thinking of this, Achiha Tonin's eyes under the bandage glanced at Sasuke who was expressionless. First, leave them in this era forever, and then slowly plan. At this moment, Sasuke's expression suddenly froze. He suddenly raised his head and looked out of the window. He said in a deep voice, There is a spatial fluctuation from Yamatsu Hirasaka. He is here! As soon as he finished speaking, Sasuke got up and ran out of the house. Achiha Tenen immediately followed him. When the two arrived outside the house, they saw Baruto standing next to the snowman, staring at the expanding portal above. At the same time, the voice of Urashiki came from the portal. I'm here to harvest the chakra. Fox Jinchuriki, this time, I won't let you go so easily. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw Urashiki with a red light fishing rod in his hand and a red light fish basket hanging from his waist stepping out of the portal. He lowered his head and glanced at the three people below him. Finally, he locked his eyes on Sasuke's face and said with a mocking expression, What a coincidence, the two of you who are in the way are also here. However, how much strength do you have left now? As he spoke, Urashiki slowly descended to the snow. With a cold look in his eyes, Sasuke pulled out Kuzanagi's sword from his waist and whispered to Uchiha Tunin, I will deal with him. Be careful, if it really doesn't work, you don't have to worry about me, just run away. Don't let him take the Kyuubi's chakra. After saying that, Sasuke's figure flashed and rushed towards Urashiki. After running for a short distance, Sasuke's hand holding Kuzanagi's sword slightly tightened. All of a sudden, a blinding flash of lightning appeared on the blade of Kuzanagi's sword. Z z z z z z. Achiha Tunin did not intend to attack together with him. It was a good opportunity to see how strong Sasuke was. However, from the looks of it, it seemed very ordinary. It felt very ordinary. Seeing that Sasuke had rushed in front of him, Urashiki Rinnegan flashed slightly. He secretly activated time reversal. Sasuke thrust out his sword, and the powerful lightning seemed to penetrate the body of Urashiki. But it was a pity that Urashiki had already predicted the attack trajectory of Sasuke in advance and had successfully dodged it once at a certain moment in the future. The Urashiki in Sasuke's eyes flashed and appeared to the side. Although Sasuke could clearly see the movement trajectory of Urashiki, his body was completely unable to keep up. The Kuzanagi sword that was filled with lightning in his hand stabbed into empty air. Urashiki's mocking voice rang in his ears. Looks like you haven't recovered much of your strength. Your movements are really slow. Before he finished speaking, Urashiki waved his red fishing rod, and a red light suddenly appeared, shooting towards the back of Sasuke. He wanted to take away Sasuke's remaining chakra again. When Sasuke saw this, his pupils suddenly shrank. He wanted to dodge, but his body was slow for half a day. Crap! He could not keep up at all. Swish! In this split second, everyone saw a blur in front of their eyes, and the figure of Sasuke suddenly disappeared. That red light suddenly pounced into the air and stabbed into the thick snow. Annoying time-space ninjutsu. Urashiki's eyes focused as he took back the hook and turned to look at Sasuke and Uchiha Tunin who were now far away. He saw that Uchiha Tunin had already activated the nine-tailed mode. After putting down Sasuke, he said with a closed face, Are you all right? Sasuke breathed a sigh of relief and glanced at his shoulder. 
there was a space spell printed on his shoulder. He immediately raised his eyebrows and said, I'm fine. If I'm not wrong, this is the Flying Thunder God. Uchiha Tunin nodded. Suddenly, an angry shout sounded, attracting the attention of the two people. Bastard. At some point in time, Baruto who was originally standing next to the snowman had secretly snuck behind Urashiki and smashed the raisin gun at Urashiki's back. Careful! Sasuke could not help but shout. Urashiki's expression did not change. He did not even look at his back and casually waved the red light fishing rod. In the next moment, the red light moved like a snake and instantly tied up Baruto behind him. Mamashiki! Why did he find such a brainless guy like you? Baruto was tied up and could not move. His face was full of anger and he grimaced at Urashiki. Let me go, let me go, bastard. Urashiki stretched out his hand to pick at his ears and said impatiently, You still can't see your strength clearly. Get lost. After saying that, Urashiki swung heavily into the distance, throwing Baruto away. Bang! 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 The sound of trees breaking rang out, and the snowflakes from the impact blocked everyone's line of sight. Urashiki definitely wouldn't kill Baruto. After all, Baruto was Mamashiki Resurrection Vessel. As a branch family, if you kill your clansmen without permission, you will be punished. Of course, it was fine to feed your clansmen to the divine trees. Achiha Tunin was not worried about the life and death of others. In any case, this portion of rations had already been acknowledged. The value of growth was limited, so there was no need to worry about it. Among the people present, it could be said that only Sasuke was worried about Baruto. However, at this time, there was no time for Sasuke to check Baruto. He could only pray in his heart. Urashiki turned his head to look at Uchiha Tunin and Sasuke and said, Now that we have dealt with an eyesore, how are you going to resist? Uchiha Tunin's expression froze, as if he was facing a terrifying enemy. He quickly formed seals with both hands and shouted, Fire Style, Dragon Flame Song A huge dragon-shaped fireball shot towards Urashiki. Urashiki's blue renegade flashed slightly and activated time reversal. With a relaxed and contented expression, he dodged the fireballs that carried a high temperature. These fireballs smashed into the snow and melted the snow water in an instant, raising thick white smoke. Zizi, Zizi. At the same time, Sasuke took a deep breath and once again pulled out his sword and rushed towards Urashiki. However, the Urashiki did not take Sasuke seriously at all and did not even bother to use the time reversal. He directly reached out and grabbed a ball of chakra from the red fish basket and held it in his hand, pushing it towards Sasuke. Zizizizi. In an instant, Urashiki's chest lit up with a blinding white light, as if there were a thousand birds chirping on the snow. After the addition of the red fish basket, Urashiki used the chakra he had extracted before to shoot a thousand times more sharp spear at Sasuke. Seeing this, Sasuke quickly stopped and used Kuzanagi's sword to block in front of him. In an instant, a powerful current enveloped Sasuke. Damn it! Only to see Urashiki with a proud smile on his face. How does it feel to be attacked by your own moves? After the electric current dispersed, he saw that Sasuke was covered in black smoke. His body swayed for a moment before he fell heavily backwards. However, he had already completely fainted. Urashiki turned his head to look at Uchiha Tunin and said in a strange tone, Ayayaya, another one was killed. Today was surprisingly smooth. Fox, you are the only one left. Uchiha Tunin did not show any expression of fear or anger. Instead, he dispersed the nine-tailed moat around him and smiled. Yes, there are only the two of us here now. Chapter 364, Urashiki Transformation at this time, a gust of cold wind blew, and a small snow floated in the sky. The soft and light snowflakes were dense. They fluttered about like jade scales falling from the sky, or like goose wings fluttering in the sky. The snow was as light as smoke, as white as silver, fluttering and fluttering. 
It fell from the sky and landed on Uchiha Tunin's head and shoulders. In the snow, Urashiki saw that Uchiha Tunin had actually dispersed his nine-tailed mode. He raised his eyebrows slightly and said, Are you preparing to give up on your fearless resistance? Don't worry, my technique of extracting foxes is very fast. I guarantee that it won't cause you too much pain. Uchiha Tunin slowly raised his hand and pulled the snow-white bandage on his eyes. He said slowly, Then I really have to thank you. It's just that my technique might not be so gentle, so I told you in advance. I'm sorry. In the next moment, Urashiki saw Uchiha Tunin pull off the bandage, revealing a pair of scarlet red and demonic kaleidoscope. Urashiki's eyes narrowed slightly, and he said in surprise, So you're not blind. You're from the same clan as that one-armed man. A snowflake fluttered down and passed by their line of sight. In the time it took for a spark to fly, Uchiha Tunin moved. Fire style, multi-phoenix immortal fire. At this moment, Uchiha Tunin was like a gatling, shooting out dense fireballs into the sky. The fireballs flew high into the sky like a rain of arrows, and then smashed toward Urashiki on the snow ground in a parabolic trajectory. The gap between these fireballs was very small, and it looked like they were connected from a distance, like a flame curtain covering the square. Facing these overwhelming fireballs, the sky and earth were covered. A hint of disdain flashed across the corner of Urashiki's mouth, and his blue renegan narrowed slightly. In a flash, he activated time reversal several times. He raised his foot and stepped forward. With every step, Urashiki would appear in the gap between the fireballs. Just like that, Urashiki walked towards Achiha Tunin amidst the dense fireballs. ZZZ Dash The fireball landed on the snow, and the terrifying high temperature instantly melted the snow. A thick white mist rose up and enveloped Urashiki. After a few breaths, Urashiki walked out of the white fog and skated. He carried the red light fishing rod on its shoulder and said disdainfully, It seems that everything is over. Please give up. I will accept the fox's chakra. Suddenly, Urashiki realized that Uchiha Tunin did not have the fear or serious expression he had imagined. He still had that unpleasant smile. Your mentality is much better than I thought. You can still laugh even when you are about to die. Although he said that, he kept calculating in his heart. Is it because he has that time-space ninjutsu, so he is not afraid of me catching him? This guy has been using ninjutsu to attack me. Other than using it to save the one-armed man, he has not used his time-space ninjutsu that is difficult to deal with. The one-armed man's clothes had his spatial medium imprinted on them, but after the battle, it should have been damaged and could no longer be used. I just don't know if there are other spatial mediums around. But it doesn't matter. As long as he dares to use it later, I can find his spatial mediums and then clean them up in one go. The plan was really perfect. As Urashiki was thinking about this, his eyes suddenly widened. Uh. Puff. A mouthful of fresh blood sprayed out from his mouth. He couldn't help but bend down and cover his chest. He frowned and said, This is... No. What's going on, my body? As soon as he finished speaking, he found that his eyes were blood red. He reached out and touched his cheek. He found that he had started to bleed from his seven orifices and his body felt a little stiff. At this time, Achiha Tunin, who was in front, said with a smile, it seems that you are just immortal. Last night, I sprinkled a special poison in the snow. The fire escape just now was just to melt the snow and then evaporate the snow into a poisonous gas. It was colorless and odorless and was hard to find. Even if one could endure it for a while, it would only take ten minutes for the whole body to be paralyzed from the poison. Urashiki vomited blood as he raised his head with difficulty to look at Uchiha Tunin. Glancing at Sasuke Uchiha not far from Uchiha Tunin, he said angrily, How could it be? Why are you all fine? As he spoke, he staggered a few steps forward. When Uchiha Tunin saw this, he silently retreated to the same distance. Since the other party had already been poisoned, 
he only needed to maintain a distance and wait for the poison to completely flare up. It would not be good if the other party risked his life and injured him. But after Achiha Tunin stopped, he spread out his hands and patiently explained, I know the ability of your eyes. When you were dodging my ninjutsu, you had already experienced it several times. You are still in the center of the poisonous gas. Therefore, the toxins accumulated in your body were hundreds of times stronger than his. As for me, Achiha Tunin deliberately spoke very slowly in order to stall for time. What was even more excessive was that he actually kept him in suspense in the end. A large pool of blood sprayed out of the wooden tube once more, and his entire body lost consciousness as he knelt on the ground. When Achiha Tunin saw this, he smiled mysteriously. Do you think I have an antidote? Urashiki trembled with anger. He shakily reached out his hand and patted the red fish basket on his waist. He roared with a ferocious expression. Damn it! A lower-level creature that is even inferior to a monkey. In an instant, numerous ninjutsu shot out from the red fish basket. Flames, lightning, rocks, water, and invisible gales. These ninjutsu simultaneously attacked towards the place where Achiha Tunin was. And the other hand of Urashiki was hidden in his sleeve, holding a black box. Achiha Tunin's expression remained unchanged, and he maintained a calm smile on his face. When the ninjutsu was about to arrive, he used Horatian no jutsu to dodge. Rumble! Ninjutsu of various attributes bombarded the same place, causing a violent explosion. At this time, Urashiki seemed to have lost its mind. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin had dodged the attack, it seemed to have raged further. He didn't care about the loss and continued to use the red light fish basket to launch all kinds of ninjutsu at Uchiha Tunin. In the face of these strengthened ordinary ninjutsu, Uchiha Tunin used the same technique again and again, continuously using Horatian no jutsu. It seemed that he had no intention of rushing up to get rid of Urashiki in one fell swoop. This also made Urashiki, who was brewing time freeze, cursed in his heart. This timid and despicable guy. One had to know that if one wanted to activate time freeze, one had to throw the black box under the opponent's feet and let the black box release time smoke to envelop the opponent. Before Urashiki traveled to this era, he used this move to freeze Atsutsuki Tonari's time in Ryugu City for 10,000 years on the moon. A moment later, Urashiki's hand left the red light fish basket and rested on the ground. The entire person seemed to be on the verge of collapse, as if he had no room to resist. But even so, Achiha Tunin was still far away from Urashiki. Seeing that the Urashiki no longer attacked, he did not forget to provoke it with words. It's over so soon? This level of attack is not enough for me to warm up. But it doesn't matter. Looking at how uncomfortable you are, I can understand. I calculated that in about ten minutes, you should lose your ability to resist. I will lock you in a cage and study what is special about your species. No, you are an alien, and your body is different from us humans. To be on the safe side, I will wait a little longer. I might as well wait for an hour. Yes, wait for another hour. Urashiki was stunned when he heard that. The hand that was holding the black box in his sleeve could not help but loosen. Damn it. One hour. I definitely can't hold on for that long. Why don't we give it a try and directly throw the precious artifact over? This time, his spatial ninjutsu was too difficult to deal with. He had to clear the area. Where was the medium? Urashiki thought quickly. Suddenly, Urashiki looked at the snow in front of him and his eyes narrowed. Yes, the space medium must be hidden in the snow. Puff, cough, cough. Achiha Tunin's strong poison made Urashiki's body sluggish. But seeing that Atsutsuki Urashiki's face was extremely ugly, he just felt that the scene in front of him became a little blurred. His body was unable to hold on any longer. I never thought that I would actually fall into the hands of such a lowly creature. What a shame. There was no other way. Now, he could only use that move. He actually forced me to this extent. In an instant, 
he made a decision and raised his head with difficulty to look at Uchiha Tunin who was far away. He saw that Uchiha Tunin was staring at him with disdain. I was mocked by a lower-level creature. No matter what, Urashiki was still an Atsutsuki. When he saw Uchiha Tunin looking at him with this look, his heart instantly exploded. He shouted, You are very good. You have successfully angered a noble Atsutsuki. Even if I don't want the fox's chakra, I will kill you. As soon as he finished speaking, Urashiki stretched out his right hand and took off the red light fish basket. His left hand grabbed the red light fishing rod on the ground and placed it in front of his mouth. These two Atsutsuki precious artifacts instantly turned into red light and were sucked into his mouth. Urashiki's body suddenly released a powerful force, and his body that had been ravaged by the poison seemed to have recovered. The whole person slowly stood up and stared at Uchiha Tunin with a cold gaze. He said coldly, It's not enough. In the next moment, Urashiki took one of his rinnegan and put it into his mouth, chewing it with a crazy expression. In an instant, a crack appeared on his forehead, revealing the golden rinnegan inside. At the same time, the moment the golden rinnegan opened, a golden circle of light appeared in front of Urashiki. Urashiki's body leaned forward and fell toward the golden circle of light. The moment the two touched, they fused together and a blinding golden light exploded. The entire world seemed to be dyed gold. Uchiha Tunin's expression froze and his eyes quickly spun. He could only see the figure in the golden light. An invisible power spread out, forcing Uchiha Tunin to be on guard. When the golden light dissipated, Urashiki had already turned into the shape of a crane. The golden renegan on his forehead opened, and his eyes turned golden. His face had black stripes, and his head had a huge horn that looked like a bird's wing. His feet had also turned into black claws. It was unknown when the snow had grown heavier and heavier. The feather-like heavy snow floated down from the sky like silver flowers and white butterflies. The large snowflakes floated in secret, as if they were woven into a white net, and the heavens and the earth merged into one. At this moment, there were no signs of poisoning in Urashiki. He stood tall in the snow and smiled cruelly at Uchiha Tunin. You forced me to do this. I have always intended to treat your world in a gentle way. After all, you will become nourishment for the divine tree in the future. But now... I want to kill all the people in this world, not leaving a single one alive. As he spoke, he pointed at Uchiha Tunin and then pointed in the direction of Baruto. But you and him have special treatment. He could survive. As for you, I will slowly torture you and then pull the fox out of your body. Facing the threat of Urashiki, Uchiha Tunin's expression did not change. He opened his hands and caught a snowflake. With an indifferent expression, he looked at the snowflake in his hand that was gradually melting. He said slowly, Like I said, if it could be easily killed by poison, then Urashiki Atsutsuki is really too weak. Fortunately, you did not disappoint me. This form is your strongest state, right? I am very satisfied with your current strange style. Being locked in a cage, it must be very ornamental. Since it was a battle, one naturally had to pursue victory. Besides strength, using words to disturb the other's mentality was also especially important. A calm opponent was the most terrifying. Sure enough, Uchiha Tunin's careless behavior and extremely insulting words ruthlessly stimulated Urashiki's dignity. Urashiki had a ferocious expression on his face. His hands instantly turned into wings and he waved them. He instantly disappeared from where he was. In fact, Uchiha Tunin had been watching Urashiki from the corner of his eye. But even so, Uchiha Tunin only vaguely saw a white shadow rushing towards him. He subconsciously used the flying thunder god and instantly appeared far away. Bang! 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 A series of explosions rang out at the same time if one did not listen carefully. In a short period of time, Uchiha Tunin did not know how many times he had used the Flying Thunder God. He only knew that every time he appeared, 
he would instinctively feel a sense of crisis before he could even see the other party's figure, urging him to use the flying thunder god. After transforming, his strength actually increased so much. This kind of speed was a bit too exaggerated. Even the kaleidoscope could only see a little bit of afterimages. Fortunately, there was the flying thunder god. Otherwise, even if he took a few hits, the unbreakable body might not be able to withstand it. The two figures seemed to have completely disappeared from this world. Under the heavy snow, the entire world was wrapped in silver. The forest, grass, and mountains around them had also turned into snow forests, snow plains, and snow mountains. In this vast white world, violent explosions occurred almost at the same time in different places. Chapter 365 Begging for Mercy Ten minutes later After the two chased and fled, the landscape with a radius of more than ten kilometers was completely devastated. Unknowingly, Achiha Tonin was chased to the edge of the forest. It is at least fifty kilometers away from Kanoa village. Suddenly, Urashiki's figure stopped suddenly, suspended in midair quietly. Achiha Tonin stopped running away immediately, stood on the spot panting, looked at Urashiki, and said with a smug smile, If you can't catch me, give up. In fact, if you think about it carefully, there is no deep hatred between you and me. As the saying goes, when it is time to repay grievances, it is better to turn hostility into friendship. From now on, you and I will not interfere with each other. If you want QB, wouldn't it be nice to go to the future to find the old Naruto? When Urashiki heard the words, a hint of sarcasm flashed across the corner of his mouth, he looked up to the sky and laughed loudly. Ha ha ha, you should do that earlier. Despicable inferior creature, today I want to let you feel the anger from Atsutsuki. Achiha Tunin's expression suddenly became angry, he clenched his fists, and said sharply, Birdman, you really think I'm afraid of you? Come if you have the ability. However, Urashiki remained motionless, raised its wings and stroked the horns on its forehead, and said with a satisfied face, Don't worry, if I come now, you really have to run for a while. Achiha Tunin was stunned when he heard the words, a look of panic flashed in his eyes, and he shouted, What do you mean? Urashiki just captured that touch of panic, and the guess in his heart became more and more certain, and he said leisurely, even if your time-space ninjutsu has a space medium, the distance of each teleportation is about one kilometer. Achiha Tonin looked stern, raised his finger and ticked Urashiki provocatively, you can try it. The more Achiha Tonin is like this, the more confident Urashiki is, and he immediately spread his wings and said in a joking tone, No, no, I've tried many times just now. There should be no mistake in calculating the distance, but this kind of space-time ninjutsu is instantaneous. As long as there is a continuous medium of space, you can move great distances in a short time. But I have been chasing you for so long, and I have found that you have been moving in this range. In other words, your spatial media are all within this range. Achiha Tunin's forehead was covered with cold sweat, and the sweat gathered on his chin along his cheeks, and then dripped one by one. His expression was calm and composed, and he sneered and said, Then, after analyzing so much, you couldn't catch me. Why don't I apologize to you, it was indeed my fault for making you feel so uncomfortable before. But after all, you are standing there safe and sound, and there are no serious consequences. I think this matter is fine, as an Atsutsuki, you should not be so stingy. Listening to Uchiha Tonin's soft voice, Urashiki only felt extreme comfort in his heart. You must know that before this, I made a fool of myself in front of this inferior creature in front of me. But this inferior creature is now driven to a desperate situation by himself, and he keeps saying soft words. This feeling of venting is really refreshing. Urashiki's rampantly laugh and said, Ha ha ha, sometimes it is also a pleasure to appreciate the ugliness of humble creatures. Do you really think that the noble Atsutsuki can't use his brain? I now have a map in my mind, and I have marked every time you appear. Encircle these points, which happens to be a circle. And you are now at the very edge of the circle. 
you have no choice but to go back. If you perform that space-time ninjutsu again, you can only approach me. With my speed, I am completely sure to attack you the moment you appear. Apart from praying that I will let you go, all you have to do is wait for me to rush to your current position so that you can just take the opportunity to escape. As soon as these words came out, Achiha Tunin's eyes showed a thick look of horror, he couldn't help but staggered back a few steps and said in a stern voice, I do not understand what you are saying. It's as if you guessed it right. Stupid bird people. Facing Achiha Tunin's insults, Urashiki was not angry at all, but became more relaxed. He stared at Achiha Tunin below with pitiful eyes and said leisurely, You want to irritate me and force me to rush over now. It's a pity that I'm not as reckless as other Atsutsuki. Wisdom is my first weapon. As he said that, Urashiki's wings turned into hands and slowly spread out. The stature is also gradually increasing in height. Fear and tremble, lowly creature. I will let you feel the power of being close to the gods before you die. No, for inferior creatures like you. Atsutsuki is god. The golden renegade on Urashiki's forehead glowing with dazzling golden light and a terrifying chakra wave burst out instantly. Shinra Tensei. Boom! The overwhelming repulsive force burst out centered on Urashiki. The billowing snow mixed with mud and rocks rushed towards the surroundings. The surrounding mountain peaks were disintegrated into debris in an instant. The repulsive force was accompanied by the dazzling golden light, which dyed the whole world golden. Achiha Tunin's small figure was quickly submerged by the golden light. At the same time, in Kanoha village, Haruzen Saritobi, who was arguing with Danzo in Hokage's office, was startled suddenly and said in surprise. What an amazing chakra fluctuation. The next moment, Haruzen Saritobi suddenly disappeared and appeared on the top of the Hokage building. Looking up into the distance, he murmured. It's in that direction. As soon as the voice fell, a blue-purple barrier rose around Kanoha, enveloping the entire Kanoha village. Swoosh, swish, swish. Several black shadows appeared behind Haruz and Saratobi. It was Danzo and his subordinates, as well as the shadow guard who was responsible for the safety of Saratobi Haruzen. Of course, there is also an Umbu team leader among them, but Haruz and Saratobi doesn't know him, so it's just that this Umbu happened to be performing a mission nearby. But seeing Danzo said solemnly, Haruzen, do you know what happened? Saratobi Haruzen shook his head, glanced at the increasingly solid barrier above his head, then nodded to Danzo with satisfaction and said, You did a good job. Unexpectedly, Danzo shook his head and said, Now Kanoha is still under martial law. It should be that the sealer class is ready to open the defensive barrier at any time to deal with Uchiha Madara's coming again. It's not an order I issued. The Umbu squad leader next to him immediately explained, this is an order from Lord Tunin. Haruzen Saratobi heard the words, nodded suddenly and said, Tunin's reaction is much faster than those of us old guys. Then he told the rest of the shadow guards, Notify the ninjas to prepare for battle and be ready to go out of the village to meet the enemy at any time. At the same time, evacuate the villagers to the shelter. Yes. At this moment, the Umbu team leader said, Master Hokage, Lord Tunin has an order that no one is allowed to leave the village until he sends a signal. Haruzen Saratobi was taken aback when he heard the words, and said in a deep voice, Is Tunin fighting the enemy? Danzo shouted angrily. It's ridiculous, as a Nine-Tails Jinchuriki, how could he take risks alone? Once something happened to Nine-Tails, how could he be worthy of the village? I suggest to quickly organize people out of the village to support Uchiha Tunin. Haruzen Saratobi took a deep breath and immediately said decisively, Listen to Tunin. Danzo was stunned when he heard the words, looked at Saratobi Haruzen with disbelief and said, Hiruzen, you. That's QB. But seeing Haruzen Saratobi's serious face, he looked at several shadow guards and said in a deep voice, What are you doing here? Go and evacuate the villagers. All ninjas are not allowed to leave the village. Yes. Several shadow guards responded, 
and activated the teleportation technique to notify various departments. After the shadow guard left, Hiruz and Saratobi turned around and faced the direction where the chakra fluctuations appeared, looked into the sky and murmured. We have to trust Tunin. Since he chose the battlefield outside the village, it was to protect the village. At this time, the decision-making of the village must be unified. If he said that we could not leave the village, we could not leave the village. Danzo still wanted to say something, but the words got stuck in his throat and he couldn't say anything. Thousands of words turned into one sentence, Hiruzen, you are the Hokage. Hiruzen Saratobi drew a warm smile at the corner of his mouth, looked sideways at Danzo, his eyes were unprecedentedly clear, and said lightly, Everything is for Kanoha. Humph! Danzo flicked his sleeves and turned around, turned his back to Hiruzen Saratobi, and shouted to the root ninjas in front of him. Order all the ninjas at the root to assist me in the sealer class. Yes. Several root ninjas responded in unison, activated the body flicker technique and left. Seeing this, Hiruzen Saratobi felt a little moved in his heart for some reason. This old buddy, who had been competing with him all the time, chose to support his decision at a critical moment. Even if it is possible that this decision is wrong. Hiruzen Saratobi took a puff of cigarette happily, stared at the back of Danzo who seemed to be angry, and said softly, Thanks. Danzo turned his head and said angrily, After this time, the sealer class will be handed over to me. Hiruzen Saratobi almost choked on the smoke, but finally nodded. Somewhere in a resident's home. The husband and wife are sitting in front of the newly bought square computer with a look of novelty on their faces. But seeing her husband stretch out a finger and tap a few times on the keyboard. Immediately, the popular idol drama of Snow Country was played on the computer screen. Just when the hero and heroine in the idol drama are about to kiss. Suddenly, the entire computer began to shake slightly. The husband frowned when he saw this and said with a puzzled look, It's strange, why does the computer imported from the land of thunder keep shaking? You touch and see. The wife immediately stretched out her hand and put it on the computer and said with a look of surprise. Really, this square box is amazing, it shakes like my new washing machine. But this thing should not shake, is there something wrong? The husband reached out and touched his chin, thinking thoughtfully. From my experience, it should be a legendary virus that made the computer sick. The wife nodded suddenly when she heard the words and looked at her husband with adoring eyes. At this moment, the shouts of their children sounded outside the house. Mom and Dad, Come out and see, there is so much snow outside. Okay, we got it. The husband replied perfunctorily, and then he still thought about the repairing the computer. In just a few seconds, the vibration became more intense, and the tables, chairs, and benches in the room began to shake wildly. The two looked at each other and immediately understood what happened. There's an earthquake, run! The husband yelled, and the couple instinctively ran towards the balcony, preparing to drag the children who were playing on the balcony away together. However, when the two ran out to the balcony, they were shocked by the scenery in front of them. Is this the end of the world? They saw that the entire Kanoha was covered by a blue-purple barrier. However, the distant sky has been covered by thick snow and dust, and even the sun has disappeared. What is even more frightening is that there are billowing snow waves tens of meters high that are swarming towards Kanoha. Just when the family of three was still in a daze, a black shadow landed on the balcony, picked up the child and disappeared in an instant. The husband and wife came to their senses, and they heard shouts from all directions in their ears. Quick, everyone go to the shelter. Ninjas without missions take the children first. Emergency, the whole village is on alert. If you don't have time to leave, find a suitable place to hide. On the roof of the Hokage building, Saratobi Hiruzen and Danzo stood side by side, watching the snowstorm getting closer and closer to Kanoha. But seeing Saratobi Hiruzen who didn't know when the tobacco rod in his hand had been replaced with a staff, he said solemnly, Danzo, do you think the sealer class can hold it? Danzo's eyes froze when he heard the words, 
thinking of the special ninjas newly added to Jinba recently, and said calmly, Don't worry, all the ninjas at the root have gone. With their help to provide chakra, the barrier should be enough to withstand this level of disaster. Saratobi Hiruzen was still a little worried, turned his head to look at Captain Umbu who had been kneeling on the ground behind him, and said in a deep voice, Do you know who the enemy is this time, and how far the battlefield is from Kanoha? The Umbu team leader kept in mind Uchiha Tunin's previous instructions, knew what to say and what not to say, thought for a while, bowed his head and replied, Master Tunin didn't tell us who the enemy is, but just moved to the place a few days in advance. Stationed outside the village. The location where Master Tunin is stationed is about 30 kilometers away from Kanoha. Danzo heard the words, looked up at the rolling snowstorm, and said in disbelief, How is it possible, if the distance is really so far? What a powerful enemy it must be to cause such a movement. Even if Uchiha Madara and Senju Hashirama join forces, I'm afraid it can't be done. Saratobi Hiruzen shook the hand holding the staff, raised his head to stare at the oncoming snowstorm, and murmured. Perhaps the battle location shifted towards Kanoha. But even so, it is not something ordinary ninjas can do to make such a movement. What kind of enemy is it? Could it be that Madara Uchiha is making a comeback? However, what they didn't know was that the distance that the Umbu team leader told them was the distance from Uchiha Tunin Cabin to Kanoha. It is not the distance of the real battlefield. Hiruz and Saratobi guessed half right, the battlefield has indeed shifted. It's just the opposite of Saratobi Hiruzen's guess. Chapter 366 Kanoha in Crisis Rumble The sound of thunder was getting louder and louder. The raging snowstorm was like an army of thousands of men and horses rushing toward Kanoha while shouting and screaming. The mountains and rivers on the way could only slow down the momentum of the snowstorm, and they were swallowed up by the snowstorm in an instant. Most people could not do anything at this time. They could only quietly watch the snowstorm, praying that the barrier above their heads could block it. As the snowstorm got closer and closer, Hiruz and Saratobi's expression became serious. He quickly formed a seal and held the diamond scepter in his hand, ready to fight. As long as the barrier could not withstand it and shattered, Hiruz and Saratobi would immediately use a large-scale compound ninjutsu to resist the snowstorm. However, Hiruz and Saratobi also knew in his heart that in the face of such a disaster, one person's strength was far from enough. He was only a ninja, not a biju, at most he could protect the surrounding several hundred meters. Boom. The snowstorm that was pushing forward heavily hit the blue-purple barrier. It was like a surging wave meeting a tenacious reef, directly flowing through the barrier. Even when the people inside the barrier raised their heads, they could see the snowstorm wrapping around the trees and gravel. Soon, the snowstorm had passed through Kanoha and continued to run into the distance. The entire Kanoha was shrouded in darkness because of this, covered by the flowing snowstorm. Only the barrier continued to emit a blue-purple light. Hiruz and Saratobi looked up at this scene and breathed a sigh of relief. It seems that everything is fine. The current barrier can withstand the weight of the snow. Danzo shook his head and said, The solid barrier has cut off the internal and external connection. It will be a big problem to get rid of the snow. Hiruz and Saratobi smiled. With an optimistic smile on his face, he said, it doesn't matter. As long as the sun comes out, the snow will naturally melt. We only need to send enough ninjas to transfer chakra into the barrier. If it really doesn't work, then let Saratobi clan and Uchiha clan's ninjas take turns to release fire to heat it up. Danzo nodded slightly, right now, we only need to wait here for news from Tunin. After saying this, the two stood side by side, looking at the barrier above them in a daze. After a long time, the blue-purple barrier flashed like an old light bulb. The smile on Haruz and Saratobi's face instantly froze. He stared at the barrier with wide eyes and said with a serious face, Something is wrong. The barrier seems to be unable to hold on. Danzo was full of confidence in the barrier. Seeing that Haruz and Saratobi was worried, he could not help but snort. It was just a flash, 
how could it not be able to hold on? Just now, perhaps they were changing shifts, causing the chakra maintaining the barrier to temporarily stagnate. This kind of disaster only needs. As he spoke, the barrier suddenly flashed quickly. Danzo stopped talking and exclaimed, How is this possible? At the same time, a root ninja appeared behind Danzo and panted. Lord Danzo, something seems to be eating away at the barrier. The consumption of chakra is too fast, we can't support it anymore. Hiruzen Saratobi hurriedly waved his hand and shouted, Quick, order all Kanoha ninjas to go and support. Yes. The root ninja lowered his head and immediately went to inform the other Kanoha ninjas. How could this be? Danzo really couldn't understand why Kanoha's barrier was having such a difficulty to resist this kind of ordinary snow. No matter how he looked at it, the snow was just ordinary, nothing unusual. I didn't see anything special. How could the barrier be eaten away? Hiruzen Saratobi, who was beside him, stared at the snow that was gradually slowing down. He suddenly thought of something and squatted down to hold the snow in his hand. He muttered. Maybe there is something wrong with the snow. Danzo raised his eyebrows slightly and said in a low voice, Hiruzen, you are thinking too much. Most of the snow was accumulated last night. How could there be a problem? Hiruzen Saratobi thought about it carefully. In order to confirm his guess, he immediately formed a seal with his hands and spat out a fireball toward the snow on the ground. Sizzle. The snow quickly melted, and the rising white smoke quickly enveloped the two of them. The faces of the two veteran ninjas instantly became serious, and they both used the body flicker technique to appear on top of the house in the distance. Danzo said angrily, Someone poisoned the snow. If I guessed correctly, he sent the poison into the cloud last night with a special method. Is this a method to poison the entire Kanoha? What a cruel method! Hiruzen Saratobi's eyes were serious, and he sighed heavily. This kind of sinister method should be set up by the enemy who is fighting with Tunin now. And from the looks of it, this poison is especially effective against Chakra. It seems like Kanoha might not be able to hold on. At this time, on the battlefield more than 50 kilometers away, Urashiki had already stopped Shinra Tensei. The blinding golden light had already dissipated. The forest, mountains, and rivers in a radius of more than 10 kilometers had all disappeared. Only a huge circular pit was left. The melted snow around the pit continued to gather into streams that flowed into the pit, gradually forming a small lake. Urashiki looked at Uchiha Tunin who was floating on the lake with surprise in his eyes. He said slowly, You really surprise me. I didn't expect that you would hide your body in a different space to avoid the damage in reality. In this era, do many people know this kind of time-space ninjutsu? At this moment, Achiha Tunin's entire body was drenched in sweat. His legs were trembling non-stop, and his face was filled with shock. He trembled as he said, This. Is this really something that humans can achieve? Impossible. It's impossible. When he saw Uchiha Tunin's reaction, he was extremely satisfied. He smiled and said, The power of Atsutsuki is not something that you lowly creatures can understand. I admit that I was a little careless at the beginning, which is why I was in such a sorry state because of you. However, as long as I am serious, killing you is no different from killing ants. Speaking of this, Urashiki felt that it was not enough to vent his anger, and he began to threaten Uchiha Tunin, saying in a cold tone, Now, there is no medium for you in the vicinity. Be careful, maybe in the blink of an eye, I will appear in front of you now. Of course, you can also use your time-time-space ninjutsu to hide in a different space. However, if you are connected to another space for a long time, I will be able to capture the coordinates of time and space. Uchiha Tunin shook his head in disbelief. No! All of this is fake. How can there be such a powerful person in this world? I clearly have the strongest talent in this world, yet I still work so hard, never slacking off for a day and night. Why can you be so much stronger than me? 
As Uchiha Tunin spoke, his expression gradually became deranged, as if his original firm will have been destroyed by this great move of Urashiki. When Urashiki saw this, his heart fluttered, and he said in a high and mighty tone, Although it is a bit cruel, this world is originally like this. The results of a race that had existed for thousands of years could not be surpassed by individual effort. The talent that you humans speak of is nothing more than a joke in my eyes. A joke! Uchiha Tunin muttered in a daze. Suddenly, a neurotic smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face. He said in a certain tone, Yes! Illusion, it must be an illusion. Everything just now was fake. I am the strongest, I am the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. After saying that, Uchiha Tunin quickly formed a seal with both hands and spat at Urashiki in the sky. Fire release, Grand Flame Destruction The surging sea of fire illuminated the surrounding scenery in a fiery red color, enveloping Urashiki in the sky. However, when Urashiki was faced with this exaggerated fire release, a hint of contempt flashed in his eyes. He immediately opened his mouth and sucked in the sea of flames below. Urashiki's mouth was like a bottomless abyss with a huge suction force. In just a few breaths, he had sucked the sea of flames into his mouth. After he finished sucking, he even closed his eyes and savored it. He said slowly, This level of chakra is considered the top among the inferior creatures I have seen. However, if it is just a ninjutsu, then it is just my food. After saying that, he slowly opened his eyes and used an indifferent gaze to look at Uchiha Tunin, who was shaking like a sieve, and said, I have to say that your chakra taste is really good. Do you still want to struggle? If you kneel down and admit your mistakes and repent, I can consider letting you die without the pain. Uchiha Tunin's hands were still in the form of hand seals. His mouth was wide open, and his eyes were filled with despair. He muttered. He even ate. Ninjutsu. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw Uchiha Tunin kneeling powerlessly on the surface of the water. Looking at the miserable reflection in the water, his lips trembled as he muttered in a low voice. There is still a chance. There must be a chance. If I can't use fire style, then I will use water. After saying that, Uchiha Tunin's eyes flashed with the last trace of hope, and he knelt on the surface of the water and began to form seals. Urashiki acutely noticed that Uchiha Tunin's hand that was forming seals was trembling wildly. He actually still hadn't completely lost confidence. The more you struggle, the more I want you to understand what despair is. He didn't even notice that Urashiki at this time, he had already placed the matter of collecting the Ninetail Chakra in the second place. Subconsciously, he wanted to torture this inferior creature in front of him who made him look ugly. Uchiha Tunin's seal took a few seconds to complete. He shouted with a hoarse voice. Water release, Whirlpool Water Blade. The small lake at the bottom of the sinkhole instantly rolled up, and a high-speed rotating water column smashed toward Urashiki. Urashiki slowly raised his hand, ready to launch the small Shinra Tensei to break Uchiha Tunin's Whirlpool Water Blade. After all, water escape was a physical attack, and it was completely different from the heat attack of fire escape. Especially in such a large amount, if he rashly absorbed ninjutsu with his mouth, he was afraid that it would have a certain impact on his body. However, just as the great Urashiki was about to activate the Shinra Tensei, he glanced at Uchiha Tunin, who was kneeling on the ground. He saw that Uchiha Tunin's hands were already clasped together, as if he was praying. Urashiki also easily read Uchiha Tunin's eyes that were filled with apprehension, despair, fear, and a trace of hope. Is this your last struggle? Then let me completely sever your hope. Urashiki moved his hand and his mouth opened slightly. In the next moment, Urashiki moved like a giant whale in the deep sea, sucking the whirlpool water blade into his mouth in one breath. To be honest, the strong impact of the whirlpool water blade made Urashiki feel a little uncomfortable. Especially his mouth was a little stuffed, mixed with a trace of burning pain. However, in order to show off, Urashiki still maintained a relaxed and satisfied expression. He said indifferently, I'm just a little thirsty. Burp. 
After finishing speaking, he took a break just right, then licked his lips unsatisfied, lowered his head and looked at Uchiha Tunin and said, Just this much? Suddenly, Urashiki blinked and suspected that he had seen wrongly. At this time, Uchiha Tunin had already stood up. He did not have the expression of despair and fear he had imagined. Instead, he looked at Urashiki with a concerned look. Hmm? Could it be that I used too much strength to scare this guy to the point that he went crazy? That would be boring. However, he saw that Uchiha Tunin's brows were gradually wrinkled and asked in a concerned tone. Are you all right? It was as if the relationship between the two of them was very good. Urashiki tilted his head and muttered. This guy seems really crazy, and he feels dull in an instant. Suddenly, Urashiki felt a familiar pain in his body, and his eyes widened. Eh. Pooh. A large mouthful of blood spurted out from Urashiki as blood flowed out from his seven orifices. The entire person bent down and looked at his hands in disbelief. His entire vision gradually turned bright red as he muttered. Why? What is going on? My body. As he said that, Urashiki reacted. He glared at Uchiha Tunin and said hatefully, This is the poison from before. Despicable. Before he finished speaking, Urashiki quickly opened his mouth. The rapid water gushed out from his mouth and smashed into the pit like a waterfall. At the same time, Uchiha Tunin looked at Urashiki in disbelief and said, I have seen stupid people, but I have never seen someone as stupid as you. There are actually people who are so proud that they will fall down in the same place twice. I told you that I put special poison in the snow. This water would not appear out of thin air, it was obviously formed after the snow melted. Even Jinan, who had just graduated from the ninja school, could quickly see that there was something wrong with this water. There was so much poisonous water, even I was a little scared when I stood on the top. In the end, you drank it all in one gulp. Bastard. Urashiki roared in anger, then continued to bend down and vomit. It's useless. When these toxins enter your body, they will automatically entangle with your chakra. What's the use of spitting water? It's better to disperse all the chakra in your body. Although your body has become very powerful, you still can't escape the boundaries of living things, and you are still flesh and blood. A quantitative change causes a qualitative change. Even if there are too many beneficial things, it will cause serious damage to the body, let alone poison. As Uchiha Tunin spoke, he took out the bandage he had taken from his pocket and gently wrapped it around his eyes. After all, the current Urashiki had completely fallen into the pit, and there was no need for Uchiha Tunin to use all his strength. This bandage was indeed taken a bit too carelessly. Chapter 367 Sealing Urashiki After Uchiha Tunin tied up the bandage, the corners of his mouth curled into an inexplicable smile. He raised his head and said softly, Emotions are the common characteristic of intelligent creatures. They are superior to instincts, but they are still instinctive. Creatures that can be controlled by emotions are not worthy of being called gods. After that, Uchiha Tunin lightly raised his foot and stomped on the ground. He said indifferently, Enjoy the welcoming ceremony I prepared for you. My new pet. Rumble. The earth in the pit kept rolling, and numerous stone dragons broke out of the pit. Above the heads of these stone dragons, there was a dark black iron plate with a metallic luster, and the surface of the iron plate was embedded with bright silver lines. The lines were complex, combining together to form a mysterious jutsu. Countless stone dragons intertwined together to form a stone column that stood in the center of the hole. On the top of the column, the dark black iron plates were tightly intertwined, forming a square platform. From a distance, this column looked like a tree trunk of tens of thousands of years old, and the platform was like a pitch-black crown. At this time, Urashiki was covered in blood, and his appearance was terrible. But now, he seemed to have lost his mind and had no intention of escaping. Instead, he looked at Uchiha Tunin below with a ferocious expression, like a devil returning from hell, and gnashed his teeth. You actually want to capture me as a pet. 
a lowly inferior creature. This is simply unforgivable. As soon as Urashiki finished speaking, a dark purple energy ball began to gather in his palm. However, because of the toxins in his body, the gathering speed of this energy ball was extremely slow for the two people present. And the power emanating from this energy ball. It was indeed a bit ordinary. Seeing this, the corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He said softly, stupid. He immediately flashed and appeared in the center of the platform. He put up a single hand seal, then spread his five fingers and slapped the surface of the platform. At the same time, the indifferent voice of Uchiha Tunin resounded from the tail beast's space. Chakra the ears of Ninetales lying on the ground stood up immediately, and at the same time the hair all over its body stands up, it shrank its body towards the dragon pillar, and nodded repeatedly. It obediently released its own chakra. In the outside world. In an instant, the seemingly endless amount of Kubi chakra within Uchiha Tunin's body continuously poured into the platform. The bright silver lines on these iron plates suddenly lit up with multicolored light, and a multicolored barrier rose, wrapping everything around it. Urashiki was still bleeding while gathering the energy ball in his hand with difficulty. Seeing the multicolored barrier rising around him, he heavily spat out a mouthful of blood and coughed. Cough. Sealing technique. He. Naive. The sealing technique studied by the inferior creatures also wants to seal the noble Atsutsuki. Laughable. Achiha Tunin, who was below, seemed to be very confident in this five-colored barrier. With a confident appearance, he said lightly, The possibility of ordinary sealing techniques sealing you is indeed very low. Therefore, every alloy board here represents a sealing technique that I know of. Moreover, in order to maximize the effect of the sealing technique, the materials used to draw the technique were very rare. This is all thanks to my position as the Minister of Logistics in Kanoha. Otherwise, it would not be easy to buy so many materials. With so many sealing techniques, I believe there will be one suitable for you. The eyes of Urashiki opened and closed, and even his body slightly shook. He looked like he was going to die, as if he was going to die from the poison. After several breaths, he suddenly shook his head, gathered his spirits, and said weakly, It seems that you have prepared a lot to deal with me. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up into a proud smile. He reached out his hand and pointed at Urashiki that was still suspended in the air. Seeing that I value you so much, hurry up and kneel down to me. This way, you can suffer less physical pain. When he heard this, his entire body trembled. Even the basketball-sized dark purple energy ball in his hand flickered slightly as if it was expressing its master's anger. He saw that his lips were trembling non-stop, and he said weakly, Dignity. Don't kneel. Achiha Tunin smiled and shook his head. He said softly, Dignity is actually not expensive. My patience is limited. I'll give you ten seconds to think about it. How about it? I'm a generous person. After saying that, he saw Uchiha Tunin standing with his hands behind his back, quietly watching Urashiki. Time passed by bit by bit. The state of Urashiki looked even more miserable, making people feel that he would fall in the next second, but strangely, he used his willpower to support himself. Just as the tenth second arrived, the crooked Urashiki let out a cold laugh. Humph, ha ha ha. There isn't much time left. Urashiki suddenly straightened up, and his eight apertures stopped bleeding. The whole person looked energetic, and there was no sign of being poisoned. The dark purple energy ball held in his right hand was growing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Do you really think that victory is within your grasp? The body that I transformed into is not as fragile as you think. I admit that this poison is very powerful, but as long as I have time, I can slowly recover to my original state. The foundation of the Atsutsuki is not something you can imagine. A race that constantly evolves in the endless years and months, born with a terrifying adaptability. I don't need to remove this poison. I just need to adapt to them. This is also why I didn't run away immediately. I was actually stalling for time just now. 
Didn't expect it, huh? As he said this, he raised his right hand high up. The dark purple energy ball had already become the size of a mountain, emitting a terrifying might. Urashiki gazed at Uchiha Tunin below him, only to see that the other party still maintained a faint smile, not showing any expression of anger or fear. Immediately, his eyes narrowed slightly, and he said coldly, It seems that you are very confident in the so-called sealing technique or the time-space ninjutsu you have. Do you really think that you will not die after this move of mine? But he saw Uchiha Tunin lightly shake his head, lightly saying, You only have one chance. I hope you can seize it. I sincerely tell you that the power of this move is far from enough. Is that so? Then I will satisfy you. Urashiki did not get angry. He opened his other hand. A black box with purple light was lying on the surface of his palm. Urashiki immediately opened his mouth and sucked. The black box immediately turned into purple light and flowed into his mouth. In an instant, the energy ball above Urashiki quickly increased several times, almost touching the edge of the barrier. The expression of Urashiki became crazy. The hand holding the dark purple energy ball waved heavily at Uchiha Tunin below and roared. This attack, I will take back everything I have lost. Die for me. Aim no Subaru Bashi no Makoto, Kyako. The energy ball that was almost the size of the pit directly smashed at Uchiha Tunin. At this time, Uchiha Tunin was as small as a speck of dust in front of the energy ball that was about to arrive. However, Uchiha Tunin's expression did not change from beginning to end. He maintained a faint smile. Just as the ball was about to fall into the hole, the smile on Uchiha Tunin's lips became wider. He said softly, There is not much time difference. In the next moment, the colorful barrier around them suddenly disappeared like a phantom. At the same time, thick black smoke surged up from the platform, and dense black chains sprang out from the iron plates. A small part of it attacked the energy ball, while the rest of the chains scattered in an arc. When the black chains touched the energy ball, there was no explosion as expected. These black chains were like snakes, wrapping around the dark purple energy ball in the blink of an eye. After the chains wrapped around the energy ball, the energy ball stopped moving forward. From a distance, it looked like a black iron ball quietly floating in the air. In the next moment, the black iron ball seemed to have become a heart, rising and shrinking. With every expansion and contraction, the size of the black iron ball would shrink by several times. After several contractions, the black iron ball seemed to have shrunk to a certain boundary value. Finally, the black chains retreated back into the black smoke on the flat stage and the originally huge energy ball had disappeared without a trace, just like this, it disappeared without a trace. When Urashiki that was floating in the air saw this, its pupils suddenly shrank, and it cried out, How is this possible? At this moment, the black chains that had scattered in the surroundings had already gathered together above Urashiki. The sealing power on the chains was perfectly connected, forming a new black barrier. Urashiki did not pay attention to the black chains just now, but was concerned about whether the big move he released could kill the inferior creature in front of him at once. It was not until the black barrier rose that he reacted. His heart palpitated, and he hurriedly used Yamatsu Hirasaka. He was ready to escape. At this time, Uchiha Tunin's seal was completely formed. He immediately spread his hands and looked at Urashiki, who was sweating and trying to release Yamatsu Hirasaka. He shook his head and said, There's no other way. After this supercomposite seal is activated, I still need some time to control and adjust them. Only then can I reach a stable state. Every chain you see contains tens of thousands of sealing powers. As for the multicolored barrier just now, other than looking good, it has no effect at all. That's the truth. As he listened to Uchiha Tunin's words, his heart gradually sank. He quietly swallowed his saliva and said fiercely, Time and space have been sealed. Uchiha Tunin's killing move had already been formed. Naturally, he was too lazy to dawdle with him. He immediately controlled the entire black barrier to shrink. 
While the black barrier was shrinking, tiny black chains were constantly gushing out from the barrier towards Urashiki. When Urashiki saw the chains coming towards him, he instinctively wanted to dodge. But he found that even if he moved his fingers, he could feel the overwhelming pressure around him. Moreover, as the black barrier continued to shrink, the pressure became increasingly stronger. In an instant, tiny chains had already wrapped Urashiki into a dumpling, leaving only a mouth that was still exposed. At this time, Urashiki was still unwilling to give up, struggling desperately and screaming. Damn it! Break for me! Ah! As the last chain sealed Urashiki's mouth, the roar also stopped abruptly. When Uchiha Tunin saw this scene, he shook his head and said, You don't even know how to run away and counteranalyze after you see such a big battle. A stupid creature affected by emotions. After saying that, he took a step back and instantly passed through the black barrier and appeared outside. With his hands behind his back, he quietly watched the black spherical barrier in the air that was getting smaller and smaller. He said softly, these sealing chains contain countless sealing powers. From now on, if there is no gift from me, your vision, hearing, smell, touch, taste, taste, chakra, body, and soul, even thoughts, emotions, and other things that were real or intangible would be completely sealed. I will forever keep you in my space for my research. As soon as he finished speaking, the spherical black barrier did not shrink and quietly floated in the air. The left eye under Achiha Tunin's bandage turned into a Kamui kaleidoscope, aimed at the spherical black barrier and unleashed Kamui. A spatial vortex appeared and sucked the spherical black barrier into it. Crack! The sound of porcelain shattering rang out in succession. Achiha Tunin's eyes were slightly lowered under the bandages. The black smoke on the flat platform gradually dissipated, revealing pieces of cracked iron plates. After all, these iron plates were not completely made of high-quality chakra metal, so naturally they could not withstand the chakra of Uchiha Tunin. However, Uchiha Tunin did not feel any heartache about the loss of these things. In any case, he did not spend his own money. Uchiha Tunin glanced sideways at Kanoha and murmured, It's time to clean up the mess. Then, he raised his right hand high and pointed his index finger at the sky. A wind raising hand suddenly condensed on his index finger. Achiha Tunin's expression was indifferent. His lips moved slightly, and he said softly, bang. In an instant, the wind raising hand shot into the clouds. As the wind raising hand shot in, the dark clouds began to spin. In the next moment, these dark clouds suddenly spread out in all directions, revealing the blue sky. As the dark clouds went away, soft sunlight sprinkled on the earth. The moment the sunlight appeared, some substances turned into strands of gas that were invisible to the naked eye and rose up. Everything has flaws. Achiha Tunin's special chakra poison also has flaws, that is, it is weak to sunlight. Even if someone has been poisoned by chakra poison, as long as they are under the sunlight, they will immediately recover. I have not thought of a suitable way to change it in the beginning. Let's finish this small plot first. Chapter 368 Crisis Averted In the dim Kanoha village, most of the ordinary civilians had already been arranged into the underground fallout shelter. Of course, the ninja clan had their own fallout shelters, so they naturally wouldn't be with the civilians. On the streets, from time to time, the recently graduated Jinin would shout the latest order from the Hokage building. These Jinin did not have enough chakra, so they could not provide effective help to the barrier. They did not know the layout of Kanoha, so they were not suitable for the task of evacuating civilians. They could only help run errands and shout. The Hataki clan. Kakashi was sitting in his seat, quietly watching the two little guys doing their homework. After all, as the head of the clan, it was his duty to educate the younger generation. However, the two little guys did not dare to raise their heads. They sat on their knees in front of the table and practiced calligraphy with their pins. In the ninja realm, children who wanted to learn to read were generally taught by their elders. The ninja school would not spend the time to teach these things. 
generally, children would pass the exam at the age of five or six and enter the ninja school. Therefore, those basic things would start to study when they were one or two years old. There was no other way, the ninja world had always been like this. It had to be said that Kakashi was not always dignified in front of children. Especially with a cold face at any time, this made E and Yanba feel fear for this clan leader. Quick, emergency notice, all Kanoha ninjas go to the sealed class to help maintain the operation of the barrier. An anxious shout came from the street outside the courtyard. Kakashi frowned slightly when he heard this. It seems that the situation has become serious. Isn't it just a natural disaster? He immediately got up and went to the wall to remove his white fong. He ordered the two little guys, I'll go out first. You guys do your homework at home. The two little guys widened their eyes and nodded at Kakashi. Okay. Kakashi nodded slightly and hung his white fawn on his back. He passed by the courtyard and came to the gate. Mr. Kakashi, as the captain of the umbu, do you also need to go? When Kakashi heard this, he turned around to look. He saw Hataki Do standing in the corridor with a tea tray. Kakashi raised the mask on his face and said in a lazy tone, The umbu is also a Kanoha ninja. Tunin said that the position only represents the difference in our work, but it does not mean that we are superior in other aspects. Do smiled slightly and said in an inexplicable tone, Mr. Kakashi, I hope that you will protect yourself at all times. The clansmen need your protection. Kakashi was stunned for a moment. He glanced at the room that had just walked out and turned to push open the door. Don't spoil E too much. In the end, people have to rely on themselves. No one can protect anyone forever. After saying that, he walked out of the courtyard and closed the courtyard door. Looking at the tightly closed gate of the courtyard, Doe's lips moved slightly as he muttered. There are. The moment the gate closed, the two little fellows in the room who were immersed in practicing calligraphy immediately cheered. Yes, Lord Clan Leader has left. We can play. At this moment, he saw Doe walk in with a tea tray and immediately said with a face full of joy. Do you want to play Doe? Doe gently put down the tea tray and looked at E with a smile. No, I'll let you go. In the depths of Kanoha's barrier class. At this time, a group of Kanoha's higher-ups had gathered here. A large number of Kanoha ninjas took turns under the finger of the monitor, injecting chakra into the barrier. Under the corrosion of the chakra poison, an average group of people could only last for about five minutes. At this moment, an umbu came to the front of Haruzen Saratobi and knelt on one knee. Hokage-sama, the snow on the barrier surface has begun to melt. Hearing this, Haruzen Saratobi frowned and kept smoking. Danzo's face was ugly. Damn, once the poison enters the water, the contact with the barrier will increase. Haruzen Saratobi exhaled a long breath of smoke and said in a low voice, What did the medical department say? The umbu replied in a deep voice. The medical department ninja said that they have never seen the principle of this poison. If they want to develop the antidote, it will take a long time. However, through experiments, they found that this poison will not kill, and the most serious will only paralyze people. The more chakra there is, the stronger the paralysis effect will be. Won't die. That's good news. At least those civilians will be fine. Haruzen Saratobi was relieved. He glanced at Danzo who still had an ugly expression on his face. He patted Danzo on the shoulder and said, The ninjas in this round are not bad. They actually lasted for so long and still haven't exhausted themselves. If I remember correctly, there are a few of your newly recruited root ninjas here. It seems that all the good seedlings of the new generation of Kanoha have been taken by you. Although Haruzen Saratobi's words were simply to ease the dignified atmosphere. But after Danzo heard this, he was slightly stunned. He smiled stiffly and shook his head. What good seedlings! They are all commoners, and they are not young anymore. At this moment, the monitor of the sealer class suddenly shouted in surprise. Hokage-sama, the consumption of the barrier has returned to normal. 
Hearing this, Hiruzen Saratobi raised his eyebrows and said in disbelief, What's going on? Is the poison no longer eroding the barrier? The leader immediately made a seal and communicated with Kanoha's barrier to sense it. Her face was full of excitement, the poison seems to have completely disappeared. Hiruzen Saratobi narrowed his eyes and muttered, It's too strange. Danzo pondered for a moment and said in a low voice, Could it be that the shelf life of this poison is relatively short? Hiruzen Saratobi shook his head and looked up at the ceiling. His gaze seemed to be able to see the world beyond the ceiling. He muttered, It is possible that this is the poison released by some kind of ninjutsu. If I am not wrong, Tunin defeated the opponent. At this time, the battlefield was full of devastation. Dressed in a black coat, Achiha Tunin walked leisurely on the snow. However, there was not a single footprint left in his path. After the snowstorm, the nearby forest had completely disappeared. The nearby trees were all covered by a thick layer of snow. When Uchiha Tunin arrived not far from the original cabin, he immediately saw Baruto and Sasuke who were lying in the snow. The position of Baruto had changed, and it should have been pushed a distance away by the snowstorm. But the position of Sasuke was still in the same place. But Uchiha Tunin's expression did not change, he bent over to put Baruto on his shoulder and then stopped in front of Sasuke. The eyes under the bandage gradually narrowed. The breathing of Uchiha Sasuke in front of him was very weak, as if he would die after lying in the snow for a while. However, how could such a clumsy disguise escape Uchiha Tunin's eyes? Although Uchiha Tunin could not see if Uchiha Sasuke was really unconscious at this moment. However, the snowstorm had already buried those big trees, it was too illogical for them to not bury the two people who had fainted. The person on their shoulders was weak and could not fool Uchiha Tunin. Then the only person who could fool Uchiha Tunin here was Uchiha Sasuke. After a few moments of silence, Uchiha Tunin finally decided to give each other a chance. After all, whether it was the Eternal Mangekyo or the Six Tomo Rinnegan, they were both irresistible temptations to Uchiha Tunin. As long as there was a sliver of a way out, if they could not turn against each other, then they would not turn against each other. A relieved expression gradually appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face. He breathed a sigh of relief and said, Fortunately, it's fine. Chapter 369 Sasuke's Suspicion The next day, Kanoha had returned to peace. In this cruel world, it was not a big deal if people die. For most ordinary people, yesterday's experience was just a talk on the table. After Achiha Tenen returned to the village and settled down Achiha Sasuke and Uzumaki Baruto, he went to the Hokage building to explain. Of course, it could not be said that aliens had come. Even if others believed it, there was no need to tell the truth. Achiha Tenen simply told them that the opponent was the masked man of the last chaos of the Kyubi. After a big battle, the opponent used time and space ninjutsu to escape. Hiruzen Saratobi and Danzo believed in Uchiha Tunin's words. Goo! Goo goo! A sun rose from behind the Hokage Monument. The mist that enveloped Kanoha gradually dispersed. In a certain room in the orphanage, sunlight shone through a corner of the curtain into the room. The person on the bed turned over and used his hand to block the light. He frowned and opened his blurry eyes. His mind paused for two seconds and then screamed, Run! Baruto sat up in shock and looked around blankly. At this moment, the bedroom door was pushed open. Achiha Tenen came in with a plate and knelt down at the table. He placed the breakfast on the table and smiled. It seems that your body has recovered quite well. Hurry up and eat something. Baruto was stunned. He got up and knelt down in front of Achiha Tenen. He reached out and picked up a piece of cake and put it in front of his eyes. He looked up at the calm Achiha Tunin and said weakly, What about the Urashiki? Was he defeated by you and Mr. Sasuke? Achiha Tunin smiled and pushed the porridge in front of Baruto. He said slowly, No, he found that he couldn't take me down, so he ran away using time and space ninjutsu. I can't help it. Time and space ninjutsu is my weakness.
Baruto nodded, and his eyes were a little low. I see. It's a pity that I didn't help much. After saying that, he stuffed the pastry in his hand into his mouth and chewed. Uchiha Tunin revealed a gentle smile on his face. He reached out to rub his hair and encouraged. It's okay. The next time he comes, you will definitely be stronger than you are now. When the time comes, I'll leave it to you. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin was so confident in him, Baruto was in a much better mood. He made a cheering gesture to Uchiha Tunin and said with a face full of excitement, No problem. Wait for me to train properly for a while. After saying that, Baruto picked up the porridge and began to gulp it down. However, Uchiha Tunin's goal was not to increase the strength of Baruto, but to gain the approval of Uchiha Sasuke by using Baruto as a middleman. Uchiha Tunin turned his head towards the window and said with a relaxed face, Today's weather seems to be very good. The things that should be dealt with have been dealt with yesterday. Why don't I take you to visit Kanoha? It wasn't easy for you to come to this era, but you haven't really visited it. The combination of work and rest is the right path. When Baruto heard this, he finished the porridge in one gulp and placed the bowl heavily on the table. He said with a face full of excitement, Yes. I'll call Mr. Sasuke. He immediately got up and ran out of Sasuke's room. In the blink of an eye, he forgot about training. Sure enough, it's a piece of rotten wood. Uchiha Tunin shook his head lightly and got up to follow. Baruto rushed to Sasuke's room, only to find that he was not here. After going around for a few rounds, when they passed by the orphanage courtyard, they saw Uchiha Sasuke standing on the rooftop of the Sunset Building to look at the scenery. He immediately shouted, Mr. Sasuke, Grandpa Tunin wants to take us to visit Kanoha. Come down quickly. Uchiha Sasuke lowered his eyes slightly and looked at the Baruto below and Uchiha Tunin, who was walking slowly to the Baruto's side. He said coldly, Sorry, I am not interested in these things. Baruto scratched his head awkwardly when he heard this. He turned to Uchiha Tunin and said, Grandpa Tunin, Mr. Sasuke has this kind of personality. Let's go. Uchiha Tunin also knew that Uchiha Sasuke were now wary of him. He could not rush to get closer to him. He immediately nodded and said, Okay. The two of them left the orphanage together under Sasuke's gaze. After the two of them disappeared from view, Uchiha Sasuke frowned and looked up at the sky. The winter sun was not dazzling. The white pigeons that were flying in the sky in the morning seemed to have hidden themselves. There were no birds in the sky, only a few faint traces of sadness. A feeling of incompatibility with this world rose from the bottom of Sasuke's heart. It was too strange. Sasuke slowly closed his eyes. My name is Uchiha Sasuke, and I come from the future. Originally, I thought that this trip to the time and space was simply to stop Urashiki from seizing the Nine-Tailed Chakra. But I didn't expect that this was not the world I existed in. There was one more person here, a clansman that should not have appeared in history. I originally thought that he was in existence that could save Uchiha's clan. But gradually, I found that things were not as simple as they seemed. There seemed to be many unknown and terrifying truths hidden behind all these appearances. A clansman that originally did not exist in history. He monitored the entire Kanoha at all times, and was not surprised by the arrival of me and the two future people. This made me feel a strange feeling. Especially the night before yesterday, I sensed a spatial fluctuation. If I remember correctly, that is Teacher Kakashi's Kamui. The location of the spatial fluctuation is in the sky. He should know that I have inquired about a lot of information in the village these days. Kakashi-sensei in this world did not transplant Abito's Sharingan. Moreover, what could Kamui do when placed above the clouds? Yesterday, during the day, Urashiki came. Actually, at that time, I did not display all my strength. I pretended to faint because I wanted to see the specific strength of that guy. That guy was really strong. Urashiki that made both Baruto and I feel difficult was played by him in his palm. One ring after another, Urashiki was finally completely sealed. But when I asked, 
he said that Urashiki escaped. Why did he lie to me, and why did he pretend to be blind? During this period, he also revealed his pair of kaleidoscope, and the effect was exactly the same as Abido. Presumably, the night before yesterday, he used Kamui to mix the poison into the clouds. Even Orochimaru did not know about that kind of poison, so where did he get it from? He even used Kamui to throw the poison into the clouds. Orochimaru Achiha seemed to have grasped a key point. His eyes suddenly opened, and he lowered his head to look around. After confirming that there was no surveillance, he continued to ponder. The feeling he gave me when he stood in front of me and Baruto seemed to be a little similar to that of Orochimaru. The reason why he said that Urashiki fled was to let me and Baruto stay. Could it be that he wanted to get something? My eyes? In this era, Sasuke heard that Orochimaru was killed by that guy. Was there really someone who could kill Orochimaru? Maybe he could find something. If Orochimaru was still alive, maybe he knew something. It was too difficult to find information in Konoha, and there was no way to find the core information. Achiha's eyes narrowed, and he disappeared in an instant. When he reappeared, he was already at the edge of Konoha. He rushed out of the village. It was only when he arrived at a dense forest that Achiha stopped. He took out a scroll from his ninja backpack and opened it on the ground. Although the times were different, the time and space coordinates on the psychic contract should be the same. In other words, Achiha's eyes narrowed. He bit his finger and formed his seal with one hand, slapping it towards the scroll. Reverse Spirit Communication Technique Bang! White smoke rose from the spot. When the white smoke dissipated, Achiha Sasuke had disappeared without a trace. At this time, on the streets of Kanoha Village, Achiha Tunin was playing with goldfish in a small shop along the street with Baruto. The moment Achiha Sasuke disappeared, the expression of Achiha Tunin, who was reading a book, changed slightly. Baruto beside him took advantage of the opportunity and used a mini version of the net to quickly fish up. In the end, the fish tail in the water swayed and easily dodged. However, Baruto said with a bitter face, this net is too small. It can't be caught at all. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He picked up the fish net beside him and said lightly, There are always fish that want to jump out of their original environment to pry into the truth of this world. After saying that, a little golden fish jumped out of the water. Achiha Tunin seemed to be able to predict where the little golden fish would land. He unhurriedly stretched the net forward. The little golden fish just happened to fall into the net. In the end, it was just walking into the trap. Chapter 370, Ryuchi Cave After Achiha Sasuke used the reverse psychic spell, he appeared inside a fog so thick that he could not see his fingers. The reason why he wanted to use the reverse psychic spell was because he did not know the Ryuchi Cave's spirit beast in this era. Once a high-level snake gets summoned to Konoha, it might cause some trouble. And those smaller snakes basically did not know human language and could not communicate with Sasuke. Step, 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 step. In the fog, Achiha Sasuke walked forward at a moderate pace. After a few minutes, some lights appeared in the fog ahead. As the distance got closer and closer, the door of the Ryuchi cave was finally presented to Achiha Sasuke. From the outside, the entrance to the Ryuchi cave looked like a Chinese restaurant, about ten meters tall. Outside the door stood several thick coiled snake pillars, and under the eaves were rows of red lanterns. Above the tightly shut door hung a plaque with the words Ryuchi cave written on it. Achiha had just arrived at the door when the door opened by itself, revealing the magnificent layout inside. Behind the door stood a dignified woman dressed in white. It was Tagariheim from Ryuchi Cave. Welcome to Ryuchi Cave. Sasuke's expression did not change and he walked straight in. Tagariheim was not annoyed by Sasuke's indifference. She pointed to the dishes placed in the hall with a smile and said, The guest must be tired. There is food specially prepared for the guest here. Please do not be reserved. Achiha Sasuke naturally knew this set of trials in the Ryuchi cave. 
he immediately looked at Tagarheim and said coldly, I'm looking for a mortal white snake. I'm not here to ask for immortal arts. Tagarheim was stunned for a moment. She covered her mouth with her hand and chuckled. Oh, I see. Immortal White Snake is busy. Then please rest for a while. I will take you there later. Sasuke said lightly, The illusion of the Ryuchi Cave is useless to me. If you carry out such a boring trial to me again, I don't mind collecting a reverse scale. As soon as he finished speaking, a hint of annoyance appeared on Tagarheim's face. Her originally delicate face also turned into a terrifying snake face. The originally bright lights in the hall were instantly extinguished. Those dishes that originally looked delicious had also turned into dried-up bones. Tagarheim spit out the letter, her snake eyes stared at Sasuke Uchiha and said, What a rude fellow! I thought I could taste fresh chakra. It is really disappointing. The first trial of the dragon cave was controlled by Tagarheim. If the person who came did not eat the dishes prepared by her, then he would pass. If he ate the dishes, then he would faint and be eaten by Tagarheim. Of course, rules were rules, and these people in the Ryuchi cave had never been willing to follow the rules. Uchiha Sasuke's expression turned cold. He opened the Eternal Mangekyo in his right eye and opened the Six Tomo Rinnegan. He stared at Tagarheim and said, It seems that you want to break the rules of Ryuchi cave. At this moment, the surrounding scenery changed. In an instant, the two of them were in front of an ancient temple. An ancient voice came from the temple. Let him in. Tagarheim immediately put away her fierce look and returned to her previous appearance. She politely nodded at Uchiha Sasuke and said, Since the white snake immortal has invited you, then the guest naturally does not have to go through the next trial. Uchiha Sasuke ignored the small fish like Tagarheim and directly pushed open the temple door and walked in. In the spacious and dim temple, the huge steps spread towards the inside. At the end of the steps was a huge seat. There was a white-haired old woman lying on the seat with her eyes narrowed. This old woman who looked kind was the white snake immortal of Ryuchi Cave. As soon as Uchiha Sasuke entered the temple, she heard the white snake immortal speak in a raving voice. People are born for desire and are destined to fall into darkness slowly. All the people who came to find me are satisfied with desire. But you are different. You have the eyes of an immortal, so you don't need my help at all. Why are you looking for me? Uchiha Sasuke's expression remained unchanged, and he said slowly, I want to know where Orochimaru is. When White Snake Immortal heard this, her eyelids twitched as if she was hesitating to say it out. After all, White Snake knew a little about Orochimaru's situation. Moreover, Orochimaru had signed a contract with Ryuchi Cave. If this person was here to cause trouble for Orochimaru, then White Snake Immortal would definitely not tell him. Seeing that White Snake Immortal did not reply, Uchiha Sasuke pondered for a moment and said, Looks like Orochimaru is still alive. I don't have any grudges with Orochimaru. This time, I came here to ask Orochimaru about Uchiha Tunin. Of course, if you know, Please tell me. When the white snake immortal heard this, her eyes narrowed again. She said slowly, Uchiha. Tune in. Sorry, I haven't been out for too long, and I don't have the prophecy ability of the old toad. As for Orochimaru, he was training immortal arts in the Ryuchi cave. Let Tagariheim take you there. Uchiha Sasuke raised his eyebrows slightly. Wasn't Orochimaru of this era supposed to be researching immortality and dreaming of eternal life? It seemed that even Orochimaru had changed. He was actually training the Ryuchi Cave's arts. Thank you. Uchiha Sasuke did not ask any more questions. He turned around and walked out of the temple. Under the lead of Tagariheim, they headed deep into the Ryuchi Cave. Deep in the Ryuchi Cave. Although there was no blue sky or white clouds here, it did not feel like they were in a cave. Along the way, there were mountains, rivers, and forests, but there was mist floating everywhere. When Tagariheim brought Uchiha Sasuke to a forest, she stopped and motioned for Uchiha Sasuke to help himself go in. 
Uchiha Sasuke walked towards the depths of the forest and soon saw Orochimaru standing on the empty ground in front of him, wearing a white kimono. I heard that you were looking for me, Uchiha who has the eyes of the immortal. Uchiha Sasuke looked at the two horns on Orochimaru's forehead and said lightly, it seems that you have succeeded. Although Orochimaru did not know Uchiha Sasuke, he did not show any surprise. Obviously, before Sasuke came, White Snake had already told him the information about him. Orochimaru stuck out his slender tongue, suppressed the greed in his heart, and said humbly, It's just a small achievement, but it's far from enough. If a person wants to live a stable life, just having a lifespan is not enough, and they also need strength to protect them. You make me feel an inexplicable fear. I think you must be very strong. Although I have been away from Kanoha for a while, I still know who the powerful people are. You look so unfamiliar, are you the descendant of Uchiha? Or the descendant of the Rakudu Sanin? Uchiha Sasuke was already used to Orochimaru's eyes, so he directly asked. I want to know everything about Uchiha Tunin. Orochimaru tilted his head and said leisurely. So you are his enemy. You want to find out more about him from me. Uchiha Sasuke shook his head and said, whether I am his enemy or not, we have to find out more about him. Orochimaru's fingers moved slightly, but in the end, he gave up the idea of attacking. After all, the white snake immortal had warned him repeatedly in advance not to have any evil thoughts about him. He was once the number one genius in Kanoha, and he was born with five types of chakra. Later, he became the pupil of the third generation old man and mastered a lot of ninjutsu. Because of some coincidences, he learned immortal arts in the Temple of Fire. When he fought with me, he used it. Orochimaru was just halfway through his sentence when Uchiha Sasuke interrupted him. What I want to know is not what he is good at, but what his character is like. Orochimaru was stunned, and then laughed cruelly. Finally, he shook his head and said, Although I am his enemy, I have to say that according to the facts I have seen with my own eyes, he is indeed a good person. Good person? Uchiha Sasuke said doubtfully. Orochimaru nodded, and the image of him fighting with Uchiha Tunin appeared in his mind. He said slowly, The Temple of Fire needs to have flawless kindness to learn it. I understand. Uchiha Sasuke breathed a sigh of relief and turned to leave. Wait. Just then, Orochimaru called Uchiha Sasuke. Uchiha Sasuke looked back, only to see Orochimaru smiling faintly. Just now, it only represents my personal opinion, but my other two companions seem to have a different impression of him. But I am not interested in understanding. If you think it is necessary, I can inform them to come over. Uchiha Sasuke's expression froze when he heard this, and he asked doubtfully, Companions? You mean Jiraiya and Tsunade? It seems that the bonds of Kanoha's Sanin are much deeper than I imagined. Even if you become a traitor now, they still want to protect you. Orochimaru's eyes flashed with a strange color, and he said in a deep voice, Didn't Kanoha already release a wanted order for them? I only learned about this from the White Snake Immortal half a year ago. He also chatted with them for a while. Achiha Sasuke frowned and said, How is that possible? Jiraiya and Tsunade betrayed the village? Although Uchiha Sasuke had been secretly gathering information in Kanoha these days, the time was too short and the channels were limited. Basically, he could only learn about it from the idle conversations of the villagers, and many of the things that were known to the public were still unknown. The ninja realm should know about this matter, right? The Kanoga Sanin of the past had become the Kanoha betrayer, how laughable it sounded. As Orochimaru spoke, he raised his head and spat out a scroll from his mouth. Chapter 371 Gathering After spitting out the scroll, Orochimaru glanced at Uchiha Sasuke. Seeing that the other party did not show any strange expression, he secretly looked at the other party. When the scroll was about to be opened, he made a series of hand seals and slapped the scroll. However, there was no movement. Only Orochimaru maintained the posture of clapping the scroll. Achiha Sasuke did not think that Orochimaru would use ninjutsu wrongly, so they waited quietly. 
After a long time, Orochimaru suddenly retreated a little. Huge white smoke burst out from the top of the scroll. After the smoke dispersed, a palm-sized green toad and a two-meter-tall, curled-up slug appeared. The green toad opened its mouth and stretched out a hand. The white-haired Jiraiya crawled out from the toad's mouth. The slug opened its body, revealing the wrapped Tsunade. As soon as the upper half of Jiraiya's body crawled out, he asked, You cold-blooded bastard actually took the initiative to look for us. It seems that there is some trouble. Orochimaru raised his hoarse voice. It's not a problem. It was this guy who wanted to ask about Uchiha Tunin's character. This kind of thing, you guys have more say than me. When Tsunade heard the words Uchiha Tunin, she turned to look at Uchiha Sasuke who was standing quietly on the side with his Mangekyo Sharingan activated. However, due to the cover of his bangs, Tsunade did not see the Rinnegan of Uchiha Sasuke. She immediately raised her eyebrows, raised her fist, and threw it at Sasuke. Uchiha's bastard. Bang! A huge crater was created on the ground. And Uchiha Sasuke's figure had already appeared on the other side. Uchiha Sasuke still had a certain understanding of Tsunade's personality, so he was not taken aback. At this time, Jiraiya had already crawled out from the toad's mouth and narrowed his eyes to look at Uchiha Sasuke. Uchiha clan's Mangekyo. However, he didn't wear a mask. Just as Tsunade was about to continue attacking Uchiha Sasuke, Jiraiya flashed to her side and pulled her back. This guy doesn't seem to be from Konoha. Uchiha Sasuke looked at Tsunade, then looked at Jiraiya and said expressionlessly, Everything has changed. I didn't expect you to betray Konoha. Hearing this, Jiraiya and Tsunade looked at each other, a trace of sadness in their eyes. Jiraiya took a few steps towards Uchiha Sasuke and said, What is your relationship with Uchiha Tunin? Uchiha Sasuke lightly shook his head and said, It doesn't matter. I want to know why you betrayed the village. In my impression, it is impossible for you two to betray Konoha. Tsunade remembered the reason why she became a traitor. She clenched her fists and said angrily, It's all because of that bastard. Jiraiya sighed and said in a low voice, Let me explain. It's rare that someone still cares about the reason why we betrayed the village. When I first became a traitor, I always thought that all of this was because Tsunade and I were too reckless. But these days, I often comb through the things in my mind. Everything in the past became clearer and clearer in my mind. I don't care if you are a Kanoha person or not. Since someone asked, I also hope that someone can know we're wronged. Uchiha Sasuke were slightly startled when they heard this. He asked in confusion, wronged? Jiraiya nodded and said, You should know about Orochimaru. At that time, everyone in the ninja realm thought that Orochimaru was secretly carrying out a live experiment, but he was discovered and killed by Uchiha Tunin. The three of us grew up together. It would be a lie to say that we have no feelings. You guys chat slowly. I'll continue to train. Orochimaru obviously did not like to talk about relationships, especially when it came to himself. He turned around and silently walked towards the depths of the forest. Jiraiya continued. So when we heard this news, although we knew that Orochimaru was wrong, we still felt hostility towards Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Sasuke narrowed his eyes and said lightly, you took the initiative to attack him. Jiraiya admitted. That's right. We were in the wrong at first. But we didn't want to kill him. She just wanted to vent her anger, to put it simply, she wanted to beat him up. At worst, after beating him up, Tsunade and I will continue to wander the world. Anyway, it won't affect anything. Behind him, Tsunade crossed her arms and reminded him, Jiraiya, pay attention to your words. Jiraiya coughed, ahem, I'm going to collect more materials. She's going to gamble. Clang! A heavy punch landed on Jiraiya's head. Jiraiya rubbed his head and said, She's going to play in other countries. But we didn't expect that guy to be so open and honest in front of people, but he was a petty person. Speaking of this, Jiraiya's eyes became deeper, and his voice became low. 
he sneaked into Sonate's home while she was in the hospital. He killed Sonate's pet Tauntan and even engraved a transfer seal in Shizen's eyes. When Sonate knew about this, you could imagine how she felt at that time. However, this also happened to be Uchiha Tunin's trick. At that time, Uchiha Tunin specifically chose to cause trouble in the city with many people. The current Uchiha Sasuke is not the Avenger he used to be, but is secretly helping Naruto protect the existence of Konoha. When his eyes were about to shift to Tsunade's depressed face, he said coldly, so you attacked him in the downtown area of Konoha. Tsunade took a deep breath and suppressed the anger in her heart. She shouted, Humph, if he kills your family, can you bear it? Jiraiya saw that the atmosphere became a bit tense and quickly said, as the princess of the Senju clan, Tsunade naturally knew that the battle of ninjas should not affect the civilians. At the beginning, she held back. But Uchiha Tunin took out Tantan's relic and kept provoking her. Tsunade lost her mind and attacked Uchiha Tunin. It was also because of this that the surrounding villagers were affected. Many people died because of this. Tsunade did such a thing, so we naturally can't stay in Konoha anymore. Uchiha Sasuke was silent for a moment, then nodded and said, I understand. You said that he wrote a seal in Shizen's eyes. What is the condition to activate it? The expression on Jiraiya's face became serious, and he said seriously, When treating Tsunade, use the chakra scalpel to replace the palm fairy technique and kill Tsunade. Uchiha Sasuke was stunned when he heard this, but he did not expect Uchiha Tunin to be so ruthless. Tsunade seemed to have become a lot more haggard. She came to a big stone and sat down. She lowered her head and muttered, I have already died once. It was Sage Toad who saved me with an immortal talisman passed down from ancient times. When Shizen killed me, Jiraiya accidentally killed her to save me. So shouldn't her life be blamed on that guy? Jiraiya looked back at Tsunade who looked down, and a trace of heartache flashed in his eyes. He sighed and said, I know you might not believe what I said today, but that is the truth. It had to be said that this guy's plan was very successful, and his disguise was also very good. No one in the whole world would believe that the two of us traitors. Uchiha Sasuke shook his head and said, If it was someone else, I might be suspicious. But I believe that you two won't betray Konoha. I also believe that what you said is true. Jiraiya raised his eyebrows, not knowing why this man would believe him on his own words. Is this guy my fanatic fan? Thank you. Tsunade raised her head and looked at Uchiha Sasuke with a hint of kindness in her eyes. After all, no one in the whole world believed them. Even Orochimaru, his companion, did not care about the whole story. That was exactly what he said. No one cared that you were wronged. People only believed in the truth they wanted to see. Uchiha Sasuke understood what he wanted to know. Out of concern for his acquaintances, he asked Jiraiya, What plans do you have in the future? Do you keep hiding? Hearing this, Jiraiya smiled. We have thought it through. No matter what, according to the information I heard, Kanoha seems to be much better than before. If that guy doesn't do anything bad to Kanoha, we will retire in the Holy Land. If we are bored, we can go out and play. Jiraiya's words were only half spoken. After all, this guy in front of him was just a stranger, and he couldn't tell him all his plans. Seeing that Uchiha Sasuke seemed to be thinking about something, Jiraiya smiled and said, Anyway, if we don't provoke that guy, there should be no trouble. After all, we were the first to be rude and destroyed the orphanage that he had painstakingly built. Everyone has a dark side to them. Peace needs to be understood by each other. This is also the reason why I have been holding Tsunade and Orochimaru's hands and not taking revenge. Of course, there is another reason. According to the information I know, the three of us together may not be able to beat him. If you want peace, someone has to bear the pain and let go of his hatred. I don't know why you are asking about his information. But he is now guarding Konoha. I hope you won't make him your enemy. Uchiha Sasuke looked up at Jiraiya's sincere eyes and said, I know what to do. 
Then he turned around and left the Ryuchi cave. Chapter 372 Not Benefiting the Enemy In the forest on the edge of Kanoa village. The daytime of winter became short, and night fell. The cold wind was like a sharp sword dancing in the night sky, blowing the leaves and making sharp cries. The stars in the sky seemed to be afraid of the cold, but they also seemed to be afraid of the wind. They all entered the dark sky. An open scroll was lying alone in the grass. A burst of white smoke burst out, and Uchiha Sasuke's figure appeared in the forest. Uchiha Sasuke activated Eternal Mangekyo and Six Tomo Rinnegan and looked around. After confirming that there was no white pigeon nearby, he turned into a shadow and ran towards Kanoha. In the middle of the raid, Uchiha Sasuke's eyes flashed slightly, but he kept thinking in his heart. Sure enough, there was no absolute kindness in the world. But overall, that guy should not have any plans on me and Baruto. If he was interested in my eyes, he should have made his move on the day he defeated Urashiki. But these are just guesses. No matter what kind of person he is and what he is going to do, it is better for Baruto and I to leave as soon as possible. The moment Uchiha Sasuke returned to Kanoha. In the orphanage, Uchiha Tunin found Uchiha Sasuke's chakra through Kagura Shingon. Uchiha Tunin was sitting at the tea table, drinking tea while playing with a big wooden time space treasure like a turtle in his hand, Karasuki. The precious artifact was originally in Baruto's ninja storage bag, but Uchiha Tunin took advantage of the fact that he was not paying attention and took it over to help him keep it. In this way, there was no need to worry about the two of them quietly escaping. However, he saw Uchiha Tunin looking in the direction where Uchiha Sasuke had appeared and muttered, Eh? You came back so late. Did you go to Orochimaru using the reverse psychic spell? It seems that we have a lot to talk about. You better behave yourself. After saying that, Uchiha Tunin lowered his head and looked at Karasuki in his hand, and the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. This was a good treasure. A few minutes later, Achiha Sasuke arrived outside the orphanage. The elderly and children in the welfare institute had already fallen asleep. The entire courtyard was eerily silent without any light. For some reason, after discovering some unknown truth, this orphanage actually looked a little sinister. Especially the sunset building. The originally bright red words seemed to be like dried blood under the dim light of the night. Uchiha Sasuke's eyes narrowed slightly. He thought to himself, I'll leave tonight. He immediately sneaked inside. The small courtyard where Uchiha Tunin lived sat in the corner of the orphanage. There were two floors in total. The first floor was where Uchiha Tunin lived, and the second floor was the guest room. Uchiha Sasuke leaped and directly jumped to the corridor on the second floor, quickly walking towards Baruto's room. There was not a single sound throughout the entire process. Although Uchiha Sasuke's current strength was less than one-tenth of his, he had been out on missions all year round. In addition, he had the Eternal Mangekyo and the Six Tomo Rinnegan. Uchiha Sasuke was confident that no one would be able to spy on him in the dark when he was highly alert. Soon, Uchiha Sasuke arrived at Baruto's room, gently opened the door, walked in, and closed the door. Although Uchiha Sasuke did not make a sound, the sound of the door opening woke Baruto in the room. Just as Baruto was about to speak, Uchiha Sasuke flashed to the side of Baruto and covered his mouth. Woo! Uchiha Sasuke leaned his face closer and whispered, Lower your voice. It's me. When Baruto saw that it was Uchiha Sasuke, he let out a sigh of relief and nodded. When Uchiha Sasuke moved his hand away, Baruto also whispered, Mr. Sasuke, is it Urashiki? Uchiha Sasuke had a rare serious look and shook his head. Urashiki was sealed by that guy Uchiha Tunin last time. Baruto was stunned and asked doubtfully, Really? Then why did Grandpa Tunin lie to me that Urashiki escaped? Uchiha Sasuke hesitated for a moment. He did not intend to tell Baruto the information he got today. He whispered, it doesn't matter whether I lie or not. I don't know why, but I feel a little uneasy. Let's leave this place first. Baruto frowned and asked in confusion, Leave this place, 
where are we going? Achiha Sasuke said in a low voice, first, find a place where no one is around and wait for Karasuki to wake up. Baruto instantly understood that Uchiha Sasuke wanted to take him and leave without saying goodbye. Thinking about how Uchiha Tunin, his grandfather, treated him so well during this period of time, a strong sense of reluctance surged in his heart. At this time, the dark clouds in the night slowly drifted away, revealing the slender crescent moon hanging in the night sky. The expression of Baruto quickly changed, and in the end, he said solemnly, then I will say goodbye to Grandpa Tunin first, and then look at Dad at the same time. Achiha Sasuke looked serious, said, This matter can only be known to you and me. You can't tell anyone. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Sasuke's expression suddenly changed. He suddenly turned his head to look. He saw that the faint moonlight outside the window had already illuminated the corridor. A black shadow was standing quietly by the window, as if staring at the two people in the room. When? Achiha Sasuke's expression turned extremely ugly. He moved his body without a trace and blocked Baruto behind him. At this moment, a hoarse and low voice came from outside the window. Are you leaving? Grandpa Tunin. Baruto heard Achiha Tunin's voice and ran out from behind Achiha Sasuke. He opened the door. Grandpa, it's so cold outside. Come in. Achiha Tunin turned around and smiled at Baruto. I heard it just now. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have lied to you. The cold moonlight made Achiha Tunin's face a little pale. However, Baruto didn't feel horrible. Instead, they felt that Achiha Tunin was so sad because he heard the words of Achiha Sasuke. In order to not make himself sad, he even pretended to be indifferent and forced a smile. A strong sense of guilt surged into the heart of Baruto. Achiha Sasuke came to the side of Baruto. Seeing that Achiha Tunin showed no signs of making trouble, he breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. After all, the other party was in existence that could seal Urashiki. If he was at his peak, he would naturally be fearless. But now! Once there is a conflict, the hero can only avoid the immediate loss. Achiha Sasuke looked at the bandage in Achiha Tunin's eyes and said coldly, We still have many things to do in our own era. I don't know what you want us to do. A bitter smile flashed across Achiha Tunin's face. He reached out to caress the hair of Baruto and said in a kind tone, As an elder, it is natural to shelter the younger generation from the wind and rain. But at the same time, every elder hopes that the younger generation can become a useful person. I mainly want to keep Baruto and use Urashiki as an incentive to train Baruto well. I hope you can understand this feeling of wanting the child to become a dragon. It was just a few simple words, and Baruto instantly understood it, and his eyes were full of guilt. It turned out that Grandpa Tunin lied to make me not slack off. Because of this, Mr. Sasuke became suspicious of him. It's all my fault for being too weak. I often play games and don't work hard to train. Baruto lowered his head and clenched his fists. He said in a low voice, Grandpa, I'm sorry. I was too weak. I let you down. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, a gratified expression appeared on his face. He said gently, Good child, your future life is very long. It is impossible for it to be smooth sailing. Only powerful strength can protect you. Grandpa is really worried about you. I still have a lot of things I want to teach you. After all, I wasn't in your era. At this time, Baruto looked at Uchiha Tunin with tears in his eyes. He immediately turned to Uchiha Sasuke and said in a slightly pleading tone, Mr. Sasuke, let's stay for a while longer. I want to become stronger. Uchiha Sasuke had been observing Uchiha Tunin's expression all the time. No matter how one looked at it, the current relationship between Uchiha Tunin and Baruto was full of deep grandfather-grandson love. But the more this is the case, the more Uchiha Sasuke, an outsider, feels something is wrong. The Uchiha Tunin in front of him was too young, only a few years older than Baruto. 
This kind of grandfather-grandson relationship that was completely supported by seniority, no matter how one looked at it, it felt unreal. After hesitating for a long time, Uchiha Sasuke remembered what Jiraiya said, don't get into a conflict with Uchiha Tunin. He immediately nodded at Uchiha Tunin and said, Sure, but I have some secrets about our era that I want to tell Baruto. Please leave. Of course. A happy smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face as he nodded at the two of them. He turned around and walked towards the stairs at the end of the corridor. The filial Baruto kept waiting at Uchiha Tunin's back, Grandpa, go to bed early. When Uchiha Tunin walked to the corner of the corridor, he stopped and looked sideways. You have to keep your word. Don't leave without saying goodbye. If you really want to leave, I won't stop you. Let me send you off personally. After that, he walked down the stairs. Tap, 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 tap. Squeak, bang. Uchiha Sasuke made sure that Uchiha Tunin had returned to his room and pulled Baruto back into the room. Baruto frowned and said unhappily, Mr. Sasuke, what happened to you? I feel that you were very strange recently. The words you said to me just now clearly means that you are suspicious of Grandpa Tunin. Grandpa Tunin helped us get rid of Urashiki, and you still talked about him behind his back and let him hear it. I guess he must be very sad now. Uchiha Sasuke took a deep breath and said in a low voice, Some things are not as simple as you think. I hope I am just suspicious. Last time, you said that he gave you a lot of chakra potions. My chakra was sucked dry by Urashiki before, and now I can't use my full strength. To be on the safe side, give me the potion. When Baruto heard this, he snorted unhappily. However, he still obediently took out the storage scroll that stored the potion from his ninja backpack and threw it into Uchiha Sasuke's arms. His face was unhappy as he said, I told you that you are overthinking. A guy like you who doesn't go home all year round, how can you know what familial love is? You doubt this one day, but I used to regard you as my idol. These medicines were given to me by Grandfather Tunin for training. Don't use them all up. Uchiha Sasuke saw that Baruto actually treated Uchiha Tunin as family in such a short period of time. He immediately gave up on the idea of continuing to explain to Baruto and silently put away the scroll. Baruto was only angry that Uchiha Sasuke was too suspicious and did not really hate him. After hesitating for a moment, Baruto thought that it was good for Uchiha Sasuke to recover his strength as soon as possible. Then he took off the necklace on his neck and handed it to Uchiha Sasuke. Here, this necklace can also be used to train chakra. Remember to return it to me. Uchiha Sasuke was also not hypocritical. After taking the necklace and carefully confirming that there was no trace of tracking ninjutsu on it, he put it on his neck. Leaving behind a sentence you should rest early, he turned and left Baruto's room. On the rooftop of the Sunset Building, Uchiha Sasuke stood at the side of the railing, staring at the light green chakra potion in his hand. After observing for a long time, he still could not find any information about the potion in his memory. He immediately pulled open the plug and smelled it. A sweet fragrance came to his nose. If Orochimaru was here, he should be able to determine the composition of this potion. Uchiha Sasuke frowned, and he did not believe that this potion had no side effects. But he thought that if Uchiha Tunin wanted to deal with Baruto, there was no need to use such a despicable method. He immediately raised his head and drank it. Soon, Uchiha began to feel a warm current in his body, spreading through his meridians to his limbs and bones. There was actually a medicine that could quickly replenish his chakra, and he couldn't feel any side effects at all. A poison that could subdue Urashiki, as well as a medicine that had no side effects. It seemed that this guy was also proficient in the knowledge of medicine. Even if I drink all of these potions, I could only recover half of my chakra at most. However, half of it is enough for me to deal with any unexpected situations. Following that, Uchiha Sasuke lowered his head and looked at the necklace on his neck. And this necklace. There is no sealing technique on it, and it is not made of chakra or metal. But it can help me extract chakra at any time and place. 
Achiha Tunin, who are you? At this time, Achiha Tunin, who was in the study, was still studying the Atsutsuki's artifact. All of a sudden, Achiha Tunin sensed that Achiha Sasuke's chakra aura had increased by a bit. He immediately frowned and fell into deep thought. What was going on? Wasn't this guy's chakra sucked dry? Come on! How did he recover so quickly? After a long time, Achiha Tunin gently rubbed his temples and said lightly, I actually forgot this one, I've become an enemy. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tunin's left eye under the bandage turned into a kaleidoscope and released Kamui to send Karasuki into the Kamui space. As long as Baruto and Sasuke did not have Karasuki, they would never be able to escape. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He chuckled and shook his head. It really is. Isn't this forcing me to send you guys on your way earlier? However, what Uchiha Tunin did not know was that Uchiha Sasuke, who possessed the six Tomo Rinnegan, could sense the spatial fluctuations of Kamui. He was even more fearful of Uchiha Tunin in his heart. Chapter 373 A Bitter Poison In the next few days, every day, after Uchiha Tunin was done with his work, he would guide Baruto to train. Of course, guiding Baruto was just to maintain the image in front of Baruto and Uchiha Sasuke. His real intention was to obtain the recognition of Uchiha Sasuke. During this period of time, Sasuke no longer ran around, but locked himself in his room all day to recover his chakra. Uchiha Tunin would personally cook for three meals a day, and would even take the time to carry Naruto to talk to Sasuke. The content of the chat naturally revolved around Naruto. However, Sasuke seemed to be a bit stubborn, not only did he appear indifferent and vigilant towards Uchiha Tunin. In the end, he didn't even look at Naruto, and even shut Uchiha Tunin out. As time slowly passed, Uchiha Tunin felt that Sasuke's chakra was getting bigger and bigger, surpassing that of Haruzen Sarutobi and Danzo. Early Morning The sky was still dark blue. Uchiha Tunin wore an apron and carried the tray to the room of Uchiha Sasuke on the second floor. He gently knocked on the door. Knock knock. Brother Sasuke, it's time for breakfast. Uchiha Sasuke, who was sitting cross-legged in the room refining chakra, opened his eyes slightly and said coldly. Thank you for your trouble. Just leave it at the door. Outside the door, Uchiha Tunin's face instantly turned cold, but he said with a gentle and kind tone. Why don't you come down and eat with me and Baruto? You will get sick if you stay in the room all day. Achihas was you glanced at the moldy food in the corner of the room and said coldly, no need. After saying that, he took out a military grain pill from his bag and stuffed it into his mouth. Then I won't disturb you any longer. Outside the door, Achiha Tinan placed the plate on the ground and turned to walk towards the end of the corridor. The eyes under the bandage were already cold. With his keen sense of smell, Achiha Tunin could naturally smell the moldy smell of food in the room. At the same time, through his mind's eye, he felt that the chakra in Sasuke's body was already surging like a volcano that was about to erupt. Are you afraid that I will poison you? It has been so long, but you haven't eaten a single bite. This kind of vigilant fellow is really annoying. I can't drag it on anymore. Life is destined to not be smooth sailing. Only when I make the choice can I have it. It's no fun to overturn the car halfway because of greed. Half an hour later, the sleepy-eyed Baruto came to the dining room on the first floor. However, he found that there was nothing above the dining table today. And Uchiha Tunin was sitting at the low table in the living room drinking tea. He saw that Uchiha Tunin had changed into a suit today. His long hair was loose and he even had a long sword on his back. However, as a straight man, Boren did not notice that Uchiha Tunin had changed his appearance today. He rubbed the corners of his eyes and said, Grandpa, what is the breakfast today? Uchiha Tunin slowly picked up the teacup and blew on the floating tea leaves on the surface of the tea table. He took a sip and said, I won't eat today. I happen to be free today. I want to take you for a special training session. The intensity of the special training is too great. 
It's easy to vomit after eating. Hearing the special training, the eyes of Baruto lit up and he immediately became spirited. After all, during this period of time, Baruto clearly felt that his strength had increased rapidly under Uchiha Tunin's scientific training. Even Uchiha Tunin taught the Golden Bell training method he had researched to Baruto. People were like this. As long as they could get a timely feedback, they would have endless motivation. Baruto clenched his fists in excitement. Great! Grandfather, I will definitely make you look at me in a new light. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. He said leisurely, I will wait and see. After saying that, he drank the tea in his cup and got up to leave Baruto out of Kanoha. It was noon. The two of them had already left the jurisdiction of Kanoha and were running in a forest. Today's weather was exceptionally good. In the blue sky, a few clouds were like a flock of sheep slowly moving with the wind. The sunlight shone on their bodies, making them feel warm. Although Uchiha Tunin was not running too fast with Baruto, after all, they had been running for a whole morning, and Baruto were still a little impatient. By the way, we are already very far from the village. What special training needs to be so mysterious? Uchiha Tunin, who was in front, had a calm expression and said lightly, It's a very cruel special training. You need to adjust your mentality and hold the determination to die. Uchiha Tunin said it seriously, but Baruto did not think that Tunin's grandfather would really let him die in the special training. He was probably trying to scare him to not let his guard down and treat the special training seriously. Baruto clenched his fist and waved it hard, shouting, I won't be scared. No matter how difficult it is, I will definitely pass. Hearing this, a sneer flashed across the corner of Uchiha Tunin's mouth. He said leisurely, Is that so? If you can survive, I will give you a surprise. Baruto said confidently, Just wait and see. A few minutes. The two of them had already arrived at the lake under the Valley of Death. Baruto looked up at the giant statues on both sides of the waterfall. The white mist rising from the bottom of the waterfall enveloped the lower half of the two statues as if it wanted to hide something. It was even more mysterious and confusing. Wow! The Valley of Death looks so good at this time. Achiha Tunin also looked up at the two statues. The eyes under the bandages were cold and deep. He said in a deep tone, This is a place that determines one's fate. The former ninja god, Senju Hazarama, broke off with the ninja world Shura here. Your father and Sasuke also fought twice here. I believe that Sasuke must have special feelings for this place and will also find this place. Baruto was slightly stunned and asked in confusion, Why would Sasuke looking for us? No, Grandpa, how did you know that Dad and Sasuke fought here? Did Mr. Sasuke tell you that? Achiha Tunin nodded slightly and turned to give Baruto a sunny smile. He said gently, Yes, then are you ready for the special training in hell? Baruto looked at Uchiha Tunin's smiling face and nodded heavily. I am ready. Uchiha Tunin took out a dark black medicine from his ninja backpack and handed it to Baruto. Drink this. Baruto took the medicine and opened the plug. Suddenly, a pungent smell came, which was disgusting. But out of trust in Uchiha Tunin, Baruto did not think much and thought that this should be some kind of medicine that could help training. He immediately resisted the urge to vomit and drank the medicine in one gulp. As soon as the medicine entered his mouth, his face instantly wrinkled together, just like an ordinary person's expression when they first drank strong liquor. It's so bitter. Hearing this, Achiha Tinin said apologetically, I also want to make this thing into a colorless and odorless state. Unfortunately, the difficulty is too great. Chapter 374 The Hunt Begin Baruto couldn't hear Uchiha Tunin's afterwards, he only felt that after the medicinal liquid entered the stomach, it was like a fire was ignited in the body, and it quickly spread towards the whole body. Uh. Grandpa, I feel it. My body hurts, just like getting lit on fire. His body involuntarily curled up. But in the next moment, 
a touch of determination flashed in the eyes of Baruto. He immediately endured the pain, sat cross-legged, and began to refine chakra. Seeing that the medicine began to take effect, Achiha Tunin nodded with satisfaction, turned his back to the cross-legged Baruto, looked at the two statues, and said slowly, I reflected on myself last night. In the past, I was weak, and I was cautious and did not dare to make any mistakes. However, as my strength grew stronger, I also gradually expanded. The greed in human nature also grew stronger, and it inevitably affected my decision. Thinking back on it, I felt like I was dancing on a tightrope these past few days. For this reason, I had to use reason to suppress the greed in my heart and stop the damage in time. Did you know that some time ago, when you gave the necklace and the chakra potion to Sasuke, I should have taken action? If it was me in the past, I might not have been able to wait until the moment I found Sasuke pretending to be unconscious. Everything was caused by greed. Since ancient times, no matter how strong or weak they were, how many people had fallen to this point. At this time, Baruto had long been drowned in pain and his whole body was soaked with sweat. Most of Uchiha Tunin's words could not be heard clearly in his ears and he only felt that they were buzzing. The effect of the medicine is too overbearing. I feel that my body can't hold on much longer. No, I must hold on. The face of Baruto was distorted by the pain, but when he thought that this was a special training that could greatly increase his strength, he kept cheering for himself with a hoarse voice. Seeing this kid was so silly, Achiha Tunin couldn't bear to say. If you can't hold on, you can scream. No one can hear you. You really don't need to resist. You're making me wonder if the effect of this medicine is worse than I thought. Two minutes later. Ugh! Baruto suddenly opened his mouth. A mouthful of purple-black blood sprayed on the ground. Baruto was in a trance. His eyelids opened and closed. Looking at the blood on the ground, he muttered. Did I vomit blood? What kind of medicine was this? The medicinal effect was too strong. No. I was too weak. Achiha Tenen sighed softly. He gently stroked the blonde hair of Baruto and said, This is naturally poison. However, you don't have to worry. This is slow. There should be no one in the whole world who can solve it. There are about seven days before your death. Perhaps it was because of the vomiting of blood, Baruto finally heard Achiha Tunin's words and said with a confused face. Poison. Death. Don't joke. Achiha Tunin used the hand that was stroking Baruto's hair and lifted the head up. He looked at Baruto with a sincere face and said, Although the medicine is overbearing and unsolvable, it must be consumed in one go. But the smell of this medicine is pungent and the taste is not good. Normal people will definitely be able to recognize it at a glance. It was almost useless to use it against enemies or to assassinate. To let the enemy drink it, the only way was to capture the enemy alive. Since it could be captured alive, then what was the use of it? So I have always regarded it as useless, but I didn't expect it to come in handy today. This time, Baruto's listened to Uchiha Tunin's words and stared at Uchiha Tunin's sincere face with disbelief. This face, no matter how you looked at it, seemed harmless. If not for those sinister words, Achiha Tunin would have made people feel that he was kind instead. In an instant, Baruto thought a lot, but in the end, he still overturned Achiha Tunin's idea of harming him. Could it be, this was really poison? What was the meaning behind Tunin's grandfather's actions? Suddenly, Baruto's expression changed. His pale face revealed a look of joy as he said, It doesn't seem to be that painful anymore. Grandpa, I will definitely be able to make it through. Achiha Tunin shook his head speechlessly. This child, to tell you the truth, you still don't believe it. It's not that it doesn't hurt as much, but that in order to protect you, the body has automatically reduced the pain sensitivity. After all, this is not a medicine to torture people, it is a real medicine to kill. After saying this, the hand that was holding the hair of Baruto was gently lifted up. Uh. Achiha Tenen moved his face to the front of Baruto 
his eyes under the bandage greedily staring at the eyes of Baruto, and he said, You are simply a flower in a greenhouse. You don't understand the cruelty of ninjas at all. You should learn more from the things Mr. Sasuke mentioned. No matter what I do, as long as there is something wrong, he will be fully vigilant against me. Although I hate his vigilance, I have to say that he is a qualified ninja. As for you, other than this rare bloodline, you are simply a good-for-nothing. Cruelty. Vigilance. Learning from Mr. Sasuke. A hint of understanding flashed through the eyes of Baruto. So Grandpa Tenen wanted me to understand the cruelty of the ninjas today and wanted me to keep my vigilance against strangers at all times. Although the process was a little painful, I must not fail to live up to Grandpa Tenen's good intentions. The eyes of Baruto focused, and he looked at Uchiha Tenen solemnly. His bloody lips slowly trembled as he said, Grandpa, you don't have to scare me. I understand. I will be a qualified ninja. In the future, other than my family, I will be wary of anyone. I understand. His. To be honest, Achiha Tenen was a little shocked. This was the legendary protagonist? He hadn't even seen the protagonist's traits, but he had seen the mentally handicapped trait first. This was the first time that someone had firmly believed in Achiha Tenen after he had seen the dagger. This was no longer a knife against his neck, but rather, it had already been inserted into his flesh. You actually still think that I won't hurt you. This action of his was not enough to make Uchiha Tunin give up his original plan. It only made Uchiha Tunin feel a little embarrassed. Wasn't it obvious that he was bullying a fool? No wonder he could gain recognition in a few days, it was even easier to fool than the children in the ninja school. Thinking about it, Achiha Tenen shook his head lightly and decided not to say anything more to this fool. He immediately reached out his other hand to grab the neck of Baruto and said in a gentle tone, You don't have a future. If you want to blame someone, blame your Mr. Sasuke recovering too fast. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tenen grabbed the hair of Baruto and pulled it up. The hand that was holding the neck of Baruto was pulled down. Rip! A large amount of yellow hair and scalp were pulled off, and Baruto let out a soft cry. Ah! Baruto involuntarily screamed because of the pain. His pupils quickly expanded, and he fainted from the pain. In the next moment, Achiha Tenen carried the fainted Baruto his shoulder. He raised his head and looked in the direction of Kanoha, his mouth slightly outlined, and muttered. The hunt begins. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tenen's whole body was surging with chakra airflow visible to the naked eye. The bandages on his face automatically broke apart, revealing a strange scarlet kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope on Achiha Tenen's left eye transformed into Kamui kaleidoscope form, slowly spinning. A pitch-black spatial vortex appeared, sucking the two of them in. After the spatial vortex dissipated, there was only a pool of purple-black blood and a yellow hair on the spot. Chapter 375 Deliberately Leaving Trails Orphanage Achiha Sasuke woke up from his training and slightly sensed the thick chakra in his body. He finally walked out from his long period of weakness. When he looked up, he found that the room had already darkened. Only the cold moonlight spilled into the gaps of the curtains. It was very quiet. A person's perception seemed to have become more sensitive in the dark. Achiha Sasuke was surprised to find that there was no breath of life in Baruto's room next to his. It was so late, why had Baruto not come back? Something had happened. Achiha Sasuke suddenly thought of something, and his figure flashed out of the room of Baruto. He saw that the inside of Baruto's room was empty, and there was no one. Achiha Sasuke's expression froze, and he looked at the moon outside the window, his eyes flashing. That shouldn't be the case. If that guy wanted to make a move, he should have done it a long time ago. Moreover, he should have made a move on me. There is nothing special about Baruto. Could it be that he is still training outside at this time? Achiha Sasuke, who couldn't figure it out, looked serious and immediately walked downstairs. No matter where Achiha Tenen's real body went, he would always leave a shadow clone to take care of Naruto. 
After arriving on the first floor, Achiha Sasuke looked at the warm light on the window of the room and felt relieved. He reached out and knocked on the door. Knock knock. However, there was no response from inside. Achiha Sasuke pushed open the door and walked in. The room was brightly lit, and the stove was still burning with burning charcoal. However, he did not see Achiha Tenen's shadow clone. Achiha Sasuke had a bad feeling and quickly rushed into the baby's room. Seeing little Naruto sleeping soundly in the baby bed, Achiha Sasuke heaved a sigh of relief. However, when he glanced over, he saw the milk bottle that had fallen to the ground. This situation. Was it because the shadow clone had suddenly disappeared? In other words, that fellow's true body had encountered trouble. Damn it, there was danger to it. Achiha Sasuke's figure flashed and disappeared without a trace. When he reappeared, he was already outside the village entrance registration office. Achiha Sasuke suddenly appeared in front of the two Kanoha ninjas on night duty. Before the two of them could react, Achiha Sasuke cast an eternal kaleidoscope level illusion on them. Where did Achiha Tunin go? One of the ninjas on duty, Kanoha, raised his finger and pointed into the distance with a numb face. This morning, Lord Tunin brought a yellow-haired kid out of the village. It's in that direction. As soon as he finished speaking, a gust of clear wind blew past, and the two immediately shivered. They looked at each other blankly, but did not know what had just happened. In the endless night sky, a crescent moon was shining on the earth, and on the other side of the night sky, there were silver lights scattered like stars. Achiha Sasuke followed the direction the ninja was pointing at at full speed. Along the way, he kept searching for possible clues. Although the Sharingan could not compare to Byakugan in terms of insight, the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and the six Tomo Rinnegan also gave Achiha Sasuke inhuman vision. This was also why Achiha Sasuke was still able to observe the battle situation of the two despite being so far away from the battlefield between Achiha Tunin and Urashiki. In the dark forest, a shadow flashed past. Achiha Sasuke had been running for more than half an hour, but he still had not found any traces of Achiha Tunin and the Baruto. He did not even find any traces of battle. How far did that guy run with Baruto? It was possible for him to meet a strong enemy who he could not even resist. Although that guy could kill Urashiki, he relied on poison and a large number of sealing tools to support him. If he met a strong enemy or a siege, he might not be able to cope with it. In this era, who could force him to remove his shadow clone? Could it be that someone from the Atsutsuki clan came again? To save someone through time and space? Now, half of my strength has been restored. If he was a little more careful, he should be able to pay. He just didn't know if they could hold on. He only knew the direction of the village, and there were no other clues. Where did they go? He could only look for them once. Suddenly, Achiha Sasuke's ears twitched slightly, and the sound of a waterfall could be vaguely heard. He immediately stopped at a mountain top, looked into the distance, and muttered, There is, the Valley of Death. It was good to go and take a look. After thinking about it, Achiha Sasuke ran towards the Valley of Death. A few minutes later, Achiha Sasuke was already standing by the lake of the Valley of Death. At this moment, Achiha Suju's face was livid, and there seemed to be anger surging in his eyes. There was a small dark brown patch on the rock on the ground. It was obvious that it was a trace of dried blood. In particular, the surface of the patch was firmly glued to a yellow hair. Achiha Sasuke naturally recognized that this yellow hair was the hair of Baruto. Although the relationship between Baruto and Achiha Sasuke was not very good, he was the child of Naruto. The purpose of his trip this time was to prevent Naruto from getting hurt by Urashiki and also to protect Baruto by moving together. If something happened to the Baruto, how could he go back and explain it to Naruto? No, once Baruto got into an accident, he would never be able to go back. The Karasuki was an Atsutsuki precious artifact, and only the Atsutsuki could use it. The physical body of a Baruto was already equivalent to half an Atsutsuki. Karasuki had personally said that Baruto was in line with the right to use it. Thinking of this, 
Uchiha Sasuke's eyes turned cold. He leaped to the top of Uchiha Madara's statue and used his eye power to look in all directions. Finally, Uchiha Sasuke saw a yellow hair hanging quietly on a tree branch about five kilometers east. Almost every five kilometers, Uchiha Suju could find the yellow hair that belonged to Baruto. At first, Uchiha Sasuke was still guessing that it was a clue that Baruto had secretly left for him. However, as time passed and the journey became farther and farther, Uchiha Sasuke had already understood that these clues were deliberately left by the enemy. The purpose should be him. But even if there was an ambush ahead, in order to win Baruto back, Uchiha Sasuke had to follow the clues all the way. The dark blue sea was connected to the dark blue sky, setting off the thin gauze gray clouds like a faint ink painting. Uchiha Sasuke stood by the sea, his eyes slightly lowered as he looked at the yellow hair in his hand. Then, he took a deep breath and looked around. However, no matter how Uchiha Sasuke observed, he could not find the following clues. One must know that even though Uchiha Sasuke had the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and the Six Tomo Rinnegan, it was not specifically used for observation. Five kilometers away, it was almost the limit of the distance that Uchiha Sasuke could observe carefully. Every time Uchiha Sasuke used all his eye power. For the whole night, he continuously used his eyes with high intensity. Even Uchiha Sasuke, who had recovered more than half of his strength, felt his eyes pained. The last strand of hair was found on the shore of the sea. But in front of him was the vast sea, where could he find it? Just as Uchiha Sasuke was thinking, the sea and sky in the distance were slightly white. Chapter 376, Tunin Appears The surface of the gentle sea was sparkling, and the tip of the waves was shining with a silver light, like the endless dancing mercury. It has already been a night. Uchiha Sasuke looked at the sea, and a determined look flashed in his eyes. He said in a deep voice, Can't wait any longer. Now I can only cross the sea to find him. Just when Uchiha Sasuke was about to cross the sea, he suddenly sensed a terrifying chakra fluctuation spreading in all directions from the sea. The sea surface that was originally splashing water instantly calmed down from far to near, as if it was flattened by an invisible palm. The entire blue sea looked solemn and peaceful, and the sea surface was as smooth as marble. Uchiha Sasuke's eyes flickered, and he stared ahead. He had already guessed that the mastermind behind the scenes was preparing to show himself. To be able to affect such a large area of sea water, it seemed that the reason why the other party wanted to lure him here was because the other party was extremely skilled in water jutsu. Choosing a place suitable for yourself? The ninjas of this era cannot be underestimated. Perhaps because the distance was too far, even Uchiha Sasuke could not see where the other party was. He could only stand on the shore of the sea and be on guard. Suddenly, Uchiha Sasuke's ears twitched and his expression froze. Chirp chirp. Chirp chirp. The place where the sea and the sky met surged with densely packed black crows that quickly filled the entire sky and flew towards where he was. These black crows flew to the top of Uchiha Sasuke's head, circled around several times, and then gathered together, transforming into Uchiha Tunin's appearance, slowly descending from the sky to the ground. It's actually you. Uchiha Sasuke's eyes narrowed slightly, and there seemed to be anger surging in his eyes as he looked at Uchiha Tunin. He saw Uchiha Tunin standing in front of Uchiha Sasuke with his hands behind his back, and the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. Don't worry, I just want to see if we can change our relationship before we meet. Uchiha Sasuke snorted and reached out to hold the Kuzanagi sword hilt at his waist. He said in a low voice, I don't seem to have any friendship with you. Also, if you want to negotiate with me, isn't it impolite to use illusion techniques? If I remember correctly, this should be an illusion of the five senses. I didn't expect you to even know this. Uchiha Tunin, who had been seen through by the illusion, had no surprise on his face. After all, both sides were masters of illusion techniques, and Uchiha Tunin had never thought that he could deceive Uchiha Sasuke with a mere illusion technique. A hint of appreciation flashed through Uchiha Tunin's eyes. He turned around and went to the shore of the sea. He turned his back to Uchiha Sasuke and said slowly, 
the ambitious actually succeed. There is nothing in this world that is impossible. Have you ever wondered what is the meaning of living in a hurry for a hundred years? Achiha Sasuke's expression did not change when he heard that. He said coldly, In the past, my purpose for living was revenge. But now, I only want to protect Kanoha and everything else. Of course, it is the Kanoha of my world. What you want to do in this world is your business. Please leave Baruto to me and let us go. Achiha Tenen ignored Sasuke's request. Instead, he laughed at himself and shook his head. I am different from you. I have always been selfish and very coward. Achiha's Waju sneered and said in a slightly mocking tone. Pretending to be weak? Humph, I feel that you are more courageous than anyone else. Achiha Tunin let out a long sigh and slowly turned around. He stared into Achiha Sasuke's eyes with sincerity and said, I am very afraid of death, so I will try my best to erase any existence that might threaten my life from this world. It has to be said that there are countless existences in this world and even in the vast universe that can kill me. So I tried my best to increase my own strength. For this, I was even willing to give up some things that ordinary people treasured very much. Things that are completely useless to me. Even the benefits that the world values are nothing more than tools for me to improve myself. Of course, other than the other powerful life forms that can threaten me, there are also some natural laws that exist since the birth of the universe. That's why I pay great attention to research and carefully dig into these laws. But as my knowledge grows more and more extensive, I feel even more insignificant. Achiha Sasuke narrowed his eyes and said coldly, What's the point of you telling me all this? In the end, you just want to live forever. You are very similar to Orochimaru in this regard. Achiha Tenen immediately shook his head and waved his hand. No, no, no. The result may be the same, but the understanding of longevity may be different. And this is not necessarily an evil. The desire for longevity has long been rooted in the genes of every life form. It was just that the difficulty of achieving it was too great, so most intelligent life forms consciously tried to dilute this concept. As he spoke, Achiha Tunin slowly walked towards Sasuke. At the same time, he threw out a question. Do you know why the Atsutsuki clan treats humans as inferior creatures? They are clearly not much smarter than humans. Achiha Sasuke's gaze followed Achiha Tunin's figure as he moved and said without hesitation, strength. At this time, Achiha Tunin had already walked behind Sasuke and said slowly, I admit that the lower limit of Atsutsuki's strength is higher than humans. However, things like strength can be improved through training. The real difference lies in lifespan. The longer one lives, the longer one can train, and the higher the upper limit of one's strength. I will give you another example. If someone can fly from the ninja realm to the moon, but the process will take a hundred years. What do you think we should do? The first thing most people think of is to increase their speed. But what if a person's lifespan is raised from a hundred years to ten thousand years, ten thousand years, or even a million years? If humans can do this, they will not be trapped in the ninja realm anymore, nor will they fight over limited resources in the ninja realm all day long. Without struggle, there would be no tragedy. One had to know that the resources of the universe were infinite. At this time, Achiha Tunin had already circled around Sasuke and stood in front of him again. But he saw that Achiha Sasuke had a puzzled expression and said, Even if you are not wrong in pursuing immortality, what does it have to do with us? Seeing that Sasuke was listening to him attentively, Achiha Tunin smiled with satisfaction and began to induce. Immortality means that we have enough time to improve ourselves. This world is very magical. When we have enough strength and knowledge, we can do many unimaginable things. You must have regrets in your world. As long as you stay here, follow me to achieve long-term vision. Those who you care about very much but die, you can easily revive them and protect them after you return to your world. Regret, isn't it just making people work hard to make up for it? Chapter 377, Sasuke's Intention Obviously, Achiha Tunin's words had already evoked the memories of Sasuke. 
At this time, the sea of Sasuke's brain was like a lantern running across the scenes of his parents, clansmen, Itachi, Naruto, and even the entire Kanoha. His face flashed with a touch of greed. Yes, as long as I become strong enough here, I can completely return to my world through Karasuki. Moreover, it was just the moment he left. With enough strength, he might be able to revive them and protect Kanoha better. Even if there is a stronger Atsutsuki coming to the ninja realm, he can resist it. Achiha Tenen immediately took two steps forward toward Sasuke, closing the real distance between the two of them. He said in a deep tone, Now that the opportunity is right in front of you, I can tell you responsibly that I am very confident that I can turn this wish into reality. Moreover, I never hide anything in terms of knowledge. I can not only share the secret of immortality with you, but I can also make it public. Let the entire human race realize the evolution of the race. At that time, you and I will be the pioneers of the entire race, leading the race to the highest. After he finished speaking, a sacred light seemed to appear on Uchiha Tunin's smiling face as he slowly extended his palm towards Sasuke. After hearing Uchiha Tunin's words, Uchiha Sasuke's expression started to change continuously, and his gaze gradually moved from Uchiha Tunin's face to his outstretched palm. After a long time, Uchiha Sasuke's hand that was holding the hilt of Kuzanagi's sword gradually loosened. When Uchiha Tunin saw this scene, the smile on his face became even warmer and brighter. Suddenly, Uchiha Sasuke closed his eyes and let out a long sigh, his right hand hanging down. When he opened his eyes again, his eyes were already clear. Uchiha Sasuke looked at Uchiha Tunin with a determined gaze and said, Thank you for your kindness, but I think that the limit of lifespan is not only the shackles given to humans by the heavens, but also a kind of protection. This kind of natural rule should not be broken, and I do not want to bear eternal loneliness in the future. As long as there is meaning in life, it is fine. Uchiha Tunin's smile stiffened. In the next moment, Achiha Tenen's smile became even brighter than before. He shook his head and said, Summer insects cannot speak ice. If I had known that you were just an idiot, I would not have wasted my precious time in Kanoha. The layers of rules should be broken by the pioneers. If you have not seen this scenery, how do you know that it is not full of flowers? As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tenen's expression instantly turned cold. His deep eyes stared straight into Sasuke's eyes, and he said coldly with a faint threat. I'll ask you one last time. Do you really have to leave? Uchiha Sasuke looked at Uchiha Tunin fearlessly and said coldly. I want to take Baruto with me. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, he completely gave up on the hope of helping Uchiha Sasuke. He closed his eyes and shook his head, sighing, what a pity. The six Tomo Rinnegan was completely hopeless. After saying this, Achiha Tenen's figure moved and break down into a dense white pigeon that flew towards the sky. Goo goo. Goo goo. Just as the white pigeons filled the entire sky, the white pigeons in the sky suddenly began to wail in unison. They seemed to be begging, crying, and unwilling. Bang! 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 A series of blood blossomed in the sky, and the white pigeons exploded and died. The white feathers slowly drifted down to the surface of the sea. It looked like there was heavy snow. Uchiha Sasuke frowned when he saw this. He couldn't understand why Uchiha Tenen was doing this. He actually killed his own scouting beast. What the hell? Could it be that I rejected him just now and made him too angry, so he took out his own beast to vent his anger? What a temperamental guy. Before the white feathers in the sky could reach the surface of the sea, Achiha Sasuke suddenly found that the sea in front of him seemed to sink a little. At this moment, the sun was like a dazzling shrine that finally showed its face on the horizon of the sea. In a split second, the rays of light filled the sky for half a day, protecting this brilliant golden sun. The mirror-like surface of the sea reflected a dazzling golden light. A long black line extended from the sea to Uchiha Sasuke. At this time, Uchiha Sasuke finally saw where Uchiha Tunin was. He seemed to be standing on a reef in the sea. However, because of the light, 
he could only see the figure standing on the reef. As the sun slowly rose, the sea level between the two sank a little. Without the sea water, the reef under Uchiha Tunin's feet looked like a small mountain. And Uchiha Tunin stood at the top of the mountain, standing at the center of the sun, slowly opening his arms. This is the place where I will bury you too. The sea has endless tolerance, so let it forgive you for not knowing what's good for you today. Uchiha Tunin said the most vicious words in the gentlest tone. His voice echoed on the sea. Psycho. Uchiha Sasuke naturally would not be frightened by this. He slowly pulled out his Kuzanagi sword from his waist and walked towards the center of the sea. At the same time, Uchiha Tunin also stretched out his hand and pulled out Kuzanagi's sword from his back. The tip of the sword pointed diagonally at the sea surface and walked towards Uchiha Sasuke. As the two of them walked, their eyes quickly changed. One activated the Eternal Mangekyo and the Six Tomo Rinnegan. One activated Tai Chi Kaleidoscope. The moment the first snow-white feather stuck to the surface of the sea, the two of them turned into afterimages and quickly rushed towards each other. When the distance between the two of them closed to a certain extent, Achiha Sasuke speed up again. In the next instant, a look of surprise flashed through Achiha Sasuke's eyes. What was going on? His body was moving forward uncontrollably. He immediately understood that he had been hit by the other party's attack. He quickly looked down and noticed the shadow that connected the two people under his feet. There was a problem with the shadow. This is the shadow imitation technique of the Nara clan. Swish. The sharp blade that was rapidly stabbing out made a sharp piercing sound. Achiha Tunin looked at the empty space in front of him and sighed in regret. At this time, the two had already exchanged positions, and Achiha Sasuke had successfully broken free from the shadow. It was Achiha Sasuke who used his power at the last moment to escape Achiha Tunin's tricks. Achiha Sasuke suddenly turned around and looked at Achiha Tunin's back in bewilderment. He said in a deep voice, You have a problem. Achiha Tunin slowly straightened his body and sighed with his back facing Sasuke. The power of Rinnegan is really amazing, it is much higher than the level of blood ninjutsu. It seems that if I want to kill you today, I really need to use some real martial arts. As soon as his voice fell, the two figures had already disappeared. Ding, 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 ding. Chapter 378, Seeing Through Dense afterimages instantly appeared on the surface of the sea, and the two of them once again exchanged blows in the time it took for a spark to fly. Both of them had the terrifying dynamic vision bestowed by the kaleidoscope, and their speed and strength were also top-notch in the ninja world. Achiha Sasuke, whether it was the eternal kaleidoscope or the six Tomo Rinnegan, were much higher in quality than Achiha Tunin's kaleidoscope. However, the amount of eye power Achiha Tunin possessed was much more than Achiha's assistants. They each had their own advantages. For a time, they were evenly matched in terms of physical skills. After a simple test, Achiha Sasuke was the first to use ninjutsu to break the deadlock. BZZZZZZT. The powerful electric current instantly covered the sword and attacked Achiha Tunin. However, Achiha Tunin had spent so much effort to lure Achiha to this place not just to consume the opponent's physical strength and eye power. Although Achiha Sasuke had the Rinnegan, he also had awakened five attributes by himself. People had their own specialty. Achiha Sasuke was an innate Thunderfire attribute ninja and was not proficient in water style. Achiha Tunin's hand holding the sword hilt tightened slightly and a small stream of water poured out from the sea, wrapping around the sword body and spinning at a high speed. He raised his sword and slashed at Sasuke. When Uchiha Sasuke saw that Uchiha Tunin actually wanted to use water to block the electricity, a hint of mockery flashed in his eyes. In an instant, the two swords collided heavily. The surging electric current reflected on their faces. Uchiha Tunin's expression was indifferent, while Uchiha Sasuke's expression was extremely ugly. In Uchiha Sasuke's knowledge, water could conduct electricity. But now... No matter how Achiha Sasuke tried to stimulate the electric current, it was blocked by the high-speed rotating water flow. 
Even Uchiha Sasuke was keenly aware that most of his strength was offset by the high-speed rotating water flow. What was going on? The water flow actually did not conduct electricity. This was not scientific. One must know that the water that Uchiha Tunin had attached to Kuzanagi's sword was pure water that had been separated and purified by chakra. Of course, this little knowledge of pure water not being conductive, Uchiha Tunin would not tell to the enemy in front of him. Uchiha Sasuke was defeated in one move and immediately jumped back. At the same time, his right eye Mangekyo stared at Uchiha Tunin and began to rotate at high speed. Amaterasu A ball of inextinguishable black flame instantly ignited on Uchiha Tunin's chest and quickly spread throughout his body. Uchiha Tunin knew about the intelligence of Sasuke, so he was naturally prepared for this move. Seeing Uchiha Tunin put back his Kuzanagi sword into the sheath, he glanced at the inextinguishable black flame burning on his chest and said leisurely, is this strongest fire technique? It doesn't seem to be as powerful as I thought it would be. It's only slightly stronger than ordinary flames. If you want to burn me to death, I'm afraid it will take a bit of time. As Uchiha Tunin spoke, he raised his right hand unhurriedly. A pure white feather gracefully fell between Uchiha Tunin's fingers and was firmly pinched. You must know that during the battle between Naruto and Sasuke in the Valley of the End, Sasuke used black flames to penetrate the body without any problems. As for Uchiha Tunin, his body had been modified with soft body and he was also cultivating the unbreakable diamond. Not only was his body so strong that it made one's hair stand on end, his recovery rate was no less than that of the so-called immortal human body. If the undying black flames wanted to harm Uchiha Tunin from the outside and from the inside, it would take at least half an hour. Uchiha Sasuke naturally did not know how strong Uchiha Tunin's physical body was. Seeing how arrogant the other party was, he coldly snorted, Ignorance. The one who is truly ignorant is you. The advantage of this black flame is that it doesn't need to burn anything. It can continue burning. But that doesn't mean that I can't do anything about it. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curved slightly. He bit the index finger of his other hand and quickly drew a seal on the white feather. In an instant, the sealing technique was completed. Uchiha Tunin quickly formed a seal with one hand and pointed at the white feather. Sealing Fire Seal Art The sealing technique on the surface of the white feather surged with a suction force against the flames, instantly absorbing the inextinguishable black flame burning in Uchiha Tunin's chest. When Uchiha Sasuke saw this, his eyes narrowed. He thought of how Jiraiya had used the seal to absorb his Amaterasu. But he didn't expect that someone would use this move to deal with him today. Of course, even if Uchiha Tunin didn't know how to use the seal, he still had a way to deal with Amaterasu. That is to transfer Amaterasu with Kamui. However, in comparison, the sealing fire seal was much simpler and more convenient. Is this guy really just a ninja? He has too many tricks up his sleeve. In the distance, Uchiha Sasuke watched as Uchiha Tunin easily and contentedly broke through the Amaterasu, his expression slightly ugly. However, Uchiha Sasuke still did not forget the main purpose of this trip. Defeating Uchiha Tunin was secondary, and the most important thing was to find where Baruto was now. Huh? Suddenly, Sasuke Uchiha raised his eyebrows, a triumphant smile flashed across the corner of his mouth, he stabbed straight behind him with a backhand, and at the same time activated the kaleidoscope technique. Flame Escape, Earth Life The inextinguishable black flame instantly covered Kuzanagi's sword. Ding! It seems that you have been guarding against my sneak attack. Uchiha Tunin held the sword with both hands and hacked at Sasuke's sword. However, when Uchiha Tunin saw that Sasuke was distracted during the battle, he immediately activated Horatian no Jutsu to appear behind Sasuke, wanting to catch him off guard and take him away. Now, it seemed that Sasuke was deliberately acting absent-minded so as to lure Uchiha Tunin into falling for it. If not for Uchiha Tunin's fast reaction speed, he might have really been pierced through by Kuzanagi's sword, which had an indestructible black flame attached to it. At that time, if the undying black flame burned him from the inside out, then the matter would be a big one. Uchiha Sasuke thought that it was a pity. 
He snorted coldly. I knew that you knew the flying thunder god technique. These feathers are your space-time coordinates, right? Do you really think that I really think that you killed your own ninja beast just to vent your anger? In battle, if the enemy did anything that he could not understand, it would definitely be a trap. Your arrangements are completely meaningless in my eyes. After Uchiha Sasuke finished speaking, Six Tomo Renegan flashed slightly, and he shouted, Shinra Tensei. Uchiha Tunin was unwilling to resist Shinra Tensei's repulsive force at close range, so he immediately used Horatian no Jutsu. In an instant, a great force came crashing down. The white feathers floating on the surface of the sea, along with the sea water, spread out in all directions. Under the terrifying force, the sea surface below Sasuke also sank several hundred meters. Like a deep pit, the surrounding sea water could not get close for a moment. The tens of thousands of feathers had already been pushed out of the battlefield. Before Uchiha Tunin's arrangements could do anything, they were destroyed by Sasuke. However, when Sasuke stopped releasing the Shinra Tensei, he discovered that something was wrong. He saw that the sea water around him seemed to have stopped moving, and there was no sign of recovery. This situation was obvious that the other party was controlling the sea water. It's many times stronger than Mizukage water escape technique. This guy really has too many tricks up his sleeves. At this moment, Achiha Tunin's low voice rang out from the sea. In order to deal with you, I lost half of my pigeons. Humans are not grass and cannot be heartless. These doves have accompanied me for so long. To me, they are no different from family. But I did not expect that they all died in vain. As their master, I think I should make you, the main culprit, pay the price. In the next moment, Achiha Sasuke suddenly felt that the surrounding seawater seemed to have become lively as if it had been given life. The seawater under his feet kept sinking, and the seawater around him kept rising. Soon, Achiha Sasuke found that his feet had stepped on the silt at the bottom of the sea, and the surrounding sea water was like a sky wall. It looked like it was connected to the clouds. Achiha Sasuke looked up and saw that the small sky above his head was gradually shrinking until it was completely covered by the sea water. He immediately said with an ugly expression, What is this, a water prison? At this moment, Achiha Tunin's deep and distant voice echoed throughout the entire underwater world. This trick, I call it overturning the sea. Chapter 379, Unfavorable Situation The underwater world was a shocking scene. But the sea is still calm, and the sky-reaching water wall is just an illusion of Sasuke Uchiha's sight. Uchiha Tunin stood on the surface of the sea that was as smooth as a mirror, his hands maintaining a hand seal. As he watched the center of the whirlpool gradually close, the corners of his mouth couldn't help but curve a little. This ninjutsu was very difficult, even an Atsutsuki would struggle. Achiha Tonin can only do this by borrowing the advantage of the field and the almost infinite chakra of Kyubi. It's almost done. As soon as the words fell, Achiha Tonin let go of the seals in his hands, separated his palms a little, and then slowly closed them in the middle. In an instant, the boundless seawater carried a force of 10,000 kilograms pressed towards the center. The first to bear the brunt was not Achiha Sasuke, but the air in the enclosed space of the underwater world. Under Achiha Tunin's deliberate manipulation, the seawater and air were completely unable to merge. Almost in an instant, the pressure of the underwater world rose sharply. The closing speed of Achiha Tunin's palms became slower and slower, and golden nine tails of chakra involuntarily gushed out from his body and rushed towards the sea water under his feet. In fact, the air pressure in the inner space has surpassed the water pressure, and at this time it is completely dependent on Achiha Tunin's external help. Achiha Tunin was not clear about the specific power of this move. But there was one thing that Achiha Tunin knew once the two palms successfully closed it will be over. Not to mention Achiha Sasuke, even his cells would be disintegrated. Just as Achiha Tunin was trying his best. Suddenly, dance ripples appeared on the surface of the calm sea. Not good. Achiha Tunin's eyes narrowed, and his eyes quickly turned into the Kamui kaleidoscope, activating the void. Boom! 
a violent explosion occurred on the surface of the sea. A thick white mushroom cloud rose up, covering the sky in a flash. The powerful shock wave set off a hundred-meter-tall tsunami, spreading in all directions. Crash. Half a minute later, Achiha Tunin removed his void form and slowly raised his palm. He looked at the raindrops falling on his palm with a cold expression and muttered, I didn't expect that I still underestimated you. The white mushroom cloud lit up with purple light, and at the same time, Achiha Sasuke's voice was heard. I have to admit that you are the best ninja I have ever seen. But it is only limited to your era. Some power, you simply cannot understand. Similarly, I also underestimated you. In the battle with you, I always wanted to preserve my chakra and kill you with as little as possible. But now, I will let you understand the difference in strength between you and me. As soon as the voice fell, a huge purple Susanu with wings spread out on his back, wearing armor and holding a lightsaber in both hands, breaking through the mushroom cloud and coming to the top of Uchiha Tunin. And Uchiha Sasuke was standing in the middle of the forehead of Susanu. Uchiha Tunin's sharp eyes discovered that at this time, Uchiha Sasuke still had faint bloodstains on his cheeks. Presumably, his eardrums were bleeding due to the pressure from before, which was why he called out Susanu to protect him. Unfortunately, if the other party was a little slower, he would have gone deaf. In this way, he would have an advantage. But seeing Achiha Tunin sizing up the opponent Susanu, greed flashed in his eyes, and he softly said, Full body Susanu. Flying ability, this is a bit troublesome. After saying that, Achiha Tunin's kaleidoscope quickly rotated, and the golden chakra around his body became several times denser. The golden chakra covered Achiha Tunin's entire body, quickly forming his bones, meridians, flesh, blood, and armor. In the blink of an eye, a golden warrior the size of a mountain stood proudly on the surface of the sea. The whole body of the golden warrior was even burning with a golden-colored chakra flame. However, Achiha Tunin Susanu was in the fourth form and had not yet reached the complete form. In terms of size, compared to the complete Susanu of Achiha, it was one size smaller. Moreover, Achiha Tunin's golden warrior had not grown wings, so he was unable to fly. This was the biggest disadvantage. In the sky, Achiha Sasuke sized up the golden warrior, and a trace of ridicule flashed in his eyes as he said, Your Susanu has no advantage compared to me. After saying that, Achiha Sasuke controlled the Susanu to dive down. Two light swords were raised high and chopped down towards the golden warrior. Achiha Tunin's expression was calm as he controlled the golden warrior to hold demon blade Muramesa at his waist. At the instant when full body Susanu approached, he pulled out his sword. Bang! The powerful impact shook the surrounding seawater. The strength of the golden warrior was clearly inferior to that of full body Susanu, and his legs sunk into the sea. Achiha Sasuke had obtained an advantage in his attack, but he didn't take advantage of his victory to pursue. Instead, he waved his wings and controlled full body Susanu to fly high into the sky, diving down once again. Obviously, Achiha Sasuke learned from the previous battles and chose to take a steady and steady approach. Ensure that every blow must rely on the power of the dive to maintain the advantage of being able to fly. Seeing this, Achiha Tunin couldn't help but slightly frown, and he thought to himself, Although Devil Blade Muramesa can transform into solid substance, Susanu is essentially a type of solidified chakra. At the moment of slashing, it is equivalent to a chakra competition, which can only cause damage to him and cannot be defeated in one fell swoop. Especially when he chopped the light sword, the sharpness of the two was exactly the same, and there would be no damage. It was completely a contest of strength. He couldn't just cut the sword, he had to cut the body of Susanu. In a split second, Achiha Tunin had already made a simple analysis of the battle situation. At this time, Achiha Sasuke had already controlled full body Susanu to rush to the front of the Golden Warrior. Achiha Tunin's Mangekyo spun rapidly, using his terrifying dynamic vision to capture the trajectory of the light sword. He immediately controlled the Golden Warrior to give up on defending and slashed towards Susanu's shoulder with all his might. Bang! 
Bang! Two explosions resounded in Uchiha Sasuke's ears, and he suddenly felt that a portion of the chakra within his body was consumed. He quickly controlled Susanoo to fly high into the sky. He saw that the left arm of the golden warrior on the surface of the sea had already been cut off, but the armor on the right shoulder of the full-body Susanoo of Uchiha Sasuke had already been broken. Both of them stopped their attacks and simultaneously controlled their chakra to recover the damaged part. The right shoulder of Uchiha Sasuke lit up with a dazzling purple light and the armor grew inch by inch. And Uchiha Tenen's golden warrior was severely damaged, so his recovery was a bit slower. Taking advantage of the gap between recovery, Uchiha Sasuke stared at Uchiha Tenen with a solemn face and said, To be able to injure full-body Susanoo with this incomplete Susanoo, you are always so surprising. If you were in the same era as me, I'm afraid you would overshadow me and Naruto. But I am very sorry, the current you will not be my opponent. I will give you one last chance, hand over Baruto. Chapter 380, Descent into Insanity While speaking, the Susanoo of Uchiha Sasuke had already recovered, and the two light swords surged with dazzling electric current, once again diving towards Uchiha Tunin. He made up his mind not to give Uchiha Tunin time to repair the Golden Warrior. Seeing the purple Susanoo approaching him at high speed, a hand of fierceness flashed in the eyes of Uchiha Tunin, and he roared in a stern voice. Do you really think you can defeat me? He immediately controlled the one-armed golden warrior to swing demon blade Miramesa to block. Bang! The strength of the golden warrior who had lost an arm was also greatly reduced. Although he managed to block the attack of the two light swords in time, he was still unable to withstand the huge force and fell to the surface of the sea. Damn it! Uchiha Tunin said with a face full of hatred, forcibly controlling the golden warrior to get up. After Uchiha Sasuke's Susanoo knocked down the golden warrior, it directly rose into the air, then controlled Susanoo to put its hands together, and the two light swords also became one. Recognize the reality, no matter how perfect your plan is, in the face of absolute strength, you still can't withstand a single blow. Uchiha Sasuke shouted, controlling Susanoo to hold the sword with both hands, pointing the tip of the sword at the golden warrior who had yet to get up. He descended at a speed that surpassed the speed of sound, intending to destroy Uchiha Tunin's golden warrior with a single strike. Sensing that danger had arrived, Uchiha Tunin revealed a crazed expression as he shouted, Impossible! I am the strongest! I will be a person that has never been seen in the past, and even those who come later cannot surpass me. In the nick of time, the golden warrior lifted Miramesa up and accurately blocked in front of him. The tip of the light sword just happened to stab into Miramesa. Although Uchiha Tunin successfully blocked the fatal blow, the entire Golden Warrior was also deeply smashed into the sea under the tremendous impact. Uchiha Sasuke followed closely behind and entered the sea, continuously swinging his sword at the Golden Warrior. Where the hell is Baruto? As Uchiha Tunin was resisting, a look of madness appeared on his face. If you want to know, defeat me first. Bang! 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 The Golden Warrior was continuously pushed back by full-body Susanoo. But because he didn't have the support of the momentum, coupled with the huge resistance of the seawater, the Golden Warrior didn't suffer any substantial damage. Even his broken left arm had been completely restored. Uchiha Tunin seemed to see the hope of victory, and laughed wildly. Ha ha ha! It seems that you still can't do anything to me in the sea. I am Ninetales Jinchuriki, and I have plenty of chakra. At worst, I will fight with you while consuming it. When you are exhausted, you will still die. When Uchiha Sasuke heard this, a hint of haze flashed through his eyes. This guy is too difficult to deal with, that blade should be an awakened special spirit tool, otherwise it would be impossible for it to persist for so long and not shatter. If I want to defeat him, I can only attack his Susanoo. But in the sea, our speed has dropped, and we can see the opponent's moves clearly. Since this is the case, then I will let you experience the true advantage of full-body Susanoo. Thinking this, Uchiha Sasuke controlled full-body Susanoo to once again approach the Golden Warrior. 
It seems that you are still unwilling to give up. Uchiha Tenen laughed complacently. Just as the light sword and Niramesa were about to touch, the divine light of Uchiha Sasuke's left eye, Rinnegan, flashed. Now! Heaven hand power! In an instant, the golden warrior and full-body Susanoo exchanged positions. Looking at the complete Susanoo in front of him disappearing, Uchiha Tunin didn't seem to have reacted. Bang! Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. The expression of Uchiha Tunin suddenly froze, and he looked down in disbelief. A light sword with powerful electric current pierced through the chest of the golden warrior from behind. The originally stable circulation of solidified chakra was blocked, and the golden warrior turned into specks of golden light and dissipated. Uchiha Sasuke finished controlling all the Susanoo and clenched his hand. He held Uchiha Tunin in his hand, rushed out of the sea, and landed on the surface of the sea. Seeing Uchiha Tunin with only one head exposed in Susanoo's hand, Sasuke Uchiha secretly heaved a sigh of relief and said leisurely, Everything is over. But seeing that Uchiha Tunin seemed to be sluggish, his lips trembled slightly, and he murmured, What is it, possible? I lost. I actually lost. Seeing Uchiha Tunin like this, Uchiha Sasuke even felt that the other party was a little pitiful. If you hand over Baruto, I can consider only sealing you. After saying that, Uchiha Sasuke controlled the Susanoo to spread out its other hand. A black dot condensed in the center of the hand, faintly emitting a suction force. It was the Rinnegan sealing eye technique. Uchiha Tunin numbly turned his head and looked at the little black dot. He laughed nervously. Then I have to thank you for not killing me. Suddenly, Uchiha Tunin's expression became crazy. He shouted at the top of his lungs. What a pity, who told me to be Uchiha Tunin? A true warrior would rather die standing than kneel and live. With that, Uchiha Tunin's figure disappeared in an instant. Uchiha Sasuke was stunned. He looked around, but he did not find any trace of Uchiha Tunin. What was going on? How did he escape? This spatial fluctuation was not Kamui, but the flying thunder god. However, those feathers had long since left the battlefield. Could his flying thunder god ignore the distance limit? Just as Uchiha Sasuke were in a state of shock and bewilderment, strange ripples appeared on a small part of the sea in the distance. Uchiha Sasuke suddenly turned his head and stared at the ripples. After a few breaths, he saw Uchiha Tunin, who was holding Kuzanagi's sword, slowly emerge from the center of the ripples. His other hand was holding the unconscious Baruto. Just now, Uchiha Tunin was able to cast Horatian, so he naturally relied on the feathers that had been engraved with space-time tactics. However, this feather was prepared by Uchiha Tunin in advance. It was deeply buried in the sand at the bottom of the sea. At this time, Uchiha Tunin had already lost his previous demeanor. He looked completely crazy and said with a deranged expression, Since I am determined to be killed by you, then I will let this little brat go with me. After saying that, Uchiha Tunin raised Kuzanagi's sword and stabbed towards the heart of Baruto. And the process was without any hesitation, so Uchiha Sasuke didn't have time to think. Crazy! Uchiha Sasuke cursed in his heart, and at the same time, after removing all the Susanoo, six Tomo Rinnegan gazed at Uchiha Tunin with divine light flashing. Heaven hand power! However, the situation was far beyond Uchiha Sasuke's expectations, and heaven hand power actually didn't work. What was going on? Shit! In Uchiha Sasuke's vision, the tip of Kuzanagi's sword had already touched the heart of Baruto. Uchiha Tunin seemed to be able to see Baruto die in his hands, and he laughed. Kid, say goodbye to this world. That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part 10. Peace.